What is going on, guys? We are here at Kumite in Texas for the first time with some Dead or Alive 6 World Championship action. I'm Emery Reigns. This is Shade Swift Eye. And we have a lot of great matches in store for you guys for this event. I hope you guys are excited as we are to be here casting this event for you, as you guys are going to be spectators for this event. Yeah, it's an exciting time. I mean, this is the third uh, World Championship on the circuit. This is the home of Dallas, Texas. So we've got really some of our best Southern players, as yeah. well as, you know, the usual staples from the East Coast and West Coast. For One sure. of the premier West Coast players is actually out here crazy steady. So uh, it's looking like it's going to be a pretty tough tournament overall. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what Steady brings to the table because, again, we have not seen him since final round in back in March when the game first came out. So it's going to be real interesting to see what he can bring to the table. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think um, one of the things that hasn't happened is a true X factor coming in to kind of disrupt the normal flow of our top eights. And right. Crazy Steady is definitely one of those players that can potentially make top eight and potentially take the entire tournament. So I'm excited to see what he can do. Exactly. You know, I mean, it's, it's crazy, too, because we had a great, great announcement last night. I know a lot of people have been looking for Momiji, looking for that new character in general. So, again, shout-out to Team Ninja for bringing her back. I know a lot of people were looking forward to her. She looks really dangerous, man. I think I'm actually going to play with her as a sub-character. We'll see, though. Wait, did you just drop some news? Was was it a trailer drop yesterday? Yeah, there was a trailer drop, man. There was a trailer drop. And I know a lot of people in the chat have probably seen it. But if you guys haven't seen it, they actually played in the beginning of this stream as well. So make sure you guys check that out if you're uh, interested in seeing the new character. Yeah, I mean, she's another ninja that's being added to the cast. Right. Most people are, are definitely familiar with her. Yeah. Um, and it's definitely an exciting time to be a DOA fan if you are a fan of Momiji, for right, sure. For sure. Yeah, man, again, it's just great to be here, man. You know, DOA is getting all this exposure to these events that we've never been at before, you know what I mean? It's a great feeling to be able to be here and, again, having our best competitors here. we got S Caliber Blades coming back again. We've got Killy coming back. Killy just coming off of his fresh win back at Summer Jam, okay? So we got these great players back here, Electrified Man. Uh, Hoodless is back as well. So there's so many great players here to compete for you guys. And uh, it's going to be awesome to cast this event for you. Absolutely, and th I think that's going to be one of the keys for us when we're watching these matches is to see how these players have grown and adapted over the last couple of months, over the last few competitions. Because yeah. we saw Caliber Blades didn't make top three, right? Yeah, that that's, was crazy. That's a surprising thing. But and, and the way he didn't make it was losing to Killy in such a convincing fashion in the winner side, and then he right. got knocked out by Electrify Man. So I'm going to be curious to see what types of adjustments he's made in the last two weeks. Because if you think about it, that's all he had. Yeah. So we can have because exactly. we've been doing events back Not to back. Not a lot to back. of time at all. And again, there's so much ride in this event, man. And there's also other players that have come from online for their first offline tournament to be able to compete here. So we Absolutely. have the killers that came back again. Every single event, they know what's on the line. They know that there's $90,000 on the line. Everyone wants to get to Japan to play in the finals at this point. So Absolutely. again, these guys are coming back time and time again to try to play and uh, you know secure a spot pretty much to go to Tokyo. Yeah. And we've got our first match of the, of the day for KIT 2019. Yeah. Remember, we are in Dallas, Texas. This is circuit number three for the DOA 6 World Championships. Yeah. And here we go. All right, so we got Nico going against Murray Rose. Murray Rose being a character we don't really see that much. Jungleist Ninja, I'm actually familiar with him from PSN. He's actually a very good player. Yeah, and Huntress is uh, is also a pretty strong player that, that's, that's definitely not had a lot of chances to come out to tournaments, but has definitely um, played quite a bit online. Right. Uh, so Jungleist Ninja going with Nico. I feel like I know him as a bass player, but I have never seen him use Nico, so it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I'm, I thought he was a bass player as well. Maybe he's just trying to test the borders Ooh, with a new character. Okay. Nice hold. Beautiful Close hold there. And again, in this matchup, um, you know, Huntress is going to want to use a lot of those parries and Sabaki's at his advantage to be able to, you know, get the advantage on Nico. Nico has in the fastest strikes in the game, 9 frame jab, 11 frame mid. You want to stop her from getting started if you can. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. And, and right now, the Junglist Ninja is looking to, to do some big damage. Got him against the wall here. What's the setup? Wow, he hits him right out of that. Gets the frame advantage. Wow. Okay. Junglist Ninja is nice looking really good right now. Huntress. Yeah, solid. Huntress looks like, you know, he's got something going for himself right now, but he's just got to put a couple more attacks on the screen. There's the combo. Nice. About 30% there against the wall. Yeah, I mean, Mary Rose is definitely, like you said, not a character that's used very often, but she's a strong character. And we saw just recently, yesterday, in fact, at the Tokyo Game Show where there was a Mary Rose player that went pretty deep into exactly, that Exactly. Right. Yeah. So I feel like there's been a lot of misconception, even for myself, that Mary Rose is not really a great character, but I feel like, you know, a lot of people are trying to put her on the screen. Yeah. And uh, try to get her out there again. So we actually have a name swap. So we're looking at antagonist in Chief CR. No wonder we didn't see Bass. That's what I was going to say. I knew something was up, man. I'm like, <laughs> I know Junglist Ninja as a Bass player. So for him to be using Nico, it definitely threw me off. But either way, I mean, they were, they both look pretty talented. I agree. I agree. All right, man. So I already hear Throwdown in the background. So we're going to have a lot of citizen assists coming at you guys. No question. In about two no seconds. Question. All right, so there's the forward kick kick. Gets the partition right off the bat. Wow, he had to hold that. And, and one thing that we didn't see from the last game from either player was a lot of meter use. 
Um, and that's that's obviously a, a big part of DOA 6, so I, I wonder if we're going to see some changes from either player on that yeah. particular piece. I mean, to be honest with you, Antagonist is playing this matchup literally perfect. He's playing Rush Down, he's playing Aggro, he's all in Murder Rose's face. No throw punish on that sidestep again, that sidestep being something that was really huge in DOA 5 that you don't really see that much anymore in this game. Right. Yeah, like you said, Antagonist is, is just really kind of going in, just keeping the pressure up, and, and Cheever's defense is looking a little suspect right now. Yeah. Chief has got to make something happen because he is getting tossed right now. Okay, there's yeah, that nice beautiful hold. high punch hold there by Antagonist. Stop the pressure. Wow. Another hold. Okay, Antagonist. Looking like he's going to close out round two very quickly, but yeah, he does. He does. So Antagonist is sitting on match point right now. He's one more round here to close out game number two. All right, there's that parry there. Gets the combo. Nice. Okay. So Chief getting something started. So he's got his combos. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, it's just, wow. it's, it's not, I don't even think it's a matter of his combos at this point. It's just his defense has been suspect. Yeah. When he gets hit, he doesn't know which things to counter. Ooh. But nice use of the meter there. Uh, so he had, if he was going to use it, I couldn't think of a better time. Because if he can exactly. make this comeback, that gives him time to build that meter back up and get back into the fight. He's going to take that. No. Whoa, that was Didn't footsies. Know about the partition, yeah. I think, I don't know if he wanted to try to back up and make him whiff to play footsies right there. But either way, Antagonist is taking advantage of this, taking that throw on high counter. Wow, there's that new string. No punish there. Wow, and, and this is something that Antagonist is looking to try and close out this Ooh, entire run. And he that's going to kill. That is a dead Murray Rose right there. Just yeah. like that, this is first to two, okay? Yeah, that's first Up to until two. top eight, every game is going to be uh, first to two. So, you know, congratulations to Antagonist moving on in the bracket. Both players still sitting there, though, interestingly um, enough. I don't know if they're aware. I guess Unless we'll find out what they got planned. Do we have know. a rule change? I'm pretty sure okay. it's, first, yeah, it's first to two. It's first to two. I think best they're just trying to get their bearing at this point and see, hmm, do I play another one or... It's two. Yep, that's yeah. it. Okay, so they're understanding now. It is first to two again up until we get into top eight. Yeah. So um, you know, either way, that was a good, good, uh, good set. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a good set to see a lot of Nico's combos. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We we didn't get to see a lot of Mary Rose's combos or what she could do. Um, and it's mostly because, like we said, the, the defense of the Mary Rose player was just just wasn't quite there. Yeah. Right. He, he he wasn't able to maintain a consistent amount of defense, whether it was blocking high or blocking low or even holding right. out of a stun. He just wasn't able to do so successfully. And I really, really do hope that, you know, these guys are obviously newer players offline. I've never seen them before. So, mm -hmm. you know, the fact that they're here and getting their name out there not only is giving them offline experience, this is the best way to play this game. And we're playing on PC. You cannot ask for a better experience. You're playing offline where there's no delay. And then you're also playing on PC, the best platform to play the game on. So, yeah. you know, come out to these tournaments, guys. It's really, really important. Not only are you going to help the scene, but you're going to get exposure for yourself and more experience. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, that's I think that's like you said, you said you hit it right on the head. Is the fact that we are playing on PC. You yeah, know what I mean, that's huge. And it's that's huge. a tremendous difference. Even when I was playing casuals down there, I was like, wow, this is much quicker, it's much snappier, huge, man. loading times much shorter. It's just one of those situations that you really, really enjoy, and it's one of those things that you don't get very often unless you come out to these sorts of events. Exactly, it's the best way PC. to play. Hands down, the best way to play. I mean, I love PS4, I love Xbox, but if you have a PC, play this game on PC. It's so such a great experience playing a game on PC. There's literally almost no delay. And then, you know, you also do have other top players that are playing on PC as well. You got Rakuto, you got Hoodless, Masters on PC. You know, Shade, he don't have any hey, you know, listen, PC, listen. but who cares about Shade? I'm here for anyway. the PS4 people. I'm here for y'all. <laughs> All day, every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But All listen, right. listen, take, take a look at this. So we've got a lot of the top players here. Who do you think is making top three? Like all, all the top, right, top right three, now. I'm gonna call it all just right like now. that. Bam! Let me get it real quick. All right, we got Killy, who just came off of a, literally a fresh win at Summer Jam. Killy is pretty much a no-brainer at this point. Super talented right. guy. I want to say Calibre Blades off of the off the strength of the fact that he really got. I mean, let's just call it like it is. He got hands put on him. They put the hands on him at Summer Jam. He didn't even get top three, and that is so you so be strange. Me. I don't you see Calibre Blades in top three, man. You gotta be know. kidding me. So here, we'll see. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. I'm gonna call a few upsets. Number one. I don't think Killy's making top three. Whoa. Okay. Number one. All right. Okay. Okay. All okay. right. That's my hot take off of one match here at KIT. So you guys can take that with a grain of salt. Okay. But but here's the thing. I think a lot of players saw what Killy did. Yeah. They did their homework. They had two weeks to go home and prepare. So here's my top three right now. I think it's Give it to me. I want to hear Caliber it. Blades. Okay. I think it's going to be Electrified Man. Okay. I like that. I think it's going to be Crazy Steady. Okay, I'm going to have to combat you real quick. <laughs> now, you just completely left Hoodless out of there, and I, did, I don't like I that did, at all. I did, so, I did. I'm going to give you my real top three. Bam, okay. let's get it. Okay. We got Killy, we're going to have Hoodless, and we're going to have Electrified Man. That's what it is. I Kill feel you. you. And you know what? That's the safe pick. But I'm here for hot takes today. Okay. And so I'm, I'm throwing it out there. And it's only because I think of how the brackets are set up currently. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, because there's only two big pools two at big this pools. point. So two big pools. I don't know what's going to happen, man. There's going to be four getting out of each one. Let's see. Yeah, and and... and and the thing is, did you notice one player we didn't even mention? 
And it, of course, we were just focused on top three, but we didn't say anything about Quiggles. That man is still around. He is, and he got still third around. place, I believe, at Summer yeah. Jam. So, it, dude, it's too hard to call. That's what I'm saying. These guys, they're literally coming out to every single tournament and trying. They're coming for blood. You know what? Let me just go ahead and backtrack my entire top three stream. No, um, it's too late. I, I'm, I'm gonna lock that <laughs> it's back. Too late. No. We'll talk about top three at tomorrow at top eight. We'll do that. We'll do that. Cause uh, I don't, I don't think I can pull that off. <laughs> All right, man. It's too much. So. Too much. Let's look at the match we got on the screen. We I have Rakuto. Rakuto, yo, 100%. We have Rakuto playing Bayman. So let's talk about Rakuto really quick. We already know that this is not the Rakuto that we're used to seeing in this game. Since no. the launch of this game, even back before the launch of this game, back when he fought Jaegers in the grand final of Winter Brawl, he couldn't take that tournament. He really feels like Rakuto, uh, Bayman is not a really strong character in this game. Right. And I wouldn't, you know, obviously, Bayman is still good, but he's just not as effective. I don't, do you believe that that's because of the system nerf in him, or do you think that he was actually just nerfed to the ground? I think uh, it, it's it's a combination of two. More so, the character was made significantly weaker in this version of the game than compared to previous yeah. versions. But also, it's it's the system too, right? Because he doesn't have a lot of combos that allow him to play well with the bounces. Exactly, that's huge as well, for sure. And that's that's the issue he has. But even as we say that, Rakuto's taking two very very quick rounds here in game one. He's still a strong player. He's still that classic sure. Rakuto player that we're used to. But as we were just talking about our top three beforehand, we also didn't mention Rakuto. He's here. Yeah. No, he's, he's here. here. And you know the he's only problem is somebody. with mentioning him, you have to understand, he hasn't been in that spot, though. Yeah. He hasn't put himself in that spot. And that's a mix between the fact that, you know, he's, he said it. He has no confidence in this game. He has no confidence with this character. We've seen him jump to, ne uh, to Neo Tengu. We've seen him jump to all these other characters. And that's really unlike Rakuto because we know him as a Bayman main. And, it, and it, the crazy part about Rakuto at this situ at this point is the fact that when you look at the standings, oh goodness gracious! Wow, he's like dead. It. He's a dead character. Right, so Protect, you know what are we talking about? Protect. Let's yeah, give Protect seriously. some. Wow, and he's we not did, dead from that. Right, and that's Protect. not good. I see a tank. Protect, we're going to give you some air time if you can take this round. Wow, and just no like air that, time for you, bro. Protect <laughs> takes the takes the hand just now. I mean, you know, I'm actually Watch familiar with his span, uh, with his clan. I was actually in uh, the sponsor Sin. So shout out to Syndicate yeah, for, for sure. obviously you know supporting players going to tournaments as well. Um, Protect is going to do a character change because Chris. Christy, on paper, Christy wins that matchup. It's for Christy's sure. great. Christy's great. But Unless you're playing against an experienced DOA exactly. player who knows some solid defensive mechanics, yeah. um, then you have an issue. And we're, we're saying experience. Like, that's not even the word. Rakuto has been playing this game with this character for 20 years. Yeah. Let's just call it like it is. He's got the most experience with this character than anyone in the community. But I like the choice of character. I think you love this character as well. Kasumi, yeah. And phenomenal character. We're right? going to talk about Kasumi because she, Team Ninja, <laughs> something has to be done about this character. But we're going to save that for a video later. Later. All right. Let's, let's do that. And I All like right. what we're seeing from Rakuto. Nice punishment there. He's looking like he's going to close out round one of game two here. Good, wow. Beautiful. Good so, you know, that's something big that Rakuto does. That offensive hold... Uh, Bayman is one of the only characters, if not the only character in the game, that can do an offensive hold from standing. And I want to say it's 15 or 16 frames. So for it's an offensive others, hold, but yeah, that's sure. crazy. Yeah, for sure. It's Literally from just doing forward grab. You know, most characters have to do a forward forward grab. Hayabusa yeah. has to do wall rise and back throw to get his out. For you to just be able to stand there and do an offensive hold, yeah. that's really crazy. It's, it's almost unreactable. It's nuts. And that's, and that's the one thing that Rakuto definitely has in his favor is that offensive hold. It's a unique thing. He's dead. That's a natural combo. Yeah. And All right, so Rakuto running away with this. Got two five points rounds. on the board here against Protect. I do like the character change. That was actually wild that he did that. Yeah, Because I mean, Bayman doesn't have those faster throws. He does not, but Protect looked like he wanted to just more or less play the defense. Yeah. So he's willing to take the throw. Because he knew he was at a minus six situation. And again, Rakuto. this is huge. You know, Bayman still having the ability to option nice, select on character. a wall. He needs that. Wow. Yeah. And there we go. Right. Rakuto takes it. Game two. Game match point for Rakuto. He's going to move on into the brackets. And keep in mind, everyone, these guys in this particular tournament at KIT, if they win three matches, they're going to be playing tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. And we're going up until top eight today, guys. Yeah. There's going to be so many matches coming at you guys. We have at least four hours of screen time at this point. So we're going to sure. be playing up until top eight. You guys don't want to go anywhere. Don't miss anything. Lots of DOA 6 action coming at you guys. But like we were just saying with Rakuto, right? So if you look at the, the DOA leaderboards right now, Rakuto is sitting outside of that top yes, five you need North to be American there. list. And, and the person he's trying to chase right now is Electrify Man. I think he's up by at least 100 points on Rakuto. Yeah. So even though Rakuto hasn't been doing well in tournaments thus far, he's got an opportunity to really, really, really solidify his position if he can take like a one or second place 
finish right. here today. I think what Rakuto needs to do at this point is I, I think he needs to hold on until Momiji's out. Because, again, he set oh, it down no. there. Yeah. Momiji yeah. It was one of you know Rakuto's side characters in DOA 5. He didn't use her in tournament. But, you know, as, we, as you can see, he's using other characters in tournament. So he has that comfortability to be able to go outside of B-Man. I think that uh, Momiji is a great character. I thought she was good in 5, really solid. I think that she caters his play style because she's very simple. And, obviously, he's using B-Man. You can't get much more simpler than that. Yeah. So. You know, no I think that Momiji is going to help him out. Hopefully, he can get enough points at this event so that way he can go to the next two. And then also, we have the online qualifier as well. So there's so many different uh, events that you can actually earn points for. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be pretty tricky when you're thinking about that. Yeah. I mean, if he can hold out until Momiji, he would have potentially two more circuits to go through. Or not circuits, but two more uh, um, tournaments to go through where right. he can actually qualify. It's just that there's, the competition is so stiff. You know? And they're everywhere, man. They're literally everywhere. Like, I literally thought the caliber wasn't coming here. He told me, and just speak of the devil, he told me he was not coming to this event. Yeah. You know, he was feeling, I'm going to tell you guys a story. So, Caliber Blades was feeling bad after his loss. Okay? He was feeling bad after his loss Summer Jam. should have. You Because he, he got the brakes beaten off of him. Yeah. Literally, I've never seen Caliber Blades lose that bad. No one has. I don't think anyone has. Same so one. if you think a man like that, a man who's notorious for winning events, a man who's notorious for being dominant, if you think he's not going to come back at the next event even better than ever, then you're wrong. So I think we're going to see a different caliber blades. I just don't really know if I'm going to see him in top three this time, man. Well, you know what's interesting? So I haven't gotten a chance to, to sit down and talk with him specifically about his game plan for this particular tournament. But I do know when we saw him last time at Summer Jam two weeks ago, one of the things that was on his mind was how can he beat Killy. Exactly. And he said the same thing to me. He yeah. said, I have to sit down and formulate a plan. Because we were sitting there with the sponsor, and the sponsor said, you know what, man? We're not going to be able to send you out to the next event. And I knew as soon as they said that that he was going to find a way out here anyway. Yeah. So he's here pretty much on his own at this point, and he's literally coming for blood. He said, I need to find a way to beat Killy because he's got to go down. I cannot get beat like that. Yeah, I mean, the last thing you want to do is go all the way to the grand finals in Tokyo, right? And then run into Killy and not have a game plan for him. Right. That's assuming you can even make it to Grand Finals because, like we saw, there's so many strong players. It's 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 something that, you know, we just saw with TGS last yesterday, right? Right. CO, right, didn't make it to top eight. That was crazy. Terror Rock didn't make it Let's to top eight. Let's talk about that for a second. Guys, there are, just, there, there are phenomenal players in Japan right now that – are just sitting there waiting for North America to show up for the Grand Finals. That I'm hoping we get to see. Like, I'm going to tell you guys, Theologica didn't even get top eight at TGS yesterday. It's crazy. For a player, a top eight player, we'll call it like it is, he gets top eight at literally every event he goes to, comes to the USA, gets top eight. For a player that great to not get top eight at a tournament is, like, mind-blowing. So the talent that's out there, we can't even see all the time. You it's, know what I mean? I want to see more of it. It's one of those things that, that makes you a little little scared, a little fearful if For you're a sure. North American player because you were under the impression at first that CEO and Terra Rock were the were best, the best, the best. they had to offer. Not not the case. But I want to talk about this matchup, though. Yeah. We got T-Boy. T-Boy, I want to talk about him a little bit. He's actually a Texas native. He's been playing for a long time. He was an iron player in DOA 5. And he went to Diego, obviously, because this is the closest thing you're going to get to iron. He's actually very good. So, in. I don't know, man. We might see an upset. I mean, he's going in right now. He's starting off the round very strong. But even as I say that, Caliber Blades, with his own combo, is going to have big damage here. He's taking back in the fight. down to half percent. Or he's back in the fight. And there's yeah. the parry. So... The thing that makes Elliot so scary in this game, and the thing that's always made him scary, yep. he's got a nine-frame attack, and he's dead. He's got a nine-frame attack, and he knew that he wanted to save the meter right there. He knew he didn't want to spend it, and uh, unfortunately, it cost him. There's that seven-frame, that nine-frame punch again. There's a launch. Uh, uh. Is he going to get a partition? No, he already destroyed the partition. Okay. That was yeah. still 30%. Still, I mean, Elliot's such a dangerous character. His combos don't really care about your weight class. He just cares about putting big damage on the screen. Look uh, at this again. Uh, it's uh, going to use his uh, meter uh. here. Looks like he is. He's going to bake. I think. Nope. nope. Okay. Wow. And, and look at the damage. That's great recognition from Caliber Blades because if you notice before, T Boy has only held twice so far within this set of match or rounds here. So I'm it looks like he's the type of player that doesn't like to hold in general. I'm going to tell you something, man. Fighting against Caliber Blades, your first Third opponent in the tournament, is like. What am I going to do? I've played against this guy literally my first match and lost every time. And I'm like, dude, what did I do to deserve have, having to fight this guy my first match at the tournament? You should just it's, welcome Oh, it. man, it's crazy. Welcome to the challenge, man, because you know if you get past him, your, your bracket's more than likely going to be a bit easier because yeah. he's the favorite. Oh, my God. Look at the damage. damage. Plus three. Plus, there's the frame advantage. There's the frame advantage again. And we didn't see T-Boy use a bit of meter. Not not at all. And, and that's what Caliber Blaze recognized. Yeah, for sure. He, he knew he was using it. He just knew it. So Caliber Blades takes game one there, very convincingly against T-Boy. T-Boy's got to uh, strengthen his defense a little bit, recognize that the Elliot's throwing out the strengths, and maybe start using some meters to sidestep. Right, for sure. All right, or so counter throw in this case. T-Boy getting the throw in there. Again, uh, Diego having some of the most damaging throws for a striking character in the entire game. Yeah. Caliber Blades, nice launcher there. 
Big time damage. It's going to take T-Boy down to about 60%. A great option from T-Boy on Wake Up. Puts Caliber Blades against the wall, but even as we say that, Cali right back in there. Nice combo coming up. And again, T-Boy's got to be a little bit quick on his, on his uh, strength recognition. He's dead. Nice fuzzy. That fuzzy was crazy. You know, it's the beauty of PC right there. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, yeah, for sure. I do feel like Diego still is such an unexplored character. I mean, he's basic. He's got less than 90 moves. He's a very, you know, basic generic character, but at the same time, he has a lot of things that I feel like are still unexplored. You know what I mean? Again, no that's him and a lot of other characters in this game. So it's always cool to see more Diego on the screen. There's that, there's that launch there by uh, Excalibur Blades. It's going to get the 30% against the wall. God, he's, he's dead. And if he used the meter, he's dead. That's a bold thing to do, right? To Ooh, sit okay. there and just run up to somebody and throw them in that situation? Yeah. I mean, you know, Calibur Blades, he's recognizing that T-Boy's not using any meter, and that's why he didn't even bother going for the break blow, because why would I use my meter when I can save it for the last round and kill him? Nice hold. Okay, we're, he's not going to be able to do that to Calibur Blades. Back punch punches out of the window. Yeah, and one thing Calibur Blades is really good at doing, he's good at recognizing when you're going to wake up and try and attack, so he gives himself the perfect distance to whiff yeah, punish you for sure. and get big damage. Akali was trying to bait something out there, but again, T-Boy just refuses to hold. Refuses. Up oh, there he goes. There's a first, first meter. First meter. He All right, can T-Boy make a comeback? Wow, no punish there. Ooh, okay. T-Boy. Nice fake out there. T-Boy, unfortunately, gets caught there. Kai very smart with the patience. Wow. Locked and punished accordingly. You Takes know, the it, match. It's great to see T-Boy out here, and you can't really fault him for playing that way. I mean, look at who he's fighting against. We're talking about a guy who, over the past six, seven, eight years, has been one of the most dominant players in the entire community in the history of DOA. So, yeah. you know, when you're fighting against a player like that, the only thing that's going through your head is like, I, what am I going to do against this guy? Nothing. Nothing. Take the L, go to the loser's bracket, and, and, uh, and hope, hope for, for the best. <laughs> hope, hope for the, the best. best. I mean, that's all you can do at that point. We've seen upsets. Don't get, don't get me wrong. We've seen upsets against Cowboys before, but they're very rare, and they almost never happen. Yes. So. Yes, I mean, but, but that's why we come out to play. We don't rely on predictions. We come out here to play to make sure that you are who we think you are. Exactly. You know? and I will say this. So far. That guy. Calibur Blaze is one of the most consistent players as far as, you know, playing at that top, top level. Sometimes we've seen those top players struggle against maybe that mid-level or high-level player. Calibur Blaze is one of the most, most consistent, uh, you know, skillful player we've ever seen in this game, for sure. Yeah, no so, question about that. You know, that. and we just saw why. No question. No <laughs> Didn't question. drop around, not one. So. And, and that's what we've seen. That's been a general theme of the players that we've seen play so far. Rakuto, Calibur Blades. They're not dropping many rounds. Yeah. They're, they're, they're handling business in the lower levels of the uh, pools. To make sure that you know you don't want to get any surprises, just go in there with your best character, go blow through everybody until you get to somebody that's going to be you know a little bit tougher, and then you, you handle your business there too. All right, so we're moving on. We got so sick Nash fan mm. coming up to bat. I believe we saw this player in the first match. I don't recall his name though. He's one of the guys that was up there. Um, so sick Nash fan, a Tina player, um, very long term Tina player. Been playing this character for years. Solid. Solid. It's antagonist. Okay, antagonist. It's antagonist from the there, I knew he was one of the players. So we got antagonist. He was the Nico player. So obviously he knows what he's doing. I don't know if it's enough to take Nash fan out because Nash, Nash fan is not only a DOA player, high level Street Fighter player, high level. He, I believe he played Guilty Gear, uh, Mortal Kombat. He's very good at that. I believe he said he got top eight losers. Yep. Um, either that or Soul Calibur. He plays everything and he's super talented at all these games. Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely gonna be one of those situations for So Sick Nash fan where we I think we can safely expect him to do pretty well in this tournament. Yeah. Whether he can make top eight is going to be the challenge, but I don't think he'll have a problem making something like top 16. For sure. Not at all. You cannot count him out, though. And he literally, I apparently him and Killy had a 50-match uh, set the other day. So like he's warmed up. I don't believe it was first first to 50, but they played for like three hours on stream. So he he's warmed up. He's warmed up. He's I warmed wonder, up. He's I wonder what up. the uh, count is. Ah, I don't know. I didn't watch it. I just heard about it. Because that would be... If if he let's let's say he even took like half of the matches, if you take half of the matches against a player like Killy, then you're 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 onto something. Yeah, because it's hard to beat him, let alone take half of matches of a set that long. Especially. No doubt, no doubt about it. So, but you know, one thing we do know is is Tina's a strong character, for sure. And there's not too many of them, so I, I'm excited to see this. This character took the nerf bat, probably. First out of anybody, and she's still really, really strong. Talking about Nico? No, 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 Tina. Tina got hit with. Yeah, she got hit with. A, they nerfed her damage. Yeah. They nerfed her damage. They, they nerfed her but that damage. was the biggest thing. But she's still doing damage. Don't get me wrong. And yeah. here's that relentless stun game that I was just about to talk Ooh. to you guys about. Tina's got probably the best stun game in the game. Okay. For sure. And all lift stuns. All lift stuns. Yeah. So antagonist is definitely going to have his work cut out for him in this particular set. Ooh. Okay. So again, I mean, obviously antagonist having the faster character. 
on paper, as long as he doesn't get held, he should be able to win the exchanges. Yeah, no question about that. That's safe. Oh, nice, I believe. nice high counter throw I believe there. it's safe. I'm not sure. Alright, so, you know, both players down to less than 50% right now. Pretty much whoever gets his first stun. There's that back kick. No stun, though. Forward kick, kick. What's he going to do? Beautiful use nice. of the break hold there by Nash Fan to stay alive, and he's dead. And Nash Fan... I, Antagonist is looking pretty no, solid. No, he's looking good, man. Look at solid. Wow. Like, he ran through his first opponent, and, and that was because the opponent didn't have too much defense, but... Uh, he's looking oh really, really good Oh, my here. God. He if, he co if he converts this into meter... Oh, and oh, he, he dropped it. it. He, if he converted that into meter, Nash fan had no meter. He could almost kill them, probably. Yeah. Oh, and I like it. I like it. But it looks like Nash fan is, is not reacting as quickly because he, he yeah. had a throw whipped by him and he got hit by another throw right after that. But even as we said, a Nash fan about to lose this round too. So wow. antagonist doing work. Up two rounds to zero on Nash fan in game one. So again, I mean, this antagonist guy I've never heard or played him before, and look how talented he is. You guys need to come out to these tournaments, man. Yeah. I mean, he's playing a really solid version of Pico yeah. right now. I do think we're going to see a little bit of a change in tempo of game here. Nash Fanner is very, uh, very good at adapting to his, his uh, opponent. But I don't know. He's about to get knocked off and yeah. lose his whole life bar. That's, wow. That's a nice chunk of life. Yeah, it's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. So both players sitting on a full bar right now. Let's see who gets the next conversion. There, and he oh. tried to hit a button. There's the break. He could have just finished to. that if he wanted to. Wow, there's the whiff. Oh, Reckless. he's dead. I, no, no, no. Is he dead? He's dead. Oh, he's you know dead. He's dead. Look at that. We need to see more of that. No, of that. Did you see Antagonist had that because he could have just finished the string out. Yeah, for sure. To, to free cancel there. He and may again, end up regretting that. There it is. Nash fan is recognizing that Nico is literally doing nonstop holds right now. He's going to keep throwing him on his neck every time. Yeah. This could be really bad for uh, Antagonist right uh, now. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Give me the meter. Is he going to cancel it? Oh, that's going to hurt. Dude. Big time damage. That was almost a 50% conversion. Big time damage. Wow. Without, a, without a wall. Wow, and Nash fan, again, I told you, we're going to see a change in the tempo of the match. Wow, and, and Ty, Antagonist sitting on a whole sidestep right now. Three sidesteps, actually. There's the uh, the knockaway to the wall. That's unsafe. No punish by Nash fan, though. Oh, oh my this has God. got your life gone, my friend. Good grief. Crazy. And that wake-up kick got, should have been stuffed. Oh, All right, so Antagonist, he's got to make something happen. Nash fan what did he just hold. do? This could be it here. Oh, he, wait. Wow. wow. What a scramble. What wow. a scramble. Wow. What a scramble. What just happened? And so, you see Nash fan just took a breath. Like, first of all, my attack just whipped for no reason. Yeah, I mean, Antagonist is, has, can only be mad at himself there because, again, that third round was his. It yeah, was for sure. Free for him. He had it. He, he was running away with combo. it. Didn't finish the combo. And we don't Tell finish you, the man. combos, bad things happen. So this stage... um. You know, they're closer in, so Nico is going to be able to run Tina down at this point. But with this wall damage, that throw that he was doing is going to do 60% on high counter. So yeah. he got to be careful when he's holding. There it is. There it is. No high counter, but he still got 30% off of that. Big time damage. Oh, oh, oh he didn't he confirm it. it. But Nash fan is still here doing work. It takes that first round. So Nash fan, he's actually won the last four rounds straight. Not in all of them have been convincing, but he's doing pretty good. The, the change of momentum, like you said before, yeah. is definitely going in his favor. He's recognizing that antagonist is, I like to call, throw on, he's on buttons. Ooh. This, is he going to get the wall too? Oh my god. I, I thought that was going to kill, but. Me too. Didn't. I thought if you would have did the other older throw, the uh, wall rising back throw, that would have killed for sure. Yeah, maybe. It does a couple more points of damage. But either way, I mean, he made a great choice. And it's right. just playing with get the back stuns. Into this. this is the way to do it. Do some stuns, mix it up with some grabs, and also read the correct wake up kicks. That is the way you want to get back to the game. But again, oh the holes are catching. Antagonist is getting They're dropped on his equal. back, and wow. he's dead. Wow. And the use of meter to take it by Soldier Yikes. Nash Man. Antagonist was looking good. You got to give it to look, him. He was looking real good that round. But if he got dropped on his back one more time. Man. Oh my God. Man. Man. And Antagonist is, is, is dripping right now. He's like, yo, why did you just break my back like that over and over and over again? That's that was crazy. crazy. But again, the adaptation from Sosik Nash fan. He's a high-level player in multiple games. If anyone's going to adapt, it's going to be him. Yeah, I mean, he definitely did a phenomenal job of adapting. Uh, and he definitely got lucky that his opponent chose not to uh, finish that combo on that third round. But yeah. either way, I think he was going to make the adjustment and eventually take that to a third game and probably have it taken it successfully definitely. in the first it place. It could have went either way. I mean, but again, 
I kind of figured that Nash fan was going to run away with it when he started breaking his back. I knew as soon as he started doing it, he was on to this guy. Yeah, we saw that like, like five time. or six times where it was a high counter throw for one of our most damaging throws. I mean, those are clear cut reads that antagonist just didn't adapt to. Right. He didn't he didn't adapt in that situation where it's like, okay, you don't always have to hold. You can just hold the black button, watch your opponent whip their throw, and then go back on the offensive. And he just wasn't able to make that decision in time to kind of save his tournament side, tournament life on winner's side. Right. One thing that does help Tina a lot in this game is that the stun launch is so, so strong in this game. Yeah. It's literally back to DOA two days. If you get stunned and you get launched, you first of all, if you get stunned, you got to guess the launch, oh. right? You don't have to play with the stun. You get stunned, you get launched, you get bounded, and then that leads in a break blow, oh. that leads in a close hit, everything. So who we got on the screen? Look at this. Wow. Okay, so let's talk about these guys. We have... I call him Alan Paris, but he's going by Lucky Loops, or he might go by Lucky CW. Either way, mm -hmm. we got Lucky Loops, we're going to call him Lucky Loops, are going up against Black Moon Rising. What do you think about this matchup? I think these players have played against each other many, 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 many times. Especially online, yes, because they're both online. on PC as well. Yep. I think I'm excited to see what Lucky Loops can do because he, he to me, was one of the stars of Summer Jam with Definitely. the combos he put on the screen and the people that he knocked into loser's bracket or knocked out of the tournament altogether. Wow. But his opponent is Black Moon Rising, and Black Moon Rising has been a consistent top, top eight, eight finisher yes. this entire World Championship Series. Dude, I'll give it to him, man. Black Moon in this game is better than he's ever been. I'm not sure if this is the game, if that's him leveling up or a combination of both. But there has not been a top eight that he hasn't been a part of since right. this game came out. Right. And this could be, you know, Commentator's Curse, where he doesn't make top eight because you just said he's made it every time. Right. This is obviously a button check. He's not picking rig. And, you know, Lucky Loops has a Hayate, but nah, I don't believe we're going to see him pick Hayate. There's no, no way. He's no been way. using him a lot online, but I don't think he's going to pick him. I do think Hayate does well in a late thing matchup, but go with your guns, especially when you're this early in the tournament. You do not yeah. want to go to losers back right now. Yeah, no, no, no question about that. I think the most important thing for Lucky Loops at this point is to recognize that he, like you said, is playing a Lee Fang player. Uh, Lee Fang players. Regardless of the type of player, who the player is, they like certain strings. They like to press buttons while they're stunned. And if he can recognize those particular moments, he's got a good chance of taking out Black Moon. Right. Likewise, for Black Moon, he just has to recognize that AP likes to play a methodical Kasumi. Yes. He's not yes. a Kasumi that's going to run in there and press a bunch of buttons. He's not a Kasumi that's going to try and, you know, play defensively. It's methodical. It's based on the pace of the match. Right. And if he can disrupt that pace for AP, then he's going to cause AP to start holding a lot. AP has been known to hold low from time to time, get himself blown up for it. We saw that against E-Man and Summer Jam. Yeah. So if, if Black Moon can do that from a pacing perspective, he gives himself a chance to win as well. Right. It's just a matter of which player gets to establish the game plan first and then who can make the, the adaptions or adaptations right. in time. I so do it's a great feel stage. Like, I do feel like um, Lucky Loops' play style counteracts Black Moon because – you know, Lucky Loose plays a very solid, solid game plan where Black Moon kind of sometimes he gets all over the place, but that's a part of his play style. That's what makes him good. Well, we already saw at the start of the match, right? Lucky Loops wasn't willing to press a button. Black Moon came in there with the kicks. And then we also saw the other key part, which is Kasumi 6BK. Black Moon wanted to challenge that immediately with the catch throw. So that's the pace that Black Moon has set, and that's helping him take round one. It's wow, by making sure he stays convincing. in his face. Yeah. That was convincing. This stage is going to play a big role in this matchup. If you get hit on counter hit, just like we just saw, you're going to get hit by that guaranteed launcher afterwards. So, but you can use break hold to get out of a slip stun. Yep. And it's interesting that Black Moon there chose to use a break hold. It's not a situation that, you know, she has a significant amount of frame advantage. the car again? Oh, wow. This is going to be, ooh, misses it. Punishment here. All right, so, you know, Lucky CW looking to get back into this. There's that really it. quick launcher. Yep. I don't think he's gonna cancel. Even if he does, he doesn't die from this. He's not dead. He's oh, still he's on dead. the on the uh, on the screen with a little bit of life. And this is this is AP. Ooh, okay. Playing smart. When so, it down, I mean, put that 11 frame mid on the screen. We know that Kasumi can out prioritize the attacks in this matchup because she's so fast. But Black Moon Rising has the parries and Sabakis to stop her best options. And the other thing that Black Moon has is too. Remember, uh, Lee Fang's 1P that actually crushes Kasumi's 6 6P. Wow, I did punch. not know that. Okay, it's, it's a problem. It's been in the DOA series for forever. It's unfortunate. Yeah, it's just the reality of our pain. Right. I say our pain because Kasumi players. Everywhere. Well, Kasumi <laughs> needs to be turned down a notch anyway. So anything that works against her is good. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Help. Crazy to say. 
Alright, so yo, we're I'm seeing done. and, and he's dead. dead character. I wanna point this out. We're oh, seeing and he wait. took the hard combo too. Okay, yeah. he's dead. Okay. I think he wanted the car over there to yeah, yeah. recognize the situation, so he wanted to make sure he was in position to kill it. We're seeing Lucky CW mm, nice damage. completely turn this game around. But then again, I just seen Black Moon just do a throw to the 20%. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's gonna be one of those situations where we see this being something that comes down to the last round of each game. Wow. And the slip stuns are definitely, definitely coming into favor for Black Moon. It makes that uh, 2HK such a good move. You have to be careful. Lei Feng is notorious for hitting buttons when she's nice not duck. supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there's the stomp. Gets the extra damage. Beautiful reaction to the offensive hold on Wake Up by Lucky Loops. That's unsafe. Okay, finishes the string. Oh, he... Oh, beautiful hold. He had to hold that. Black Moon Rising looking really good right now. Both players sitting on the oh, same amount of life. Uh-oh, guaranteed. Again, that slips on. Ooh. Both players trying to scramble here. Who can get the first launcher, I think, is going to be the one to take the match. That's it. He's dead. Yep. And again, you know what we saw? That, you know, Lucky CW is going to have to change up. He's trying to throw Black Moon Rising. Yes. That is a mistake. If you stun him, especially in this game, think about it. You know, the chances of you getting a throw after someone gets stunned are kind of slim because of the fact that, look look at how many options you have. You have a stun, Kasumi can do down kick kick the launch. Yep. She can do a mid kick launcher, a high punch launcher. She can do anything she wants. Why would you risk going for a throw just to get the launcher? Absolutely, absolutely. So game two here, going into it, Lucky CW looking to get a point on the board. Black Moon up 1-0, looking to close out the entire match. Again, Ooh. you don't want to go to lose bracket this early in the and tournament. Again, you don't want that to happen. What did we talk about at the start of this match? Sometimes Lucky CW gets caught low hold. And yeah. it costs him matches when, For sure. he's off, when he's off kilter. There it is again. And there's that new down back punch kick string and Blackman recognizing the high went under it. Man, this is not the way I thought Lucky Loose was going to play against Blackman. Well, it's, it's more or less because Black Moon Rising has been able to establish what he wants to do. But yeah, for sure. All, all Lucky CW needs to do, because your Kasumi players get three good reads for the round, and you can, you can put yep. yourself back into it. You know, I hate to say this, but Kasumi has somewhat of, I don't want to call it a blender, but, you know, she has the ability to do whatever she wants sometimes. You have to respect it. Yeah. The only thing in this matchup that, you know, he's, he's got to watch out for as Kasumi is the fact that he has those players and Sabakis, and he's not dead yet, but it's going to hurt. Yo, he should have punished that, but he wasn't able to get some space. He's got wow, he's got Ooh, Ooh, nice break. And this could be there. It is. That's what I was talking about. Take your launcher. Oh, Wait, he, he didn't mean to do it. that. But he's still here. He's still in it. Scrambles on the buttons. That's safe. Wow. And he hit a button anyway. A button. Oh, this dude. Yikes! Yikes! Oh, yikes. this guy. So Black Moon's oh, looking brave. really good right now. And you see Black Moon's put it in that classic Lee Fang strategy of throwing out a semi-safe move and then throwing out a parry. He's changed up his game plan just a little bit to throw off AP even further. Nice launcher here. He's going to take AP down to about 50%. Oh! <laughs> you know, one thing I will say about Black Moon, when you're fighting him sometimes, you have to be like, yo, you did that? Yeah. yeah. And just like that, you know, Lucky Loops is down to no life at this point with all his meter. He can make a comeback and he's dead. That's it. And, and I I'll think, tell you one thing. Again, it was just the momentum. That's sure. what it was about. Right, so I'm going to tell you one thing. Quickly. Lucky Loops is was not quick happy. Off. He was going so quick that he was gone before the screen changed. Yeah, that he was out of like there. like a ninja in that situation. Dude, and Black wow. Moon is Black feel, Moon. Look at Black this guy. Oh, my god! Yo, gosh. this dude. I love this dude, bro. <laughs> what a savage, dude. Wow. Lucky Loops disappeared. He just did oh Kasumi's taunt and gosh. disappeared off the screen just now. This dude just, oh, I got to talk to him about that one. That was After crazy. That this was tournament crazy. today, off camera, I need to hear that one. What, that what brought that one on? He was that was that was one of the most confident, like, situations or poses he's put himself in that we've seen, you know, throughout this entire season. Again, shout out to the Green Ranger, bro. I love the Green Ranger. I like the Blue Ranger better, but shout out to the Green Ranger. I mean, is he gonna do some flips? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, think he has any enough. flips. I don't think he, he's got the flips. Now, he, he if that was like me, it. I would throw some flips out there. You know, I'm a real Power Ranger, but I'm in a, I'm in a different form right now. You know I'm in what? commentary form. <laughs> Again, you know, let's talk about that last match, though. Lucky Loops disappeared. He disappeared, and I, it, it was about the momentum. Black Moon was able, able to establish his game plan, maintain his game plan, and we saw the breakdown of AP. The breakdown meaning he started to low hold. Black Moon was ready for to punish those low holds, and it was over. It yeah, was over very sure. quickly. You know, and unfortunately, Lucky Loops is going to lose his bracket again this early. We just started this tournament. You do not want to go to lose a bracket already. But either way, no. I think we're going to see him come back again. We have our next players up to bat. Tell me who we got up here. Tell me who we got up here. My guy, we have Quiggles. Okay. And we have So Sick Nash fan. Right. Tell now, me about this matchup. Now, I like So Sick Nash fan. We just saw him last time. He, he had a tough match against Nico. It may have been because he wasn't warmed up because, you know, he eventually closed it out six straight rounds. 
But at the same time, you can't do that sort of thing against somebody like Quiggles. Quiggles is not going to drop that combo right. at the end of the game and give you life so you can actually get back into the game. So when we're talking about a matchup, Tina versus whoever Quiggles feels like playing, could be Phase 4, could be Kasumi, could be Christy. Number of characters in his Rolodex, I don't know who we're going to see. But it's going to be difficult for Tina either way because those are characters that do very well against Tina shenanigans because they're fast. Right, for sure. And, you know, I want to talk about Nashvin really quick because Nashvin's always been that guy, and he's very similar to me in this sense. Yeah. He's always been that guy that's very good, very talented player. Sure. But when it comes to fighting these top, top guys, he just can't close it out against them. Yeah, I mean, Like, literally, he comes so close. We get literally about to win the game, and then something happens. We get stunned or get grabbed. It happens every single time. Very similar to me in that sense, and, you know, I feel his pain. And we're, we might see that again, but I don't know because Nash, if anyone can beat Quiggle, it'll be Nash. If yeah. you're expecting an upset, it could be him. It, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to to watch this because Nashman, like you said, he hasn't been able to break through, but he's always had the potential to break through. Yes, it's just that it's unfortunate he's gonna try to do this against Quiggles because Quiggles. He's looking to try and break through and win oh, first yeah. place. And I'll tell you this: Quiggle is one of those players that needs no warm up to be able to whoop your ass all day. Yeah. No yeah. warm up. He can do it without playing one casual. But there's yeah. anybody in this community that doesn't need casuals to be able to win. It's him. And I, I like. He I like won one tournament here. with no casuals. Yeah. So 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 far, there's two things I've noticed. Number one, player one is on an eight eight win streak. So that's got to go. That that needs to go. But we're gonna see because Nash fan is player two at this point. Nash fan is player two. He's got to do something. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to add to this, right? Yeah, he doesn't want to no, turn no, no. it into a ten win streak. But number two, I like what we're seeing from the from the stream. Like you can see the players' faces as they're playing because yeah. AP walking off, man. I would like to have seen those his last face ten during seconds like what of happened? that match. Like yeah. I want to see his face. That would have been I'm nuts. telling you, man. And AP is a very emotional player. So no question. It's, an, it's unfortunate that it happens because sometimes that comes into play with your play style. Like sometimes you're like, yo, did you really just get off the floor and do a 30-frame throw to me? Yeah. And then the whole time you're thinking about, yo, he might do that again. Yep. That yep. plays with your head, man. And that's the one thing about the top guys that separates them from everybody else is that, you know, when something crazy happens to them, they brush it off and they get right back in there. But he's you know still I mean? kind of in that mindset where he's yeah. still affected by it. For sure. And I think what's, what's interesting, and, and it looks like we're going to have a bit of a technical issue situation here, so we're going to keep talking through that AP matches. AP is also very similar to Sosik Nashvin, right? Yeah. Meaning that he's a guy that's capable of making top eight, but, again, hasn't been able to consistently break through. Hasn't been able to consistently break through and make that top eight and start breaking into that top four, that top two, Definitely. and maybe that championship as well. He's been one of those guys, like you said, like 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 you said, almost like a Blackberry, where yeah, you know, he's he hasn't been able to win a major in the DOA five, DOA six era. Yeah, and you know, DOA is one of those games where you know I don't want to say it like this. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. It's one of those games where you can literally get a stun, and that's all you need to beat someone. Like think yeah. about it. You know, if me and you were playing, it's gonna. Det pretty much determined on whoever gets that first stun is most likely going to run away with that game. Like, the momentum is huge in DOA. If you have the momentum, it's very hard to stop somebody from pretty much beating you down. Like, if you have, we've seen it. We've seen it multiple times throughout multiple events in DOA, you know. Thinking back to that one NEC when Master beat Quiggle 6-0. Literally, if anything worse could have happened, he would have got great just three times because... Quiggle didn't get one hit on the screen to look like. Mads no. are literally 6-0, one of the best players in the world. Yeah. So momentum is huge in this game. Yeah, we can't say it enough. I mean, that this this game is about momentum. Yeah. It's about your environment, and it's about the stage interactables first, then your character, right? Definitely. Because your character, you know, you can do whatever you need to do to get some damage on the screen, but if your opponent suddenly gets an interactable on you, and gets a 50% combo, that's going to mess up your mental Completely. and it's going to mess up the rest of your match. You're looking back to that AP match, Blackman Ryzen hit him off of that dodge ram in the corner both mm -hmm. times, back to back. You're thinking like, yo, did this dude just bounce me off of this 2019 dodge ram twice and take my life bar? Like, then you're yeah. like, yo, goes like, what head. am I supposed to do? How do I recover from this? Goes to your head. Goes to your head for sure. Crazy. And, and that's why I love DOA. DOA is one of those games where, like, in a way, you don't know what's going to happen. We've literally seen people down custom to nothing sticks. and make a comeback. Look at those sticks on that controller. Yeah, he's got the custom What is that? Right okay. Yeah, Hopefully it doesn't distract it. him, but we'll see what happens, man. We're going to be jumping to the next game. We have so sick Nash fan going up against Quiggle here at KIT 2019. Let's get it. And Quiggle's still sticking very true to Phase 4. One of those characters that's got a high entry to, to, to uh, actually start using well because her combos require just frames, basically, right? I'm going to tell you one thing about this matchup. Quiggle, and I know you know this, Quiggle loves to grab. 
Yeah, and we he see loves it. to throw, he just, just right like there. he just did. He loves to throw. Nash fan, it's very hard to throw him because he throws a lot of that back kick, that 15 frame back kick. He throws it out there a lot. Wow, that was a bad whiff and he's dead. Wow. That was yeah. a really, that was a great throw by Quiggle if you think about it. Yeah. He grabbed the one to recover you that string when he whiffed it. And all he had to do was get popped in the mouth if he was out of reach of that. So that was a really risky grab there, but it worked out for him. Very smart play from him. Nash uh, fan right back uh, in there. Uh, uh. I like that giant combo. swing. It's sick because it, it gives you the damage and it lets you get giant swing off on mid on lightweights. Yeah. Really good combo. Solid combo. It's unfortunate that it's lightweights only. Yeah. She can still get the normal grab on midways, but on lightweight she gets giant swing after that. Yeah. Yep. Oh, oh that's it's punishment. Yeah, it's punishment. Nice, nice throw there by uh, Quiggle. Jumps over to wake up kick. There's the frame advantage. Nice, nice hold, hold there by Quiggle. And Quiggle's throwing out some attacks, just kind of trying to poke, get his way Ooh, into Sosic Nash. Did you see that? Yeah, nice hit. That confirm. punch kick kick confirm off of that whip was crazy. Uh oh. I am surprised we did not see a no, uh, no whip punish there. Yeah, okay. I, I'm surprised we didn't see a low throw punish from Quiggle's yeah. a little bit earlier. But For sure. I mean, it's just second round. I Get like what up. I'm seeing from Nash fan. He is putting hands on this man. Yeah. He meant to do 3 3 P right there. He didn't mean to do that. Nice, nice uses the break hold there, Smart stops play. Quiggle's offense. Ooh, he took his back! Oh, that's gonna hurt. Uh, uh, uh. Wow. What we got? So Quiggle's going right back in too. Nice. But no, so uh, like Nash fan. Uh, there's a safe throw. No hold from Quiggle. He's gonna giant swing him again. This is going to take 30%. What is the mix up on Wake Up? I don't know, but I mean, at this point. He equalized that life yeah, bar just that Quiggles like that. was working so hard for. Again, I told you, Nash fan, you cannot count him out. And Quiggle, look how careful he's playing. Ooh, nice That's punishment. unsafe, and I think he's dead out there. Yeah, yeah I don't dead. think wow. Sosik Nash fan meant to do that. I think he was looking to punish the, uh, the the guard break, but was a little slow on it. Yeah, beautiful punish there. Again, Nash fan recognizes the string, goes for the throw punishment. Ooh, nice, nice. double throw. Offensive hold. Okay. Oh, hits him out of it. And I like wow. what you just saw. That was a great challenge from Sosik Nash fan. Uh -huh. He's burning meter. He wasn't going to hold. And Quiggle's not that slow. He's definitely not going to hold. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen now. Quiggle, if he gets a stun and Quiggle knows it, oh, just like that Nashman takes it. If Quiggle got a stun right there, he would have came back. Yeah. On all four bars, he would have came back. And, and Nashman had no meter. Wow. And, oh, man. And Quiggle has got to do something about these deep stuns right now because he's getting that in that situation where Nashman is plus 30, plus you gotta, 35. You got to use meter. If yeah. Tina stuns you, you have to use meter because you're not getting out, bro. Yeah, it's interesting <laughs> that he's holding on to his meter. I mean, I, he may be trying to get a big-time combo, but Sosik yeah. Nashman has enough meter to get out of that type of combo himself. So. Look at the way he's playing. Nashman's sitting on a life lead. He knows that there's only 30 seconds left on the clock. All I got to do is make him come to me. There's the whip. Dangerous. Ooh, nice punish there. Smart and Nashman's going to go right back to backing up. There it is. Great game plan there by Nash fan. Wow. Catch it decides that Quiggle in trouble right now. Yeah, Nash fan is just playing this very smart. I'm impressed. Quiggles, I don't think, was ready for this sort of play from his oh, opponent. Oh, that's safe. That zero on hit. Nice hold, hold there by Quiggles. 12 seconds on the clock. Quiggles, Nash fan knows it. Oh, okay. Quiggle Eight back in this. Quiggle back in this. That's oh. it. He's dead. If he uses the meter, that meter, he's going to get the light. And lead. Quiggles runs away here. He can take he's this dead. game. He's dead. Wow. Smart play. Dude. Smart Do you play know how Quiggles. smart that was? I mean, that First was of all, let's talk about what happened. If Nash fan did not use back kick, you know that him taking his back costed him that, yeah. right? Yeah. He got the 4-4 four -four punch on his back. Dude, that was so crazy. I don't even think Quiggle even knew what happened. Nah, clearly, Quiggles knew what happened wow. because he, he was able to do that combo and take the take the round, but it was just very, very smart play for Yeah, he was waiting players. for it. He was waiting for the back kick. He knew the recovery because, you know, when you back dash away, your back is still open. Mm -hmm. He knew that that 4-4 four -four punch was going to get in there and break his back, okay, and he was going to launch him, and Nash fan had no meter to break out of that. Yeah, no doubt wow. about it. And one of the things that we, we run into, so guys, just give us a little bit of patience. It's been a bit of a uh, technical issue yeah. from a, from a sound no doubt, perspective. No doubt. But so we're still going to get through this. We're getting through this, guys. Hang in there. DOA 6. But what a this freeze. This hype, man. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think Sosik Nash fan has brought the hype, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. No, that, that got, me, got me going a little bit, man, because you don't see Quiggle lose often. So for a dude, like, think about it. How many players do we see that get their life lead and back up? Yeah. No I, one ever does that. And it's crazy because Sosik Nash fan made – the right choice after right choice after right choice in that last round but in the very last moment he made an accidental mistake right because you know 4k norm most of the time is, is going to give you that space that yep. you need to be safe to get away but quiggles was able to get underneath of that tag him with a 6 6p and then take enough life to take the actual game 
right, mean, this, here we I go. expect this, this next game to go the same way. Yeah, let's get it. Let's see what happens. All right, so I think we're going to see this stage is going to favor FaZe more because now he has the ability to stay in his face. Yep. That open stage is so huge that, you know, Tina's able to run away in that matchup. Oh, okay. I like that. I like that. You okay. saw, saw the free step. You don't see people free stepping that often, but against Ooh, FaZe 4, it's effective. I think it's because he hit a button that that throw out of the air uh, transition just whiffed. That was crazy. Ooh, nice break nice hold. Ooh, don't hit buttons. Offensive hold, 20%. Nice uh, offensive hold there by yeah. Nashman. And this is a tough matchup for Phase 4 in general, I think. He's dead. Nice throw there by Quiggle. Again, I talk about all the time, Quiggle is going to throw you more than anything. Oh, he didn't take the meter. Okay. Is that a mistake? That might have been a mistake. He should have oh went for the back throw into the low throw. But either way, that's going to hurt. Man, that might have been a mistake for Quiggle not to use the meter there. Oh, and he whips. He was just out of range. I knew what he was trying to do. I knew what he was trying to do. And it's crazy because Quiggles went with the weakest option to punish that. If he had had a little bit more life. He might have still been in it, yeah. yeah. Oh, nice interrupt there. Saw the delay in the string. Challenging uh -huh. with the mid-kick. Uh -huh. And he's going to uh -huh. get paid with a nice combo. Dude, and oh, oh, uh, Phase 4 doesn't hurt in this game. Phase 4 doesn't do any damage. Jeez. What are you Jeez. talking about? She does some good damage. I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah, she does. Ooh. There was literally a form on Free Step Dodge saying Phase needs to do more damage. you got to be kidding me. Shout out to Free Step Dodge. Shout out to Free Step Dodge. Definitely check out Free Step Dodge for all you DOA needs. Wow, what a hold. Mm. And I think that's the first time we've seen him successful connecting that yeah. hit. Yeah. Nice four punch challenge there from So Sick. But again, Notice what we're seeing more. Quibble is starting to hold now because yeah. he knows this man is dropping me on my neck time and time again. I need to hold. So we're going to see more holds. But this could be it. If Quiggle gets one more hit on the board and gets a stun, he could send Sosa Nashman to losers. Nice shot on Wizard there by Nashman. Run up break blow. Wow. Wow. Uh, and he's dead. And again, it, it's crazy it. because Quiggles had such great patience in that yeah. situation. You know, you hate to see it, man. You know, you hate to see a great player lose to another great player when you're rooting for them both. I mean, you know, they're both obviously very talented, but... I do feel like the matchup does go slightly in FaZe's favor because of the speed. And as you can see, we saw a huge difference in, you know, Tina's ability to run away because that, ma that map is so much smaller than the other one. You know yeah, what I mean? No doubt about so, it. So, you know, that was a huge, huge factor in that matchup. And obviously you've seen Quiggle literally chasing him down that entire time. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a great match from both players. I think for Quiggles, he was definitely surprised in game one when Sosik Nash fan completely switched it up and started essentially playing a more defensive style. Right. Getting that space tagging with the right throws with the right decisions uh, but in the end Quickles was able to take that match and he's moving on yeah for sure I mean it's it's like when you have these tournaments that have all these talented players you know because you know every commentator obviously you know you can't be biased but everybody has in their head that one player they really want to do well yeah. and it's hard to do that when all these players are not only the great people but the great players are as well so no 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 I mean you know, like in it. my head in my head I might be like <laughs> all right I want Nash to win this but you know, Quiggles win, and I got to give him respect where it's due. But, you know, I might have wanted Nash to win that a little more than Quiggles. I, I don't yeah, know. I, I think you were thinking from the perspective of Nash doesn't get a chance to come out here very often. Right. And he's he the underdog. Go deep. He's yeah. the underdog. You yeah, I mean, mean, I mean, everyone loves the underdog. Loves the underdog story, exactly. So, you know, seeing Nash be in the top eight in his first DOA 6 tournament, that would have been awesome. You know yeah. What I mean? But he's still in losers. He's not out yet. We might see him again later on. I mean, he's got to go through a gauntlet. If he makes it out, I'll be surprised, to yeah. be honest with you. Um, but, hey, power to him because we don't see Tina players that often. Right. We, we literally only have one Tina player that's, that's consistently killing. coming out exactly. and doing top eight. So, up next, we've got an interesting set here. Once again, we've got Rakuto on again, the screen representing Free Step Dodge. Shout guys, out to Free Step Dodge. We, we we keep saying Free Step Dodge because it is the home of DOA, the home of the DOA community. So, if you have not been to FreeStepDodge.com, please take a look. You Definitely. Can get much, much more information about the games of DOA. You can see all the strategy tips that players are actually sharing on a regular basis with one another, as well as other videos um, that that help you get better at the game in general. Right. And again, not only is that your only source for, um, you know, Dead or Alive 6 information, you also have the Dead or Alive 6 official Twitter page, guys. Every new update that you can think of for DOA 6 is on there. Yeah. You know, obviously, Master being a community manager, he's on that page. He's running that page. If you're going to find new information about the game, Master's going to be the first one to have it. He's going to put it on that page. So it's going to be DOA 6 um, Tech, I believe, is actually what it is, uh, the official Twitter page. Please be sure to check out that Twitter page, guys. All the new information is on there. And also, be sure to like the, uh, the DOA 6 page on Facebook as well. Yeah, no question. And you know, you know what's interesting is when we were talking about Twitter and whatnot. So yesterday, of course, Tokyo Game Show was going on at the same time. Right. They showed out the Momiji video at like 4 a.m. I was sleeping. Phones were blowing up, though. Like, Momiji, Momiji, she's yeah. here, she's here, she's here. That's awesome. 
Yeah, that's for sure. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like they've done such a great job with their PR as far as, you know, how active they are on the social media. Yeah. And um, they're really reaching out to people and interacting with people. And, you know, we're just going to say it. I mean, you know, obviously people have their gripes with DOA 6 at this point, but they're giving people what they want. They wanted Momiji since the game came out, and now you guys have Momiji. You know what I mean? So it's Can't awesome to have her back. I might and retire again, Shout out to uh, Matt Potton for configuring all the PCs that we're playing on this week. All right, so again, Player One has been rocking this 10 game win streak. Dark Phoenix has to do something about this. I got faith that he can take at least one game off of Rakuto. But as I say that, Rakuto starting this off really, really well with a nice parry here. Gets himself that situation where he's at advantage. Gonna take some damage here. And he's got Dark Phoenix down to about 25% at the end of this round. Again, another nice parry from Rakuto. Nice grab. One more situation. Yeah, wow. Rakuto takes a round. And that's that Rakuto. Having so much experience, not only against Atomi, but in DOA in general, like, that was a really, really, really effective round. Yeah, and I think the one thing that Dark Phoenix is going to have to do is, is put some tracking moves on the screen to make sure that Rakuto stays in place. But more importantly, he's got to recognize when Rakuto is going to throw out that parry because the last thing you need to do is put yourself in a situation where you're against Bayman and Rakuto, and he's got plus three, plus four advantage. Right. Just not where you want to be. And, you know, obviously, Dark Phoenix was doing pretty well to get to this point in the tournament, yeah. but Rakuto is literally running this man over at this he, point. He's making all the right choices, and Dark Phoenix has to adjust. Let's Ooh. see if he can get something here. Rakuto, okay. nice defense. Good. So Dark Phoenix getting something on the board. There's the frame advantage. Feet. Okay, he's using that forward forward kick. Wow, there's the forward grab. Uh-huh. Don't step. All right, there's Smart that frame advantage Dark again. Phoenix gets caught, gets clipped there. Rakuto, big time damage. There's that frame advantage. Oh, man. He knows it's a 2-1-1, on right? On wow. Rakuto is literally looking to potentially go up 1-0 already in the set, and there's the offensive goal to close it out. Listen, wow. man, if, if your defense is is shaky or you he's going like to pick you up are, on it. Yeah, I mean, Rakuto's going to pick up on it, and he's going to make Rakuto, he's going to make no, Bayman look like a character that does massive amounts exactly. of damage. Exactly, and he's going to make Bayman look like a great character when we yeah. all know that Bayman struggles in this game. For sure. But, I mean, in, in this particular matchup, like with Tomi, Bayman's not at that much of a disadvantage because Hitomi herself, you know, she's a little limited in her tool set yeah. against this character. And, you know, Hitomi has pretty much always been like that. I mean, I know she was great in TU, but we really have never seen a version of the game where Hitomi was like, yo, this character is crazy. Yeah, maybe not crazy. I think I liked her in 5 just because she has so many sit-down stuns. Like yeah, she had to sit-down stuns, right. But Rakuto, again, we're seeing a familiar story, putting Dark Phoenix against the wall, getting that frame advantage, using that 2K. And that's a combo. And that's, yeah. you know, we're going to see a lot of that down kick from uh, Rakuto because he knows in that situation how good the sidestep is in this game. And nice. he knows that if you step or if you hit a button, that down kick is a natural combo. You cannot hold the second kick. Oh my gosh. And you wow. see the smart play from Rakuto. I don't know if he meant to delay it or if Dark Phoenix was just off in the timing of his break hold. But it worked out for him really well in that situation. And I feel like that's something that a lot of players need to be taking notice of. You know, if you're doing Fatal Rush to people, you can delay the Fatal Rush and make them use that meter and continue it. So I feel like that's really something that people are not taking advantage of in this game. Yeah, for no sure. question. Kudo sitting up there nice and pretty right now on two rounds in game two, looking to try and take this. What I'd like to see from Dark Phoenix is a few less mids and then a launcher. He hasn't successfully launched Rakuto that often in this particular set. It's unsafe. It's unsafe. No punish by Rakuto, though. So Dark Phoenix needs to get something going. That high counter mid punch hold is going to do so much damage. Leaving Dark Phoenix down to no life. Let's see if he can make a comeback. Mm. And there's the offensive forward again. That standing 15 frame forward threat is so crazy. It's an offensive hold. So, it's going to so your button. What's interesting is the fact that he, he ducked the low, right? So right. free cancel. And as he's rising, he's already buffering in that catch throw yeah. to catch whatever offensive attack exactly. that you know, Dark Phoenix wanted to put on screen. That's a tough loss. But if Dark Phoenix goes back and looks at the tape, he's going to recognize a couple things. And that's why it's so good. I want to keep talking about that. Bayman having that standing offensive hold, he can duck a string and throw that offensive hold out there and eat your string if you duck the high. So, yeah. you know, like Lei Feng, for example, if she ducks the string, she's going to have to input that forward forward grab, and it's going to take so much time where Bayman has the ability to offensive hold you from a standing position. That's so important. Yeah. All right, man. We're going to move on here. Yeah, I mean, so Rakuto's moving on. I mean, that's two wins for Rakuto. Yeah. So if we're just keeping count, that means he's just made it to top 16. Yeah. And uh, he's sitting at, he's sitting waiting for his next opponent. Right. On the other flip side, Dark Phoenix has gone straight to the loser's bracket. Yep. He's going to have to go through a gauntlet because if you guys haven't been paying attention at home, we have two large pools here. Yeah. So it's not just, you know, one pool or eight pools that we've had in the past. It's just two pools and with all the killers all together. It's going to be a really, really, really miserable road for Dark Phoenix right. and <laughs> if he's trying to get to top 16. And you know, these tournaments, you know, again, I want to talk about that again. We have these two huge pools. 
there's literally eight top players at this event. Someone's got to go lose the bracket, Somebody's and gotta you're go. going to have to deal with them down there. So, you know, and I'm looking at the crowd here. I want to shout out uh, Killy for winning the last event. Okay. Shout out to Killy in the last event. We have so many great players in that. Oh, wow. I didn't know how Ichigo was here. What is he doing here? What he's is Hollow here. doing here? Okay. He's here. I mean, it's, it's I hope he's in this tournament. It's a lot of great players that are here, whether or not they just want to see the scene of KIT, which, by the way, shout out to the to the organizers awesome. for KIT. Awesome. This is probably one of the best production sets that we've been on for, sure. for this entire World Championship yes. series. And shout out to Vandy, man. Like, this guy is expanding right now. Obviously, he's known for, you know, KIT in Tennessee, but yeah. he's also expanded to Texas this time. And this event, I got to say, I feel great being here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you guys could see the the, uh, the view that we have right now sitting up here commentating, this is, like, awesome. The lighting is awesome. We can see everyone out in the uh, in the crowd there. It's really awesome to be here. This is such a professional uh, rain event. So shout out to Dandy, man. He's doing his thing right now. No doubt. No doubt. I mean, the guy, I mean, I, when I, the last KIT tournament I went to was in 2015. Yeah. We were in, I believe at the time, a school warehouse, like a, almost a gymnasium. Yeah. And to go from that to this, it's remarkable. And only four years? Phenomenal. Phenomenal saying, stuff. So he's out here yeah, doing his thing, man. The entire staff. Shout out to Vandy. This is an awesome event so far. And, yep. you know, putting on for DOA, we're on the big screen, ladies and gentlemen. So, let's get it. DOA Assist World Championship, KIT 2019. Got Tommy versus Coker, but I think we're going to see a quick button check. Again, player one is killing this tournament. Someone, this needs, to, this someone needs to do something about this win streak. Because that is faith. making me itch, man. I got, <laughs> fit. I got faith right now that... We're going to see something. You know when you go to rank match, right, and you go and you find E-Man who has a 100 win streak, yeah. you're thinking like, all right, this E-Man, but this streak has got to go. And you get mad points for that too, but I'm just thinking like, if I go against E-Man, he's got a 100, uh, 100 win streak, I got to beat this guy. I cannot let, I can't be 101, bro. I can't yeah, I mean, if, if you go into a room and somebody's got 100 wins and you leave that room and that person has 150 wins, you're, you're added to the problem. That's a problem. <laughs> That's yeah. a problem, you know? You can't be that person. You just got to stick it out until you get that W. Right. Maybe so DDoS or something. I don't know. We're just, going back to the road race stage here, man. Again, this stage is dangerous. Any way you look, you have the ability to get bounced off of some kind of vehicle. Yeah, so. we, we just saw Tommy in the last match, but different costumes. So, so Night Zero is going to be on your left. We saw Huntress before. Had some struggle versus um, uh, the Nico player last time because the defense was not quite there. Yeah. Let's see if Dave may, can make some adjustments and have a stronger defensive showing in this particular set. So I do like, um, you know, Coco is a great character. I think she's great. But I do like Hitomi in this matchup. I really do. Why? Well, she's got the 1P plus K. And that's one sure. of the best one of the best tracking moves in the game. It gives you a great stun. There's no stagger escape. Sure. I feel like Kokoro, she's got to get in with either that 4-4 four, four punch mid. But she also has a couple of highs that she uses to get in. So you can actually crush that. Ooh. And, you know, Kokoro being a, only a moderately quick character, she's got a, I believe it's a 13 frame mid, correct? For 4 punch, 13 frames? Uh, yeah. For Tomi? No, she's 12. No, um, Cobra. No, her 4 punch is 12. It's 12 frames? Okay, she's yeah. got the 12 frame 4 punch. Both players, I mean, pretty much got the same speed attack. I want to say that, you know what, that's right. The Tomi's 4 punch is 12 in this game. Yeah. It was 13, but she had the plus 1 down punch, and they switched it around. Okay. So, I mean, up close, I mean, it, I, I think it could be a 5-5 five -five matchup. I think this matchup itself is going to be 5-5, five -five because we're not seeing a ton of launchers. What we are seeing is a straight-up brawl of strikes. I would say that we just see launcher there, but... For the most part, it's it's been a lot of strikes and a lot of back and forth. A lot of, a lot of those attacks that send you flying, which is also fun to watch. Sometimes. So we actually saw the first juggle come out of Huntress. That was actually a great combo. Hit him saying, with yeah. the back P plus K into the uh, up punch, up punch into the wall splash. That was a really good combo by Huntress getting warmed up a little bit. Ooh, gets the free cancel. Nice, nice hold. hold to stop the fatal rush. That's semi safe. Oh, there's that one P plus K. And Night Zero just kind of. Oh, it's gonna get some good damage. What kind of combo do you have? Oh, that was a combo. Nice tracking move to catch the side step. Okay. He's able to close out the round there. Hitomi is like, you know, I don't even want to say no one uses her because there's a lot of Hitomi players online. You know yeah, what I mean? But you don't see her offline that much, yeah. You don't see her offline that much except for a group of Yeah, I, I think it's mostly because Hitomi's one of those characters that, for the system, her attacks unfortunately didn't translate as well as maybe they could have. Right. And. Maybe it's just one of those things that where players recognize that and they gravitate towards other characters that translate yeah. a little bit better. But I mean, I'll tell you in this. In the tournament setting. Hitomi's stun game is very lackluster. I mean, think about it. What does she got? She's got forward kick, which is 13 frames. She got forward punch, which is 12. But forward punch followed up by forward punch kick, that stun is 
especially with Breakhold. I mean, Breakhold is stopping everything anyway. And that's one uh, complaint that I know for a fact that Rakuto has with Atomi in this game is her stun game. It's like, what are you starting the stun game with? You know what I mean? It's very hard to, to even initiate that because down punch used to be plus one. Mm -hmm. That was her way to open you up. But now without that, I mean, sidestep is going to eat everything up, you know? Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. Completely agree on that. I mean, it, she's got a lot of work to do. She's, yeah, she's sure. a, a, a mid tier, mid to low tier character, maybe. And it's because she has to work so hard. Right. Uh, so we're going to go to the Chinese festival, everyone's favorite stage, the new danger zone, as some call it. Oh, it's a great stage. Love uh -huh. it. You uh -huh. should probably have the nice. stage on here at all times. So we're seeing both players warm it up. I mean, I'm loving what I'm seeing right now. They're, they're playing really well. I'm seeing some uh, air combos there. I'm seeing some neutral being played, so. Both players warming up at this point. There's that 4 days plus K. Gets the stun. Oh, misses the throw there. I think they were going for 3 DT, but unfortunately, wasn't able to get it. Now they're in a stun situation, taking some damage. Ooh, okay. All right, there's that I'm zero on the down punch. Oh, Ooh, can you it's going to convert. Ah, I get something out of it. Didn't get a launcher, though. Didn't get a uh, knockaway just... attack there. there. That's safe. That's unsafe. Beautiful Ooh, parry. Nice. What's the mix up? Ooh, any eight is meter. I love it. Nice. Don't you love that when you grab somebody's brake blower or their, or their meter? You love that. Because, like, yeah, no, not awesome. only am I taking around, but Feels I'm taking good. your meter with me. It's awesome. Feels good. Ooh, Ooh. and the momentum is just going is getting hit right now. Zero situation. Uh, this and he's getting knocked out. off. Wow. So we're going downstairs. You know, Night Zero sitting on all his bars. If he gets a launcher on those fire crackers, it's over. Yeah, what kind of, it's what over. Kind of, what kind of death combos does this me have? Because Tommy can I actually like do um, down back ace plus K and it's going to splat. Yeah. So she can do 3 3P, uh, you know, up back punch kick into the forward kick down kick. You know what I mean? Something like that. Yeah, it's like you said, the, uh, the, stun, the stun start Ooh, for her is tough. All right, so Huntress right now taking these hands. Oh, beautiful sidestep. Nice here. I wanted to finish it off in a flashy fashion. Wasn't able to do so. And that's it. Still that's taking that one around. Plus K. You know, and before the update, I want to say, like, when they made the sidestep so that you need to use meter now, um, you know, one people's K was such a good move because it was killing sidesteps and it was literally hitting everyone. It's a high crushing tracking attack that Hatomi has, and it's a great stun. So if she's got a good stun, it's going to be that one. And then, unfortunately, making the sidestep require meter now, people are kind of careful with how they're using the meter. Yeah. Great showing from both of these players. Yeah, that was nice great. Zero. That was great. I think Huntress. we're going to see her come back. Um, Huntress is probably going to come back on the screen because that Kokoro is pretty good, man. I got to give it to her. No, nah, I, don't, I don't think we're going to see her on the screen again. That's, that, you think, remember, you think she that's lost. She lost the first time to oh, uh, that was, Antagonist. And then uh, no, no. That was actually a name switch, remember? They swapped the names around and they gave oh, us a name switch. Right. Yeah. Right. I was actually thinking about that. I'm like, wait a minute. No, they had the name switch because that was when we were like, no, he doesn't use Nico. So yeah. they did the name switch. But, you know, okay. either way. We okay. might see Night Zero again later, or um, Huntress later, but, you know, we got some other exciting matches coming up for you guys. Hope you guys are enjoying DOA 6 World Championship at home. I'm Emery Reigns here, and I'm joined by Shade Swiftguy. Yeah, no, I mean, so far, so good with these matches that we've seen today. Yeah. I think the most important thing that we haven't seen yet is just two top players going at each other and what adjustments they've made from Summer Jam. And we'll usually it's, you know, when we're this early in a tournament, you don't really see that top-level player versus right. top-level player. It's usually once we get closer to top 16. Yep. So I think actually soon here we're going to be seeing that. Yeah. Because I mean, we are going to top 8. The closest thing that we saw, right, was So Sick Nash Fan versus Quiggles. Versus Quiggles. That was a and great match, too. Yeah, it, that, that could have gone either way. Could have. And again, I'm way. telling you guys, a couple mistakes. Nash will get right there and just fall short every you it. single you time. It it's so unfortunate. He could have did it, though. First of three, how do you think that would have won? You think it would have brought it back? No. I'll just be uh, honest. Yeah, no, I, I, like, I like the honesty, man. I respect it. I respect the honesty. It's one of those situations where, in that case, Quiggles, he's Quiggles, man. He's not He's not losing that early in the tournament. I don't think no, any top player has lost that early in the tournament. I'd love to see it, right? But we just – thats I think that's one of the things that we haven't seen in, in six, like we saw in five a lot, which is people who were online players translating – very quickly and easily to six and just blowing people up that right. no one knew about offline. And there's there's a lot of players, again, you know, Hollow Ichigo's here. I have not seen Hollow Ichigo offline in this game yet at all. Yeah. So I'm curious to see how he's going to do. He was actually an alpha player in DOA 5, mm -hmm. and obviously alpha's not in this game. So I think he's either using FaZe or Murray Rose as main. I'm not really sure, but we're going to have to see. a good player. Oh. Wee. Oh, so we were just talking. I told you. As we get close to the top 16, we're going to see some crazy matches. I want to point this out. Even though Black Moon may not be able to take the win on Calvary Plays most of the time, I do feel like he can pull it out and pull the match out. I think that he can actually take Calibre Blaze because think about Ow. it. He's, dude, he's gotten to top eight at every single event. You got to give it to him, man. Look. Uh, How are you feeling? Because you got this face on right now. Like You want to um, say something. I want to hear this. Look, man. This is not the matchup I want to see for Black Moon. 
I'll say so that. So you think he's going to get blown up? I, I don't want to say blow up, but I do think it's really, really hard for him to beat a player with Caliber Blade style. For sure. It doesn't mean that he can't do it. But it's an uphill battle. I mean, it's an uphill battle for most people that are playing against Caliber Blades, but just how he plays in terms of buffering in parries after semi-safe moves. Yeah. That sort of thing gets you killed against Caliber Blades. For sure. Fast. But think about it. Lei Feng has the ability to do the same exact thing. You know, like, obviously, we're going to see... Oh, we're going to see Brad Wong. And that's what I'm saying. So, so if, if we do see Brad Wong, which might be... They did their button check already. This is this, They're going at it. This is Cali not taking this. I, you know what, Black Moon? I, I want to see Black to say. Moon go in right now. I like what you're about to say, but <laughs> you do understand. A lot of people don't know this. Some little background story on Caliber Blades. Brad was his main, or at least one of his mains in DOA 4, even dating back to then. I feel everything yeah. you said. All right, if so let's see. Killy, if this is Killy, we're not seeing Brad. Oh, we'll definitely see. not. You but know what I'm saying? And right off the bat, we see Caliber Blades going for some kind of setup. Just a frame advantage. Okay, this is crazy looking. So oh. Cali here looking real comfortable. And, and I think Black Moon may have come into the match. Oh my god. Else, and that wow. could be an issue, yeah. Wow. Agreed. And, you know, Black Moon looks, literally, I'm going to tell you this. He looked like he's never fought Brad Wong in his life. In that round, yeah. That. Yeah, for sure. Oh, nice he hold. held that! Yo, so that's that new stun that a lot of people don't take advantage of. It's not really like a traditional stun, but no, they do this thing where they kind of like fall backwards. You can get a hit after that. All right, so Black Moon fighting back. Going against his old teammate, I want to point this out. Calibrates was a previous UGS member, now he, so I wonder if this is kind of like a grudge match a little bit. Oh, like, yo, you left our team? This is a You're going to do that? This is a beating right now, and, and I got to see Black Moon do a few things. Ooh. Nice. What? Wow. What a hold. Sponsored by Whataburg. What a hold by Calibrates to close that round out. That was nuts, actually. That was nuts. That was a crazy hold. He held the sidestep punch on high counter. Wow. Okay, there's a the mid-punch hold yeah. by Blades again, and Black Moon is literally getting... What she got, Black? Right oh, now. he didn't. He didn't the wall was there. What the heck? I Bro, like it. This, this what is, is going on? Tech. That was new. That was new. That's part of the patch. That, that patch came out a couple. I think about a month ago. Yeah. All right. So Black Moon, man, that's safe. And that's a mid kick, by the way. Which you keep looking at it. It's been a high in the game's past, but they changed yeah. it to a mid kick. Yeah. It literally blows up wake up kicks for free. It's almost as good as high boost to six k. All right, so there's the punch punch down kick. It's the frame advantage by Caliber Blades. That's safe. So he recognized the Black Moon's using a lot of highs to start. He actually countered high, but it didn't pay off there. There's the mid punch. That gut stun is so dangerous. Wow, tries to grab the four punch kick. Yeah, no question. And the thing is that we've seen is Black Moon's been able to kind of take his back, but it's going to be a problem. Both oh, characters hurt. sitting on a full meter, though. Watch your feet. Watch your feet. Come on now. Yikes. All right, so we saw Black Moon. All right, so he didn't get blown up. He got around. If you get around, you can't get blown up. But no. it looks like what's happening right now is there's a lot of unfamiliarity on top of the fact that Caliber Blades is so good with Brad Wong. Both of those things coming at you at the same time, I don't know what is going to happen. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's one of those situations where you see Caliber Blades moving the way he moves, and you just want to get away. And so this is the perfect stage for Black Moon to do some things to Brad Wong. If he can maintain that space. Uh, so both play so I think that this stage is going to benefit uh Black Moon a little more because he has some room to work with. Brad right. Wong is always on the ground, he's always crushing you in your face. And talk about damage, we're gonna see a 35% combo there from Powder Blades. The key is for, for Black Moon at least, he's gotta recognize the the weaknesses in the in um, Brad Wong's strengths. The gaps. You gotta recognize Ooh, nice. I love that. That was great. Use Ball. the meter, take the round, close it out. Beautiful. Ball. Because he didn't know. He didn't know it was coming, but he knew an attack was coming, and he knew it wasn't going to be low. But wouldn't that have stuff. been something if Caliber Blades would have just went to that stance, laid there, let him whip, and then dropped him on his neck? <laughs> wouldn't, it, wouldn't it still have hit him? No, not when he's in that stance. They made it so that one buff that they gave Brad Wong in this game, they made it so that mids that are not so um, true mids are not going to hit him. Break blows miss him while he's in that stance. I want to say so. I'm, that's something you're going to have to test, but I want to yeah. say so. Nice because damage. they're not really going to be like, you know you got your true mids, like Hayabusa 3 people's K. If it's not a true mid in this game, they made it so that Brad Wong is incredibly hard to hit in this game. And that string right there, Ooh. I just don't know that Black Moon's familiar with it. And so he's getting hit by, by a lot. Ooh. And that's something that's been hitting us since day one. That, you know, full yeah. crouch kick from Brad Wong, the double kicks, has literally been hitting people since day what one. What a fake. So, so the delay there was he was able to actually break through that Sabaki. Caliber wow! Kind of just playing with the stun system right now. I love that combo. That's it's so awesome. sick. 
Gets him right out of it with that up kick there. Where's the setup? Ooh, he tries to go for something on the setup. Didn't pay off. Ooh! Dude, that was twice. crazy. Okay. Right. Cali with the clutch low hold in that situation. I'm surprised he did that there, but it worked out for him. And, you know, Calvin Blades is up two rounds with a game on the board against Black Moon. Black Moon could potentially be going to lose bracket if he doesn't pull this out. I think he can bring this back, but he's got to play the matchup a little slower because he's just getting hit. Yeah, I mean, at this point, what we're, we're seeing is uh -huh. Calibre Blades, uh -huh. he's got like a 100% uh -huh. hit ratio or with success With everything he's doing. With the headbutt. Oh, except for that time. Okay, yeah. so. And again, nice, the running nice. headbutt is safe. The standing still one is unsafe. But yeah, I like what sweet. we're seeing from Black Moon. He's still fighting his way back into things. He's, he's not letting this get to him. Oh. And that's not going to do it if he gets the combo. What's the, and that, that's it if he goes into the... No, because Brad Wall's one of the only characters in the game that can't do a bound into a break block. That's so crazy. But he's still alive. Black Moon still has a chance to use Black Moon still got taken out there. And you see what Cowboy Blades was doing. He was conditioning him with that headbutt the entire set. And then when it came time from the D up against the headbutt, he actually got grabbed. So, you know, yeah. Black Moon obviously a little bummed about that, but he was not expecting Brad Wall. At all. If Calvary Blades picks Brad Wall against you, how are you going to feel? Tell me. I want to uh, know. I'm going to go ahead and say that. Disrespected? I'm, I'm not going to feel disrespected. I'm going to pick up the sticks, and we're going to have it out. Yeah. And when I win, if I win, I don't know if I would or not because <laughs> Brad Wall looked pretty good there. Yeah. Um, but if I did get him, then I'd be like, switch characters. Stop it. For sure. Like, yo, <laughs> you're not going to pick Brad Wall against me. You're going to get off this character and go pick Elliot or something. It's not happening. Because, you know, every top player does that sometimes. I don't want to call it, like, a troll, but, you know, sometimes you'll have Quiggle go into a tournament and pick, like, you know, like, not even nah. Lisa, because Lisa's one of his best player, uh, characters, but you'll see him pick, yeah, like, Murray Rose. That. Like, they'll what are you doing? Time time. What are you doing with this character? So, but, you know. But, yeah, I mean, I think when a, when a top player does that to you, you just got to show up and, and be ready to handle it. For sure. And the, the issue for that, for Blackman, was it looked like he just wasn't familiar with some of the strings, and... It put him in situations that, you know, cause him to lose rounds. If you're losing rounds for, for that, you don't have a good chance of winning the game yeah, for sure. itself. And, again, that could play a huge role in a mind game that's Ooh, just going on with you. Like, yo, this dude, this? Picked, this dude picked Brad Wall against me. Yo, we got Rakuto going up against Quiggle. And I'm going to say this. I want to say this, and I want to know what you think about it. I feel like Rakuto is going to beat Quiggle right now. I'm calling it. Okay, that's, that's a great call. It's a wrong call, but oh. it's a great call for, oh. for you to go ahead and make. It's hot. It's called a hot take, you know. Um, but but seriously, like, why why in the world do you think, and I don't even want to be, no, why do you think Rakudo is going to beat Quiggles? Let's talk about this. Um. Well, look, Rakudo has been losing since this game came out. Sure. I mean, Literally. He's, he, he hasn't been, I mean, he's been making top eight. Well, no, you know what I mean. He has been winning tournaments, and yeah. I don't know if I tune into a lot of Rakudo streams, and he yeah. says it all the time. He says, I'm performing well enough to get in the top eight. I'm not performing well enough to beat any top players. He says it all the time. And think about it. What top players has he beaten since this game has come out? Calibre Blades has been working him. Quiggle's been working him. He hasn't been able to beat any top, top guys. And, you know, he really feels strongly that it's Bayman's fault. Uh, if you're putting me on the spot to try and remember who's, who Rakuto's beaten that's considered a top player. I want to know because I can't recall anyone. Think about it. Um, he lost to Black Moon twice at one tournament. Yeah, Black Moon was the guy that got him. Black Moon's yeah, got him. I can't recall anybody off the top of my head, but Black Bear has gotten him. To call out Rakuto, to call out Rakuto saying he has a chance to beat Quiggles, I think the reason why you might be saying that is because Quiggles is rocking Phase 4. And Phase 4, mm, I think, has some issues doing big time damage against heavyweight characters. Yeah, for sure. And that's one strength that Bayman has is the fact that he can't really get combo that much. Give me that leg. I'm going to break it and take 20% of your life bar. There's the frame advantage from Phase 4. Ooh, that was dirty. Did that, you see that? No, he did a low throw. Yeah, I, don't know, I know. I don't know what Rakuto was doing, and I don't know what uh, Quiggles was thinking by tank doing roll. that low throw in the first place. Tank roll. Tank roll, but it wasn't a high counter throw. That's what I'm saying. He was looking for the tank roll. Rakuto was just ducking. <laughs> That's crazy. It's a crazy situation to be in. Because think about it. The tank roll is going to beat almost every option out of her 4-4 punch into the teleport, you know? Yeah. Otherwise, he would have never went for that low grab. Mm. Ooh, Caught there's that run-up 4-4 grab. No, it's not One dead. more mix-up. Yeah. Oh, that was so risky. He took it. Cool, I love it. That's a classic. Rakudo there we go. Rakudo looking like. Oh, that was so risky to go for Rakudo, especially because he literally fuzzy crouched that. Did All right, that's unsafe. That? Well, the jab. You know, it looks like Rakudo's taking more risk now. Like he's like, I have to do something completely that's different right. if I'm going to be Quiggle right now. So I'm gonna start the round with a 13 frame eight. <laughs> Listen, man, you might be right about the situation with Quiggles if Quiggles keeps playing like this, because it just. I mean, I love the way uh, Rakuto's playing, but we cannot count Quiggle out. I mean, Quiggle's one of the best players pound for pound in the entire planet in DOA. So, you know, it's not really... I don't know. It's looking good for Rakuto, but at the same time, it could go either way, I think. That's safe. Yeah, no doubt. 
Alright, there's that run-up nice throw there by Quiggle. Takes 15%. Whips the back people's K, and he's going to go for Ooh, a save throw. Nice he's dead. He's dead Smart for free, actually. Yeah, he's dead. Smart play from right. Quiggle there. And that's a common occurrence amongst the top players. They like to hit you with that deep stun, do a low throw first, and do another throw afterwards. Because yep. more often than not, you're looking in the hole. And yeah, you're exactly. holding something that's either mid or high at that time. And I'm going to tell you what makes that so much better in this game. No stagger escape. You're plus 1,000. You know what yeah. I mean? So that safe throw is so scary in this game. Try to do that slow. new run up and tank roll. Uh, yeah. Quiggles. Are we going to see any meter? Nope. nope no again. meter use from Quiggle. Feeling confident that he doesn't need to close it out. There's the stun. Man, dude. Real solid right now. Oh. Smart choice from Quiggles. Did a slower attack. That's about 40 frames. Right. Tank rolls are roughly the same speed. Yeah. He's able to get that hit, take the round, take the game. Quiggles Quiggle looking, all focused. Yeah, he looks focused and he looks, because he knows. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, Quiggles probably like, I know I can beat Rakuto, but if I play. Kudo needs to go to character select. I'll you say think that so? Right now. Yeah, you think he, sure. he needs to switch his character out? He didn't. He no, he's going in. He knows that if he's going to go out, go out with my best guns. Why switch? Because it's not working out for you. All right, that's but beautiful. The stage could could change things up for him. That's guaranteed. That's going to hurt so it's nice. much. Yep. Because, you know, that actually is something to add from DOA 2 back into the game. If your character's still in the air, Bayman gets that guaranteed low throw. There's that back punch. He held that? That was a yeah, new strength. Nice. <laughs> that's high counter hold, though. Or throw. Beautiful. Ooh. Nice break. I believe that was completely unsafe. I'm surprised he didn't back throw that. Oh. All right, so Rakuto getting on the board again. We just saw this. We saw Rakuto take the first game, uh, first round pretty convincingly in the last set. And we just, we might see Quiggle come back and run him over at this point. There's the standing offensive hold. Yeah. Man, that's so good. I love that offensive hold. I, right. I mean, I think for, for Rakuto, if he's able to, like, get space and try and reset the actual standing situation between himself and Quiggles. That's when he's doing pretty good. I'll tell you this. The Rakuto we're seeing right now, I don't know if he's actually went to the lab and figured something out, but he's playing way better than we've ever seen him play in this game, for sure. Well, we saw it at Summer Jam, right? We, we saw him playing really well at Summer Jam until he went to a, to, to a wall, basically. But oh, man. right here, what we're seeing is him making the right reads against Quiggles. And that's key if you're trying to beat somebody like him. It's about the reads, getting in his head. So you know what we're going to see now, and I've noticed this from over the years. Oh, oh he didn't mean to do combo. that. Nice break hole from Quiggles. And a smart tracking move from Quiggles as well. Oh, oh there's the mix up and he's down. dead. Wow. Okay. Rakuto on the, on the board. One to one. All the momentum. That was 3-0, wasn't it? Yeah, that was three rounds wow. zero. I think the most important thing that we just saw here was the streak was broken. I Thank sure God. Before, what was it? 15? Broken out. Was I, it got 15? up to about 14. Yeah, that had to go. Four, All right, so we're going to the lab. I want to know, if you guys want Rakuto to win this, type 1 in the chat. If you want Quiggle to win this, type 2. I can't see the chat, listen, but I'm going to check it later. Listen, I want to know. Listen, stop getting these people typing 1 for you. Make it right, all right? <laughs> oh, he's not He's not holding. He's not. And all right, I'm so Quiggle's going to start hitting him now. Well, he has to. I mean, Quiggle's biggest damage is coming from Oh, it's back. Ooh. Nice. Oh. Again. Rakuto, right reads at the right time. He just, I mean, he's this wall of defense that's just... Willing to throw out those offensive catch throws. Oh right? my god. And you know, I'm telling you, right Quiggle now I feel like I'm watching DOA 5 Bayman because yeah. he's doing everything right right now. Go wow. Forward. And again, the damage, look at the damage, is so poor against that heavyweight situation. Again, you know, I want to talk about it because think about it. You know, when you see a player like Quiggle with no momentum, you're like, yo, this dude is really beating his ass. Like, and literally, he has no momentum right now. And the other thing for Quiggle is that he hasn't <laughs> caught on to is the fact that. Rakuto refuses to press a button in those semi unsafe right. situations, and Quiggles keeps throwing out a hold, and he's getting hit. He's getting thrown for it. All right, so let's look at the screen, man. Quiggle, mm. oh, he's gonna get knee this to the stomach. Problem. Oh my God, Quiggles. he actually hit him with that. That's guaranteed. In trouble. In trouble. Quiggles down to no life, and I want to tell you guys. Oh Ooh, wait, he nice took his meter. Wow. That's oh, it. and Quiggles. Hold on. Loses that round. Let's go back. Hold on. Did you call this? Let's go back. You called I this. called it. You called this. I called it. So I, was, I definitely did not. I said no way. Oh yeah, no. no. Way. Shade was like, "Yo, Rakuto can't do it." And I'm telling you, Rakuto was on to something because that was crazy, dude. That was DOA five all Quiggles over again. Quiggles smile on his face, just like, man, I gotta go to this. Yeah, gauntlet. yeah. He's smiling right now, like in his face, but he knows when he goes to sit down that he's gotta be like, "Yo, I'm going to the gauntlet and I gotta make it out, or I'm out." A KIT. Yo, for for so there's a couple things here, right? A couple things at play. Kudo's happy. Look at that. Oh, smile. he's happy as hell. Like, <laughs> I just killed somebody that looks like Kasumi. Right. So I have a horrible matchup with Kasumi. But secondarily, what we saw from Rakuto was just brilliant choices against somebody who had a game plan, 
and he was able to react to that game plan accordingly and punish every right. time. It, and it really came down to those holds. Like you, you saw it so many times where Rakuto was correctly making the decision to actively use the catch throw to cut stuff out whatever yeah. Quiggles was putting on the screen. And again, you know, it's I want to say this because I used to use Bayman a little bit. The, the way that he beat Quiggle was so risky mm -hmm. because, you know, but that's the way that he, it looks like that's the way he's got to play. Like, yeah. punch, punch, down, back, punch into offensive hold. That is so risky because you're so negative on hit, but, like, it was working. But you got to take those risks if you're going to do well Bayman in this game. And it looks like Rakuto knows that. It looks like he knows and he's on to something at this point. Yeah, so. if, if, if Quiggles had been able to make any sort of adjustment to simply just do a neutral throw, right? Rakuto would have been eating, you know, half-life combos. Right. But he wasn't able to do that, or he wasn't able to recognize the situation. So now he's in loser's bracket. He's got to climb himself out of this gauntlet. It's a pretty tough gauntlet to climb himself oh, out yeah, of. Oh, yeah, for sure. And you don't want to be down there. Rikudo. You don't want to be down there. Okay. So, so guys, just, just very quickly, if you say that one more time for me. But we, we have uh, Dark Phoenix. And Dark we have, Phoenix. Uh, They end them. Okay. They end them. Okay. So, they end them going up against Dark Phoenix. So, uh, we've seen Dark Phoenix earlier, Hatomi player, correct? Yeah. So, obviously, and I want to point something out. Um, this player in this matchup, they end them, was a Hitomi player back in DOA 5. So, I'm pretty sure she knows the matchup. Yeah, I, I, th I think so. I mean, it. I haven't heard of this particular player before. So, I'm, I'm going to be, not Dark Phoenix, but the, they end them. They end them. Um, so, I'm going to be curious to see... Because you can't just come on here and say, like, you know, hey, call me by this right. instead, and then get clapped up six rounds straight. Well, so. she used to go by Amethyst Kelly. Okay. Amethyst Kelly. Gotcha that now. was the older name. Now, so, now I hear you now. I'm right. I hear you. I hear you. Okay, okay. So, you know, going back to that last matchup briefly, though, do you think that if Quiggle would have picked a different character, that that matchup would have went different? Oh, do you absolutely. think Lisa would have closed him out? Listen, man, Quiggles is in a really funky spot overall, and it's always been the case for him in DOA is – he goes back and forth between his love for Phase 4. He loves Phase 4. And the reality is that there are certain matchups for Phase 4 that suck. Right? Right. And, for sure. And there's certain play styles, especially for Phase 4, that make it really, really tough to win. And in those cases, Quiggles, he's got to make that, that tough choice of being like, all right, do I want to struggle in this matchup? Or do I want to go with my with another bread and butter character like Alisa or Chrissy? Because like Alisa wasn't going to have that problem. Right. Lisa was not going to have that problem against Rakuto. Bayman, in that situation, I don't think. I mean, it would have been closer in that sense. I mean, I don't think Rakuto is winning three straight if we see Lisa or Chrissy on the screen, as we saw when Phase 4 was on the screen. Right. And, you know, you hate to see it because, you know, there's a thing that people have. It's like character pride. Like, yeah. I just lost the game to Rakuto. I should probably switch to Lisa or Kasumi yeah. or Christy. But you know what? I'm going to pull it out with FaZe, and that might have costed him that set just now. Yeah. But either way, we're jumping into they end them versus Dark Phoenix. Obviously, they end them going with Brad Wong. You know, I always knew her as a Hitomi player, so to see her on a new character, um, you know, is really interesting. But Dark Phoenix obviously well, knows how to play the game a little bit as well. So. Okay. They end them. So, one thing that, that we do need to see from Dark Phoenix is a lot of lows to keep Brad Wong in a position that's standing. Right. right. Because we know Brad Wong players like to go into that stance. They like to get busy in those stances, do crushes, and really just make your life miserable. Uh, so that's a, that's one of the keys that we're going to see in this match. And nice, nice throw from Dark Phoenix to close out the round. Um, I feel like Brad has the advantage in this matchup because, you know, Hitomi doesn't really have that many great options to get him out of that stance. But, you know, it looks like Dark Phoenix is stopping him from going into that stance, just like you said. And it's paying off at this point because Dark Phoenix has already got him down, got her down to pretty much 50% life at this point. Yeah, I mean, Brad definitely has the, the advantage in this matchup, I think, for the most part. It's just that if the Brad Wong player doesn't have strong defense, then it's, it's an issue all around. And this is a really, really bad situation. A 3-3 team might have actually killed in that situation. Ooh, so one thing that I want to see um, they and them stop doing is trying to counter wake-up kicks on wake-up because it's not paying off. Dark Phoenix is doing one wake-up kick out of every five times he gets off the floor. And I don't think that um, you know they and them is recognizing at this point. No. And, and you know what? We talk about Hitomi and, and her strength as a character in this game. One of the things overall, and it's a system change, that may have made her a bit weaker is the fact that when you get a counter hit 1T, it doesn't lead to that deep stun right? It only gives you like that plus five, plus six. Yeah. And that was a staple move for her Tomi in previous years. Oh, nice, nice. That's it. There's a nice, 
Nice round. That is one move that, um, you know, Dark Phoenix can use from range is that forward forward ace plus K. Yeah. It's actually going to hit while Brad Wong is in that laydown stance there. So that's nice unsafe. That it's so hard to punish the death fist, man. So hard. But against the wall, it was a free throw. But he went instead with strike punishment, and it worked out. Got him a nice little 25% off. Nice hold again. And they end them. All right, back punch punch gets the stun. You know, and it's always crazy when you get those back turn stuns because it's kind of catches you off surprise, and you're like, yo, how do I convert off of this? All right, there's that four punch kick, catches Ooh. him, catching her hold, and that could be it. One more mix up. What's he gonna What's he gonna do? All right. oh, oh, he's back in it. Back on it. Watch the headbutt. There oh, that's unsafe. No punish <laughs> by Dark Phoenix, though. Oh, man. Oh, the block, but no punish. Ooh, watch your wow. Feet. Watch okay. Your feet. Come so we now, saw a couple yo. of things there. I mean, you know, they and them did not really punish that string, but she was still able to pull it out. There's the 3P. Interesting choice. Neither player is going for throw punishment in these situations. They're looking really to strike, and so far it's been working out for both of them because they caught each other pressing buttons. Wow. There's the fatal nice stun. Break. Nice meter used. That's the first fatal stun we've seen, actually, from these two. All right, there's the frame advantage with the forward punch kick Good down defense. kick. That's unsafe. No punish by they and oh, them. Again, no punishment there. But it's okay because... The, the strike punishment has been working in their favor. Okay, that's insane. Beautiful. Okay. So they end up obviously know some of the strings. Again, she used oh, to play Hitomi. That was a beautiful I want to see a wake-up break move right now. Wow. 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 Stuff okay. Low. That hurt. All right, that so, hurt. you know, they end them feeling herself a little bit right now. She's like, yeah, you know, I hope you didn't think you were about to win that because hurt. I just broke your leg just now. Ooh. Ooh. I like this. I like this match. I mean, both players have that face of, like, if I lose one more round to you, it's gonna be real hands in right, real life. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. I'm not really. I don't really think that Dark Phoenix used another character. I've always known him to be a Hatomi player, but we're gonna see Lei Feng. I personally don't like. I mean, obviously, we just saw Black. We saw this matchup just yeah. now. We saw Black take a crazy, crazy loss to Calvin Blades. But we're watching different players, so you never know. I just don't think that Lei Feng is good in this matchup. Yeah. I mean, but player two, as you can see, is working on a nice little three-win streak, doing the best that they can to uh, get their revenge on player one. So right. we'll see what happens. Oh, nice break hold. That's safe. It's so odd that that move is safe. Yeah, it, it's a it's a strange situation. I'll say that. Yeah. Oh, nice cancel there. Okay. Some, some good damage. Okay, so she's got the combo. She knows what she's doing. She actually picked up Brad Wong pretty fast for the most part. Yeah, I mean, he's he's an underutilized character like you said yeah. before. Oh, and, nice, and that's a 50 50 mix up for the most part unless you're trying yeah. to like really seriously fuzzy it and even then the window is very tight for it all right there's the whiff no whiff punish oh, i like what they end up trying to do tried to whiff punish with the fatal, uh, fatal rush yeah just out of range that would have been good for her too nice sweep there again that button. standing head but you got to be careful it is unsafe on block again it's unsafe no punish there by dark phoenix though yeah i mean he, the dark phoenix is going really for strikes to punish and it's it's costing a lot of damage. It may even cost rounds at this point. We'll see as he puts uh, they end them into the wall. Oh twice. man! Okay, so they end them in trouble right now. I like what he tried to do, but unfortunately, you know, Brad Wong being so evasive, that that mix-up just is not going to work on him. Mm, nice. Oh, the delay. Oh, took his back. Doesn't capitalize though. There's the frame nice advantage throw. by they end them. Both players down to about 15-20% life right now. Tried oh, to run up and throw. And and that was a situation where, you know, you should have gone with the no mix-up mix-up, right? Just do the headbutt. Yeah. And, you know, Lei Feng might not have been the best character choice, but it's paying off for Dark Phoenix in this matchup right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. No question about it. I think we're going to see a game three here. All right. Down forward kick. 3P. Beautiful. We're going to see a combo for the first time. No break blow conversion, though. Nice punishment here. Nice strike punch again. Oh, that's Ooh, it. That should do it. Wow. That should do okay. It. Three straight rounds there. So again, the the Lee Fang peg definitely yeah, paid off. was the right choice. And there's no smiles here. It's just all business at this point. It's it just seems like let's get busy. It seems like Dark Phoenix is way more comfortable with Lei Fang. And I want and that kind of makes me, you know, wonder why he wasn't going with Lei Fang from the beginning. I mean, we saw some pretty good combos from him. We see good movement from him. Seems like the comfortability yeah. is way more there with Lei Fang than no doubt, the no doubt. for sure. So I mean, but again, going back to what I was just talking about. They end them is a Hatomi main for the most part. So we're going to see him, her pick a character against someone who obviously knows this match because he plays with her as well. So Yeah, I mean, Hatomi, it's not a bad pick. It's a classic match between these two. I mean, even in the storyline of DOA, these two have always kind of crossed paths. Right. right? So I like it. I like what we're seeing from both of these players. Yeah, for sure. We're going to go with the random. Obviously, you know, random pick for stage is going to be the way to go. 
DOA 6 World Championship. Make sure you guys, if you guys are curious about the rules for the championship, make sure you check out the official DOA 6 website. Because all the rules oh, for the championship are on there. Oh, beautiful delay on the string. And that's such a hard thing to sit there and respect. But if you don't, you get launched and you get some damage done to you. All right, there's the sweep with the frame advantage. Ooh, I like the jab and then turn to a four punch to kind of catch you thinking that you're going to do like a, a low or something. Nice, use the break hold to get out of the pressure there. Wow. That's safe. Wow. And it looked like Dark Phoenix is frozen right now. But, but did you see that defense? Got the low. Wow. Dude. That's got to be the third or fourth time we've seen a 1PK like that. And that was crazy because he was just outside of the range. There's the offensive. Hole. Whoa, did you see the fuzzy guard? Yeah. Okay. Leading some good damage. So you can see another That's unsafe. Throw. No punish there by Dark Phoenix on the uh, up forward punch kick kick there. Ooh, nice good damage there. And this is this is actually turning out to be a fairly even match yeah. between the two. Yeah, okay. Nice right, so, you know, I, I want to point this out because I feel like it doesn't get brought up enough when we see, you know, they end up on the screen. She's really, really good at throw punishment. You know, that of also Lady Kahaku, she's very good at throw punishment. The female players are really good at throw punishment. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that we, we always see amongst the players is a lack of it. And they specifically are pretty, pretty good at it. Yeah, for sure. Right, so there's the low hole. Dark Phoenix had enough of that down ace plus K, took the leg, but there goes um the back throw there from Hitomi. And the, the, it's, it's hard to say, but the mind game between these two players is, is really revolving around who's going to choose to whiff punish, That's wake it. up kicks, That's and then it. who's choosing to uh, recognize a, a free cancel and a string and then go on their own offensive attack. Right. That's really where the bread and butter of this match has been so far. All right, so there's the four grab into the mix of 4 days plus K. No punish there by Dark Done. Phoenix. That's unsafe. Oh, no punish by the end of the 4-4 grab. Back punch, punch gets the stun. Not enough frame advantage to get that 9k off, though. There's the 4 grab again. Wow, beautiful fuzzy by Dark Phoenix. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's recognizing that string. They see, they've seen the string quite a bit. Ooh, gets caught there. Wow, that's going to hurt so bad. One more mix-up could do it for Dark Phoenix if he doesn't get anything with a screen. That's plus. Nice, nice charge. Watch your feet again. Oh, Done. okay. We're coming down to the last, last round here in this match. They end them. Both players actually sitting on a full bar. Let's see. First person who gets a stun could potentially close this out. Who, who do you think has this? I'm looking at Dark I Phoenix. think Dark Phoenix is going to yeah, take this right now. There's the sweep. There's the frame advantage. Back the punch, the, punch. The match started off. It looked like it was going to be Dark Phoenix. Oh, my God. And just like that, that ooh, they end the them partition. getting their own combo on the screen. Wow, he's making Problem. Dark Phoenix. She's making Dark Phoenix duck a lot. Ooh. Wow. They end them. About to make us both, both liars right now. Oh, yeah. They end them. is trying to close us out. Nice free step, but... Oh no! He finally ducks the string. There's the frame advantage. Wow! Wow! Nice strike punishment. Close match. Really? You know that was risky. Match. That was risky because they in them, you know, got her, her string blocked, but there was no punish from Dark Phoenix, unfortunately. And you know, Dark Phoenix knows his character. So I'm surprised he didn't go for the four grab throw punish yeah. on that string. I'm just wondering how how many more times would the commentators be wrong on their predictions today? I don't know. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> that was only my first time. <laughs> I want to point time? this out because Rakuto won his game, so that's you down too right listen, now, bro. Listen, I want to point that listen. out there. I'm here for the hot take life right now. Yeah, cause you you want the <laughs> man. You don't you don't know what's going on, man. I just want dark horses. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing hot takes today. That's that's what it is. I'll you know, they end them really happy about her performance there. She's gonna be moving on in the bracket. Um, and you know, again, it's awesome. I love seeing these players come out over and Wait, over she's staying and over sticks? again. I think maybe she's looking for something. No, I think oh, no, she's, she's staying, staying on. on. I don't know who her opponent is just yet. Okay, but, so we're um, gonna see more Hitomi. Wait, is it Rakuto? Oh, shout out to, to, to Rakuto immediately. Shout out to uh, Black Moon Rise and shout out to Rakuto and shout out to Matt again. Matt coming on the screen there. Yeah. Um, Matt literally spent his entire day yesterday and today, pretty much for the most part, configuring these PCs so he can play on them. Literally, he's been stressing out like, dude, I gotta get these PCs ready for this tournament. And that's a lot, man, you know what I'm saying? He's not getting paid to do this. He's yeah, here doing rough. this for us. It's rough. There's no question about that. Like, when you think about the amount of work and time and effort you have to put in to actually set this stuff up, it's it's fairly rough. But what we're gonna see here so is actually match, as a loser's, loser's match, right? Now, I wanna say that this, this could be for top 16 losers, I believe. I, I want to say so because we're so far into it right now. I don't It'd have it in front of me. It'd be a guess I'd be a guess to say that this is for top 16 losers. Yeah. But so sick Nash fan is, you know, not to say a play on words. He's, he's pretty sick with, with Tina. And yeah. It's going to be a rough little match for um, they end them. Because I don't want to count they end them out because obviously we've seen that she knows what she's doing. But Nash fan, I'm telling you guys, 
He is super good. Are they eating hot chips or is that just... Oh, look, Quiggles like, yo, get them chips out of my face. I don't want none Powerade, of that. They got chips. Quiggles is like, man, I just want to get back What in kind there of chips are those? Yo, else. I want some chips. Yo. I hope they save me some chips. You are focused on these chips. Nah, They're dude. Focused on oh, the those are the, yo, those are the new chips. Yo. Look, look. Yo, they look catch, at they catch, they catch Manny over there. Like, look, Master's the like, yo, you guys are on camera trying to hand chips to each other. What are you doing right now? It's crazy, man. What a time. What a time. I'm going to have to get some of them. All right. So, you know, let's talk about this matchup. I mean, we see Nashville take a hard loss. Because he, honestly, dude, I thought Nashville was going to take Quiggle out at least one game. They are going to take him at least one game. Yeah, it would have it would have been interesting to see that situation. It just yeah. didn't pan out that way. And again, shout out to Team Ninja. Shout out to Better Life 6 World Championship, guys. We're going around the world for this tour. And, yeah. you know, again, I want to talk about it. Killy's here and Calibre Boys are here. Both players that have already qualified to go to Japan. They are here solely because they're competitors and because they want that money. Don't get me wrong. They can't win any more points or trips towards going to Japan, obviously, because they're already guaranteed to go. But yeah. they're here to win this prize money. They're here yeah. for bragging rights. They're here for this W. So, you know, I don't know. Do you think we're going to see a Caliber and Kelly Grand Finals? Do you think we might see something like that? Listen, uh, Kelly's not making my top three this time Ooh. just because I'm here for the hot takes. Um, but I do think Kelly's going to make some noise. Okay. We'll see. You know, it's it's early. It's very early. Oh, I wait, like wait, speculation. Wait, let, me, let, me, let me roll that back because we said we weren't counting our top threes until tomorrow. Yeah. Hey, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. <laughs> what we're doing right now. All right. Let's jump into this. I oh, want to say this is a button check. Versus. Okay. They're doing a button check. All right. So it's always confusing when they do button checks with their actual character because most people do button checks with characters they didn't want to use. But yeah, I mean, yeah. it happens. Time, time. All right, man. The great thing is we're on PC, so I think those screens are like boom, boom, boom. Done. Quick, super quick. And again, if you guys have, you know, first of all, DOA 6 is free to an extent. The, the uh, Core Fighters version of the game uh, comes with four characters. I believe from the trailer that they just showed, they're bringing Hayabusa in as well and another character, um, a part of the free characters that you get. So yeah. if you guys want to try the game out, please download the free version. It's on Xbox, it's on PS4, and it's also on PC. You get this, to try the game for free. This match is going to be a problem. I mean, if you think about it, so sick Nash fan has lots of combos, but as you said, this stage, the miniature death danger zone, I'd like to see a Hitomi death, death combo. You know, that was a crazy throw there by um, they end them because that move is, I believe, negative seven or negative six, and she took that five frame neutral throw. I wonder if she knew that that was actually negative six or negative five or negative seven. And that's going to be one of the keys is when they end them chooses to hold and when she chooses not to hold. Right. Because obviously, sick, so sick Nash fan is looking for that high counter throw damage. An interesting choice from him there. Oh. He, just, he just did a run up and hold guard, and, and they end them held their own guard button, and then Nash was able to finish out that round. Ooh. I that's wonder it. if that's guaranteed. I think I that's guaranteed. I don't know about that, man. Because it, I'm going to have to check be, that one out. That might be guaranteed if she gets that balance after. That's kind of crazy. Might be. She's not teching, maybe. I think. Uh-huh. 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 Oh, he's going to yeah. cancel it. And that's, guys, this is going to hurt. He's going to get the ground, too. Oh, no, he just misses it. Wow. Does that look do so much damage? Yeah. The 7, that? and that got nerfed. The 7K hit confirm to the throw got nerfed. They used I'm, to do I'm more. I'm thinking that did more damage than actually knocking him off the parchment. Because he Probably. had the option, too. Yeah. Ooh. Nice that's a wrap. And you can't do it against like um, players that are, are looking for those strengths. They know the strength very well. If you start charging it, they're gonna hold that. They don't want to have to get hit oh, by that. Oh, if she did not use that meter, that would have been bad. Is she yeah. gonna get the boxes? No. One thing I want to point out: long time ago, years and years ago, Nash fan was a Hatomi player in DOA4. Yeah. Back when he was in, the, I think it was Tribal Boy TV was playing. He was actually a Hatomi player. Oh my god. Yeah, that's man, that's taking it back, man. Really far back. That's taking crazy. it back. But he was a Hatomi player, so he knows the matchup. Mm. Nice. Ooh, tries to grab that safe one hit. Did you see what Nash just did? Like he did Ooh. one T twice, back to back. One of those times he was like minus five. Yeah, he was minus five, but he took the crush and it paid off because they end him tried to throw it. Yeah. So then the next crazy. time, once you get the down back punch on counter here, you're like plus three, I think. So nice break hold. Had to get out of the situation. You don't want to be in the firecracker so like Ooh, good damage coming up. Knows that there's no meter. Oh, oh, giant swing. Oh, my God. This is going to do over 50%. Easy. And he's going to get the exploding car. Wow. This Tina character does damage. All right. So, Nash fan playing the spacing game. It looks like they in there might be in trouble right now. I don't know. That's that stun you don't want to be in. And that is a dead Hitomi. Yep. Easy giant swing. And, you know, I want to point this out. Playing a lightweight character against Tina is so crazy because she's getting that giant swing because you're so light. It's crazy. I would I play Bayman against this character all day. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you definitely you either that or just don't get launched. Right? Yeah, man. But that's harder, harder to do than say. I man. think Nash fans, despite being in loser's bracket, I don't want to count they in the map, but 
it looks like he's gonna run away with this, man. I mean, you know, you never know. You never know because they end up obviously knows what she's doing, but I don't know, man. It was a little rough. It was a little rough. But and I already hear the stage in the background. It's got a good stage. It's a good clean up. stage um, for them not to have to deal with too many interactions like that. In the yeah. Zone. The interactions on this stage are very, very situational, whereas other stages you're just gonna get by something no matter what, yeah. you know. And one thing that I do want to see from from they in them is is the fact that they have the ability to. Or not ability, but I want to see them start throwing a little bit more. A little bit more. A little more neutral throws. They end them. Her meter use is super good. Whenever she's oh, really in trouble, she's here. really good at using the meter. That's a plus, I believe. No, no, I was having That's active. a great setup, by the way. It is. Because he's been using that setup for years. If you try to back away, it's going to hit, hit you in the back and destroy you. You can't move away from it. The only thing you can do is block. That's the only thing you can do. Oh, looking for that safe throw situation. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, he's gonna take the meter. I like it. I think she's gonna hold right here. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. Wow, that was crazy. I want to point that out. That was crazy because he could have destroyed her against that wall. Ooh. Oh Big man. Damage. Wow. Wow. This is uh unfortunate for they end them right now. Yeah, they end them is is okay. Oh, I love that. I love that. Nice. The punishment. Throws the booty bump. There's the low so kick. All right, so Nash trying to hit buttons. That's what? it. So sick. Wow. Nash oh. All right, see, man. So <sighs> Yeah, I mean, it, you think he's gonna close this out right now? I mean, it's looking like that. It's just, it's, it's one of those situations where you're like, man, if, if, if they and them was, was able to recognize that Nash has been weak to throws and neutral, uh -huh. Uh -huh. they'd be having a, a, a different conversation of, of where they are in this particular set. You know, Tina, really, really great at being able to delay those strings, that 3 PP, that 4 4 punch punch. Oh, that's not good. I think he thought that was. He's gonna. Finish. He wants to use the meter. How much would have bet he's gonna try to break blow to kill her? If I'm there, I'm putting something on the screen that's using meter soon, like in the next. I told you. There it is. Now no cancel. cancel. Oh, no, no cancel. cancel. She should have canceled no, for sure. Could have killed. Could have killed at that point. All right. So both players down. Pretty much one stun from both players might close this out. Oh man. Did you see that? That's that's. Yeah, that was crazy. That's risky for a Tina player to sit there and hold their ground and then just throw out an 11 yeah. frame jab and be like, Yo, what's up? You know, Nash is doing pretty well, man. I mean, like like I said, Nash has always been that guy who's, you know, been so close to just, you know, triumphing, but he's just never able to close it out. But I think we might see Nash in top eight. I think yeah. we might see Nash in top eight losing well, the way well, Nash, going. It looks like they're, they're running the gauntlet for Nash because it looks like he's going to stay on okay. and face the next person, which could be Quiggles. Look, I'm going to say, and yeah, yeah, you're right. Could be Quiggles. Cause, yeah, that's right, because Quiggle lost to Rakuto. Yeah. Oh, man, that's not good. Yeah, it could, wow. be, it could very well be Quiggles. It just depends on how the brackets are shaking out. But that could be the match that leads to a top 16 or top 8 appearance. Right. Um, we're just speculating here, guys. We don't, we don't actually have the brackets in front of ourselves. But, you know, we've, we've been to enough tournaments to, to make a decent guess. Yeah, right? man. I mean, you know, it's like, like I keep saying it. It's like these pools, the way they're designed, like you're going to face great players before you even get close to top 8. For it's sure. going to happen. It's going to happen. For period. sure. And, you know? and if it's Quiggles versus Sosic Nash fans running it back, who you got? If. I think Nash can do it. I mean, there's no doubt Nash can do it, but the question is, is he going to? That's really what it's about. Like, no one wants to hear about what you can do. Like, oh, I mean, I have the ability to beat anybody, but are you going to do it? Can you do it? We want to know. We want to know, and the, the more important thing is, like, for Nash fan, it's, it's about your legacy that you're leaving here in the yeah. way. Do you want to be that guy that Oh no, it's black. Oh. Yo, so that, look, that it's four out. Remember, it's it's four out of each because they gotta get top eight. There's two huge pools, it's gotta be four yeah, out. I'm just so I think the it. winner of this could potentially either advance into top sixteen or I don't know, because we're going black to top Quiggles. eight today. Yeah, I mean so okay, so so we have Black Moon versus Sosic Nash man. In this case, who you got? Honestly, man, I've never seen them play before, so I have I can't call that. I can't call it. I think that Lei Feng does great because of her they parries. Like buttons, bro. They, they both like buttons. Yeah, for sure. I think that Lei Feng does great because of her parries, but think about it. Nash, and he his put glasses. his glasses on. Yo, this dude is indoors with these aviators on right now. This dude this. is really. I can't deal with this. He's not serious today. Feeling I'm, himself I'm is not even a word. Now. He's not serious. You're going to pick. Because he put moon. his glasses yep. on, you think it's over. Yep. Okay. Yep. You heard it. Hot take. Nash. Saturdays. Nash. Hot if you Saturdays. can hear me, Nash, you have your glasses on. You have no choice but to win. You, you kind of do. I mean, at this point, if you're going to walk up here with some aviators. You gotta be nice on the sticks, or and he put him on Tina. Crazy. This dude. Crazy. This dude is on to something. All crazy. right. So 
I'm calling it. Nash Finn's taking it. That's I'm fine. It. That's fine. You can take. You think Lay Finn's? You think Lay Finn's? Oh, you think Lay was taking? It? Okay. Absolutely. I want to see this. Uh, chat. Type one for Nash Finn. We just seen him do great against Quiggle. Type one for Nash Finn. Saw him do great against Quiggle. If you think Quiggle. Blackman's gonna win, type two. I want to know. Lost. I'm checking the chat later. I want to know who do you guys think is gonna take this? Because when when Nash Finn takes this, I want nah. a dollar from everyone. It's not going down Watch that this. way. It's just not. Like if you think about this, it's just not going down. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Look at that. And Black Moon, every time we see him on stream, he starts off game one, round one, with that kick. Ooh. Yo, remember you were saying that Nash fan was going to win this, dude? I don't know. It's yo, not looking like it yo, right now, man. I'm not, not a You know what you're not about to do? You're not about to change your picks like, <laughs> like it's Summer Jam, my friend. Whole chat heard you. We got you on record saying, oh, yo, Nash has got this. Nice side oh, step from Black Moon. Black Moon, man, he has you. leveled up so much. It's crazy because Black Moon, I called it. Yeah, I mean, you, you really made the great pick here to say Black Moon was going to take this. It's amazing. That's what I'm As saying, so man. As so goes in. He's crazy. Get the right I'm always car? right, man, even when I'm wrong. Oh, you didn't get the right car. Okay. Ooh, slips Be down. careful. So, on this stage in particular, oh Ooh, my god. Walk around, didn't hold. It's almost like you should hold immediately. Yeah, for sure. Because, But then again, the game is so new to the point where, like, those half what? wall splash, it's so hard to know whether they're going to have splash or not. You know what I mean? So, so Black Moon is already buffering in throws to prevent himself from getting punished by so sick Nash fans catch throws. Crazy. So Nash fan likes to do a lot of wave dashing in this game, but the problem with that is you're gonna get put into a lift stun if you get if you get nice caught ducking at the wrong time, which we yeah, just no saw. Question. Oh damn right on your back. And so team players have been doing that a lot. Ooh. Oh, oh, almost gets a conversion. Dude, this character is so good, Terror Rock. What are you doing? Oh, big time damage. What kind of conversion? Oh, he doesn't get the combo. Beautiful break hold there by Nash fan. He has That's safe. Oh, he caught, he caught him. It was a slow attack. Oh, he, why did he? Bro, oh, my break. God. This is crazy. That's nice not punishment. safe. Caught it. He painted the shoulder. Wow. What? Yeah, wow. What a play from Nash fan. Let's go. Dude, that was crazy. That was a scramble right there. I mean, both those guys were using options to beat each other, and they just mistimed him and misread them. Yeah. All right, so we're seeing Black Moon firing back. Gets the wall throw. That's going to hurt so much. 20% there. Wow. Catches him trying to do the 7K. Uh, uh. He's going to take the meter. I like it. What's he going to do here? Beautiful. Takes the 7K. Oh, he confirmed. 50%. 60. Oh, my Lord. Yo, that's nuts. But even as we say that, Black Moon going back to work. Gets his own damage on the screen. That was not that's a good, good whiff. That's oh. unsafe. And he called him trying to parry. He's dead. Did you see the read? I saw the read. Wow. I saw the read. I just don't know why Black Moon pressed that button, but he's got to oh, around here. Dude, that was godlike, yo. Black Moon got to make something happen. It's the offensive hole by Black Moon. So sick Nash fan. Starting All right, so Black Moon pushing him towards the wall. Okay, okay. So we're seeing Black Moon slow it down and play a little more controlled right now. I love it. There's the back back punch. Wow. wow. He made him use his meter. Yeah. Wow, okay. Nice throw. Nice throw here. What's going to be the setup on Wake Up? Because this next exchange will pretty much serve. He enemy. caught him trying to sidestep. Wow, he got the wall back. He didn't mean to do that. No, That's oh. That can be punishing against the wall. Wow, shot a wizard. He didn't tech. Is that going to kill? That's He's dead. dead. That's a dead Yo, what? So hey, listen. Close. But you saw what happened? Now I got faith in him. He took his glasses Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold now on. I got faith in him. I called so, it from the start. <laughs> So get out of here. <laughs> so at what point do you think Nash Finn took those glasses off? I want you to tell me. Second uh, round, third down round? Two rounds. That's okay. when he took the glasses off. Because they were exactly on, ladies and gentlemen. He rolled them right up. I told you. You can't, you can't take the man seriously. He's got glasses on. No. Oh, right. dude. Big damage. Dude. Equalizer right there. That's what equalizer. is going on? Yo. We call, that, we call that throw the equalizer from now on. And I'm telling you, the reason why, do you see what's happening? He's doing big throws to this man's offensive holds. Nash Finn is Close able to out. do this because he's so used to having that high risk reward mindset from coming from Street Fighter, coming from MK. Those yeah. reads are crazy. And nice. And, and Black Moon, he's he's not phased by this. He's just right back in it. He took that first round pretty convincingly. He's getting beat up in the second round right now. Wow. You know what we're seeing? Good grief. We're seeing Black Moon's defense literally crumble right now. We're seeing his defense fall apart, and yeah, Nash Finn is onto it. Yeah, so so sick Nash Finn going to pick up his great. And, and Black Moon's just got to get back into it. This this has been a good set of rounds yeah. between these two players. That's unsafe. No punish from Black Moon. They, all right, Ooh. beautiful offensive hole from Black Moon to keep the Takes pressure away the wake up. up kick. Wow, no duck from Nash Finn. That was crazy. Okay. Catches him again. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, uh, and smart Nash fan, that was not Black good. Moon. He's going to use the meter. I respect it. Beautiful, beautiful round up by Na uh, Black Moon. I don't know Moon's that dead. Black Moon needed to use that meter in that situation. But Probably I guess not. Because really, really look how much life he has. Yeah. He had a full light bar. There's no reason to use it. But either way, he wanted to guarantee kill. Beautiful yeah. takes the grab out of the air. He doesn't take the. Oh! Big time damage. That's going to hurt. Again. Again, 
Kane is such a good character for when it comes to those high counter throws. Nice, nice. sidestep. Wow, are we going to see Nash fan take Black Moon out of the tournament? And wow! Black Moon's, and Black Moon's looking for him to hold far too much. He's got to make this adjustment. Remember what I told you? It's so hard to throw Nash fan, dude. It's so hard. Mm, nice. Nash fan. Nice. Good defense the whip punish. Okay. Black Moon still in this. Both players sitting on pretty much the same amount of meter right now. Whoa! Ooh, what's that setup? Are Is we he going to hit again? a button? Oh, he backed away. Wow, Sonic Wizard, no tech again. What wow, Nash fan is on the verge of eliminating Black Moon before top that's eight. That's and that is, wait, oh, one more no, hit. No, 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 no. And that's it. Wow. Just like that. Nash no. fan coming Yo. out to his first DOA 6 tournament, eliminating Black Moon Ryzen from the tournament. So what a guy. Top eight. And, that's it. And he's out of here. A couple of things. Number one, the picks you've been making have been on fire. Yo, I want to talk to y'all real quick because. Number two, these glasses. I want to talk to y'all real quick. Go ahead. I called it. All right, I called it. Let me tell you guys, I called it, and I know you heard me call it. You know, yeah, you know, you know, hold on. Shout out to Blackman Rising for doing really well despite losing to Nash fan. I mean, dude, yeah. the Reeds, Nash fan won that purely on Reeds. What happened to Alan Paris? I think he's out. I think he's out. I think he lost someone Black in loser's bracket. Sent him to losers. He might have went to go fight Quiggle in loser's bracket or X. something. We don't know. We don't have the brackets in front of us, but either way, dude, Ugh. think about what we just saw right there. Stop. Quiggle, I'm sorry, Black Moon was sweeping him. And you know, the classic is, is LeFan going to sweep me and stun me or is she going to sweep me and offensive hold me? He was literally sweeping him, and Nash Fan was doing big throws to stop the offensive hold and taking his whole life bar. What do you do to someone who's doing that to you? You stop holding. Exactly. Stop holding. And wow, it's man. It's a hard thing to do, but you just stop holding. That was crazy. And, and like you said, you've been making the right picks here today. They're and we got to give you credit with credit, Yeah, Yo, I'm just saying, man. You know what I'm saying? I've been, I've been around for a while now. You know what I mean? And I'm, I know a couple of things, Shade. I know a couple of things. Look, right? man, I'm, You've I'm been around longer. Right? I'll give it to you. But I know a couple of things. I want to know a couple of things. Right? I've been here for hot takes, man. I'm, I'm, yeah. I want to see Dark Horses win. So I'm actually happy that Sosik Nashvin moved on because he's a player that we don't see very often. I mean, often. technically, in that situation, even though Nashvin is obviously really talented, he's still the underdog. Yeah. You know what I mean? He has no not been to a major for this game yet. And I'm going to tell you something. He hasn't even played this game. He, no, he mean? literally stopped playing. The, the game came out month one. He grinded nonstop month one. He took a four or five month break, and he just started playing again to get ready for this tournament. He hasn't even I'm touched the game. Really confused about these uh, these loser bracket matches because we're seeing Quiggles against him. I forget his name, but it's, it's gonna be interesting. It's, it's be T Boy. Uh, he yeah, was the guy to play Diego against. Yeah, Calvin but, plays earlier. Yeah. Yeah, like ah, okay. Yep. I have to look this stuff up. All right, man. Again, guys, we're coming at you live from Kumite in Texas. Again, shout out to Vandy for throwing a great event. I'm having a blast, man. It's no, really it's awesome to be here. This whole thing, the atmosphere, it's like you just feel the love in the room, man. No, I mean, And sometimes in these tournaments, you kind of lose that, you know? I think it's the venue. We're at an eSports arena. Yeah. How often do you get to say you're at an eSports arena competing? A whole venue dedicated to video games. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, Pretty I wish awesome. you guys could be here. For the guys that are not at home, I honestly want to say that this is the tournament you didn't want to miss out of all of them. Yeah, I mean, if, if, you, CEO had choice, in this one. if you had a choice, this was definitely V1 in terms of, like, production value and just all around just views and everything. Yeah, it's, man. It's been, been phenomenal so far. I really hope you guys at home are still engaged in DOA. You know, again, shout out to Team Ninja. They just put Momiji. She's going to be dropping on the oh, 19th, so right? September 19th. September 19th. She's coming out, and she's about to change the game. Momiji was always a really solid character, and obviously she got some new stuff in this game, so I want to see how that plays into the Get ready Momiji mirrors. Right. Let's get it. Get ready to get 6PK'd, because that's all that's going to happen. I'm here for it. I'm here for it, because that, that is a character that I'm looking to hopefully add to my own roster when playing this game. And right. I, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what she can do. I remember that Momiji could do uh, 6PK and stun and get a lift stun, and then they changed it so they a launch. Remember that? Yeah. It's crazy, because... That's pretty much what Hayabusa is from DOA to you. I want to say that it was a natural combo, forward punch kick, the mid punch, the mid kick launcher. Yeah. But, you know, that was actually something that a lot of people considered to be a nerf. But I think it was actually really good because she got that quick launch into another combo. But either yeah. way, we're jumping into this next game here. We have T-Boy, Texas native, going Starting up against off Quibble. Great, actually. Well, but Quibble's reversed that with a nice hold there. So notice what we're seeing. We're seeing an immediate switch to Lisa. Because Quibble knows that I, I did not come from Vegas all the way out to Texas to lose and lose his bracket before top eight. Yeah, he's got to run that gauntlet. I'm just curious about how far T-Boy has made it because he went out pretty early and to lose his bracket. I mean, for him to be fighting Quibble right now, he had to have made it kind of far. Yeah. You know what I mean? He had to have taken a couple people out. So we'll see what happens. Quibble going up one to nothing in the set. That natural combo one PP there by Diego. Nice, nice interrupt. Quibble's got the counter hit. Saw the hold there. Gonna get some good damage. Wow, that was a great combo. What's the setup? Hmm. 
nice hold from Quiggles. And this is just him playing very Ooh. free at the moment. Gets a stun. Oh, that he's dead. Man, that extra damage from the floor plus a high counter mid punch hold. Yeah, you're dead. And that's such a horrible position to be in as the attacker because Ooh. you just watch your opponent whiff a throw and then you're just like getting held immediately because you threw out a strike by mistake. Ooh. Man, T-Boy, his defense, I'll give it to him. His defense is really good, man. Yeah, He's doing like a lot of crazy defensive things right now. Nice stun, but Quiddle's not willing to He's hold dead. anything. This is yeah, that's a dead, that's a dead character. He's going to use the meters going to kill him. Yep. Right, so again, guys, this is first to two. Quiggle going up one to Queen nothing in the set. Queen here. Queen yeah, man, that was, that was quick. You know, Quiggle, you notice when Quiggle's on the verge of being out of the tournament, the smiles are gone. Yeah. He is no longer going to be smiling anymore, and you notice that, especially once he goes down to lose his bracket. So he does not want to lose this right yeah, now at so, all. Yeah, so now, now I think I think well, I got to get better since we're So I think this, what we've been doing is one pool the entire time. Okay. So you think this is even pool two? I think I don't think it's pool two at all. I think it's pool one, and then we're gonna go to pool two soon. Okay. We haven't seen like we haven't seen Halloween go. We haven't seen Hallow Killy. We haven't yeah. seen Steady. You're right. Those, okay. All those guys. Yeah. I think that's what's been happening. Here. Ooh, he needed to hold that because yeah, that would have been bad. Ah, so it looks like T Boy's finally getting something going here. Nice. Wow. He called him trying to backstep and does that. Ba Ooh. Okay. T Boy getting on the board finally with the game, with the round there in the uh, second set. Yeah, that was, that was rough. Oh, beautiful. That throw does so much. And it's crazy because that animation changed from the pre build to this one. And Kugel's still sticking with the high in that situation. I wonder how long he's going to do that against T Boy because T Boy has so, so far been ducking underneath each time. Uh huh. Uh huh. Quiggle's always been so creative with his Lisa combos, man. Yeah, he's been great with Lisa. It's just That's one of those kids. I'm saying he, he's a guy that has so many characters that he puts himself into a character crisis when he's down around. Do you feel like Lisa is an underused character? Do you feel like she's, you know, used pretty well? I mean, we got Gruff, we got um, Quiggle. I feel like there's, you know, pretty good representation for the character. Yeah, I don't think she's underused. I, I just think that we don't get to see her that often in top eight scenarios. Right. All right, so you know, Quiggle going in with the uh, Ooh, with the tech. offense right now. Wow, beautiful way to close the round out there by Quiggle and T Boy trying to hold on for dear life right now, man. I want to see more steps from him. The only problem is that Lisa's tracking is so good that you know she's pretty much gonna shut down any side step that you're trying to do for sure. Ooh, get that beautiful stun. Nice high punch hold there to stop the pressure from Quiggle. That's uh, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure if that's plus because she jumps away. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a situation where neither player gets anything guaranteed. Yeah. All right, so T Boy, okay, getting on the board with a combo of his own, nice 15 percent during that combo. Wow. Okay, there's the launcher. There it is. Good damage from Quiggles there. Are we gonna see T Boy get a game on Quiggle? Wow. Oh, he. Nice did you see him turn around out of that? I think Quiggles was. And that's it. On it. That's it, man. You know, and it, it's really unfortunate too because T Boy. One thing that you don't want to do to Quiggle from experience is when Quiggle's about to die, never throw him. Yeah. Don't even attempt to. But you know, either way, guys, that's actually going to be the last game for this block. Don't go anywhere, guys, because we're going to be back. But either way, you know, Quiggle's going to be moving on. He was so close to being eliminated yep. from the tournament that early. And again, there's no smiles from this guy. He's literally like, all right, I'll focus. I mean, I'm not coming here, here with the goal, right? You're exactly. here to get points. You're not here to get knocked out right. in the top 16. That's you know, shout out to T Boy. Shout out to T Boy. Somebody, obviously, he's a Texas native. You know, you don't really see much of him, but he's been around for a while, so it's really awesome to see him come out. Shout out to him for doing well. Yeah. And, you know, doing pretty well against Quiggle there, man. You got to give it to him. Yeah. And again, guys, we are going to take a quick little break yeah. here. I think it's about 10 minutes long. Not really sure. Um, as we transition over to the next block. Yep. All right, guys. I'm Emery Reigns. This is Chase with that. We'll, we'll see, see you, you guys you. soon. Stick around. Don't go anywhere.
As a Dragon Shrine Maiden, I will do my best. I'm ready to fight!
All right, what's up, chat? We are back, ready for more DOA6 World Championship action. This is your guy, Shade Swift Eye. And I'm Emery Reigns. And we are here for block two. This is pool B, in case you were wondering yeah. at home. Uh, we've got a lot of top players still left trying to make it in the top eight. The last match that you just saw between um, Quiggles and T-Boy was for top eight losers. Quiggles yeah. did actually take that, so he is now in top eight losers. Right. My assumptions, we haven't seen it all the way together yet, though, is that Rakuto moved on to winner's side and Caliber Blades moved on to winner's side for top eight for tomorrow. We have Quiggles, and I'm not sure who the fourth person is. We'll find that out for you a bit later, but right. so far, those are the those are the cast of characters that, that have made it to top eight just so far. Yeah, and again, we're going up to top eight, so obviously we're going to run this block all the way through until we get to top eight. Top eight is going to be tomorrow. Um, you know, there's a lot of talented players in this part of the bracket. Um, there's actually going to be Haluichigo, who we yeah. haven't seen at all yet. Okay, it's Crazy Steady's over here. Killy's over here. Mona Vanderwall is over here. I know you guys have played this guy online. Dangerous, dangerous Chrissy player who you don't get to see that much offline because he does, doesn't travel that much yeah. because he's on the West Coast. He's deep into California. So yeah. to be able to get to the East Coast or anywhere relatively outside deep of California South. is extremely hard. So, yeah. you know, Mona is going to be going up against Matt Ponton here. I told Matt earlier, I try to give him a little bit of advice because you do not want to use bass against Christy. That's the last thing you want to do. Listen, the only – if if you well, – we could say that. The only reason you would use bass against Christy is if you are confident in being able to establish – the actual neutral game. Yeah. Because if you can't establish a neutral game as the bass player, then you're 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 in trouble. Right. You're in trouble. All right, man. So again, we're going to be going with uh, Matt Ponton here representing Free Step Dodge. That's going to be his website, freestepdodge.com. Check it out for all of your DOA needs, guys. We're going to have Mona Vanderwall. And I don't think this is a button check. I think we're going to see my. Oh, no. Yeah. We have my versus. So again, I love this pick. I think my does exceptionally well against Christy. She's able to combat Christy with her 11 frame mid and her 9 frame jab. Both players have the same uh, speed on their attack. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see how this plays out. We're going to be going to the ring stage here. So everything's going to be up close and personal. Yeah, and I mean. It's a it's a good pick from Matt there to, to go ahead and pick, um, you know, my because she's she's a great character. She's so fast yeah. that it forces you to either hold or hold that damage if right. you will. And you know, again, I do think that you know my obviously we're looking at the screen now. We're seeing my doing really really well against Mona's Christie. Um, yeah. You know, they're both very very speedy characters, and Matt has a lot of tournament experience, especially against Christie. So it's gonna be interesting, man. Matt is looking really good. Yeah, he's looking solid. It's, it's, it's kind of it's, it's refreshing to see Matt looking so solid because we've seen so often that, you know, he, he's crumbled a couple of times. Yeah. But here he's taking these first two rounds very, very convincingly. He's looking to take out game one against Mona here. And I'm telling you guys, man, Mona is – I know you bumped into him on PS4 rank. This guy is extremely talented. Yeah, I mean, he, he's, been a, he's been somebody that had – uh, a really good Christy at first. I think he wasn't a big fan of the Christy changes for DOA 6. Right. But then as he played it a bit more, he became a fan because uh, he's one of the top ranked Christies, like you said, in exactly, Rank Match Online. Yeah, he's dangerous, man. And this guy made a little bit of noise also in DOA 5. He didn't start going offline until towards the end of DOA 5. But we're going to see Matt going in right now with yeah, that great beautiful combo. My combo. And Matt with the, with the uh, nice little wave dash backwards. Ooh, plus one. That's zero on block. And Matt sitting there holding the black one. Nice interrupt there. Wow. Phenomenal Wait, play. Wasn't able to close it out. Oh, wow. good break hold. Ooh. And Matt takes game one right there. That could have been a tricky situation yeah. for him because break holding in that situation where he was blocking instead of using the break blow. Right. You know, that, that, was, a, that was a dicey move by him. But it turns out it worked out. Matt Potton, number 30, free step dodge is yeah. finest. You know, and again, I want to shout out Mona. Um, you know, even though unfortunately he went down uh, one to nothing in the set mm -hmm. here, he is so talented, and there's no doubt in my mind that he's gonna go ahead and see. He's probably getting some coaching right now. We don't know that for sure. But hey, again, listen, listen, that's, we don't that's know next that level sure. coaching. We next don't know. Coaching. We don't know for sure because again, as you guys know, <laughs> coaching is not allowed in the DOA Six World Championship Series. But we don't nope. know if he's doing it. We listen, can't confirm that. So, like I, like I said before, man, if if I needed some help, that's how I do it. Right. I'm not saying that's how you should do it. Officially. I think Christie's a good pick. I see no reason for him to get off of Christie. I just think he needs to approach the matchup differently. Yeah, the stage. Because Matt the stage is running away with it. Mm -hmm. it. It was that close stage, and I don't think he was going to expecting Matt to hold block for so long throughout all of those strings. So if he tries to mix it up with a few lows and opens Matt up, like with that low there, I think he gives himself a better chance to win these rounds. A nice little combo there to start it off. Matt with his own low. And nice going into a throw because that's what he has to do against any type of player when you're using Mai. Is you have to establish your throw game because if you don't, then the player's going to hold block and you don't really have much of an opportunity to do any type of big damage. Why would he say this? Nice, wow. nice positioning from Mona. He could 
finish this round out if he wants to. And oh, he's got those all day. He has a dead character. He's going to use them. No, he doesn't get the meter because he sees he's got so much life left. There's no reason to. And Matt, again, that patience with the blocking. Let's see if Mona's choice to hold on to meter ends up being a mistake for this round. I've always said that Matt's one of those players, and you know, Bass has never been a bad character, but right. I've always said that Matt's one of those players that if he used another character, we would see an entirely different player because Matt is so knowledgeable of this game, and it's so awesome to be able to see him using a character that, nice you know, quite frankly, can be able to combat some of these faster characters. Yeah, I, I think with with Matt, he, he has been a person that's, that's uh, experimented throughout the years. I know, like, in DOA 4, at one point he was playing Hayate. Right. Um, and even in 3.1, he plays some Hayate. It's, it's just a matter of him being a character loyalist yeah through and sure. through and and it's good to see him branching out and and looking to enjoy another character such as mine because i don't think he necessarily enjoyed those other characters as much as he's enjoyed playing mine right so again you know looking at the screen i'm already seeing mona playing completely different he's recognizing that matt is not using any wake up kits he's sitting over his wake up and just using forward punch and jabs to be able to combat him yeah there's a the jab extension matt in trouble right now if he goes oh my god that double sidestep serpent step there it's from Mona just knocked him off. It's extremely dangerous. Especially if you can find a player that's going to respect everything. Yeah, no question. And and Matt there took a risky gamble. I mean, he was already plus one in that situation, but then he goes in with the sidestep. And I think, like I said before, that the key for, for Mona that's been really, really critical for him taking these rounds is the mixture of lows that he's input into this set of this set of uh this game here. Right. Wow, all right, so Mona closes it out, gets yeah. a point on the board there. It's going to be one-to-one. -one. This is a first to two because, again, we're starting the second block of pools here. And, um, you know, all these players are trying their best to get up to that top Mona of the level. so chill. So, oh, so yeah, chill. he's relaxed, man, because I think he knows what to do now. I think he knows what to do now. Yeah, like, he, he just looks super chill. He's, he got those notes in front of him. He said, look, look, do more lows, right. uh, do more throws. And you know what's going through Matt's head right now? He's trying to decide if he wants to use bass or not. And he always does this. That's, that's and the I do, think that's the do I want to, to use Bass face? Yeah. He, I think he, I don't he, know. he wants he to use Bass, to but he needs to stick to mine. He needs to stick to mine for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the my choice. He just got to make sure he chooses better buttons. Oh and he's got to make better reads against Christy. I know one of, one of the characters that has given him trouble in the past has been Christy, in fact. So we'll see what he can do. Nice Ooh. interrupt again. Matt knows some tech because he's done that the second time very consistently. Going to be some good damage here. That max damage combo there. Puts himself against the wall. Doesn't hold mid punch there. Strangely enough, nice Ooh. side step and nice side step again <laughs> from Mona. That's crazy. That's safe. And I like what we're seeing from both of these players here. Mona's probably gonna close he's out dead. this round. Yeah, he's dead. No, oh, wait. drops the oh. combo and okay. Matt gets up pressing something. Not sure yeah, what he's for there. You know, Mona's already caught on to the uh, caught on to the fact that Matt is just getting up doing buttons at this point. He's not actually getting up and blocking or doing wake up kicks. So Mona already caught on to that completely. And again, Mona is, is using a good mixture of lows, just enough to keep Matt off of, you know, a Ooh. full defensive posture. Oh, nice Again, throw. we just saw Matt get up again. No wake-up kick. Mona not afraid to use a wake-up kick. Okay, oh, oh and nice that was hold. a great hold. And it looks like Mona has completely adapted to Matt here. Yeah. You can't count him out, though. We might see a comeback. Could be a full download. I mean, Mona's won the last five straight rounds. Matt looking for a high counter throw there. Forced to use some meter. I like what we're seeing from Matt. Nice, nice combo. Unfortunately, couldn't convert it. And Mona looking for the force tech. And Matt, wow, great patience. Man. Dude, but again, Mona the used that low. Transitions are crazy. Matt is literally just standing there letting this happen. Finally, Matt gets something on the board, but Mona stops it immediately, and that is yeah. a dead character. So, so the key for Mona throughout that was again adding more lows, being able to off use their use the offense for longer periods of time. Yeah. And then you also saw. Um, the, the parts where he refused to hold in those critical situations where Matt had gotten a deep stun, Matt was looking for a high counter throw, and he refused to hold. Instead, he got opened up and lost many rounds. He lost six straight rounds yeah. there. All right, man. Great so, adjustments you know, from Mona. Regardless, Matt still played really well, and I do want to see him go back to Mai again. Unfortunately, he's going to lose the bracket, and no different from Pool A. We're going to see him go through the gauntlet to try to make it out of pools at this point. Yeah. You know, and Mona's going to be moving on the winner's bracket. Obviously, a very strong Christie player. I can tell you this. This guy has the ability to beat anybody in the community right now. But you, you look, look, real quick. You saw Mona there. He put the aviators on after the match was over. Right. Meaning, aviators during the match causes you to get an instant L. Aviators on after the match cause you to get that W. I don't know, man. I just I, don't, I'm just I'm saying. Not a fan I'm just of, saying. 
I'm not a fan of wearing sunglasses while I'm playing a video game. I don't know about you guys. I think that's weird, but I guess maybe it helps some people because I heard him down there say, hey, I need the glasses. I'm about to play. I so mean, I don't know if that's helping got, him or not. Everybody's got that good luck charm. You know, it's, it's one of those situations where you, you do whatever you can because you might be superstitious. Right. A lot of these players are superstitious. Some people have to have headphones in their ears in order for them to play. They might not even have music on. They yeah. just like that comfort zone because that's how they play at home. Right. Whatever edge you can give yourself that is within, you know, legal bounds, you always want to do. Yeah, man, for sure. And uh, everybody's got their thing. You know, like me personally, I'll use headphones until I get blown back, and then I'm taking the headphones out because I feel like the headphones are affecting me. So, you know, everybody's got their thing. I know Hoodless is big on wearing headphones while he plays. Everybody's yeah. got their own thing, man. Some people prefer to play with no game sound. So everybody's got their weird thing that they do while they play. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what, what I would do consistently over time. I think for me it was just having something playing in the background. So I'm a headphones person as well. And the song of choice was never really... I didn't have a specific one. I just needed something playing in the background. Right. That's really what it was Everybody's about. Everybody's got their thing, man. Everybody's yeah. got their thing. Find what your thing is. And, you know, if it makes you comfortable to play, do what you got to do, man. All right, but we're going to be moving on again in the bracket, guys. Again, thank you guys so much for tuning in to Dead or Alive 6 World Championship action here. Um, you know, if you guys are just tuning in, if you guys oh. don't know, Momiji was actually announced oh. for the game. She's going to be dropping on the 19th, so make sure you guys follow all the updates and things like that on the official Dead or Alive 6 Twitter page. So we have the Summer Jam champion on the screen right now. That is the one and only Killy. All right. Um, and he's got the same glasses on. that Mona just had. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I'm not even joking. Killy handed him the glasses before he played, and I'm pretty sure Mona just... My question is, if they have to play each other, how are they going to do that? Who are they going to break glasses? the glasses in half? Are they just going to have one on? Like that's cr Those are the questions you got to ask, man. We're going to find out. I, I just know that whoever is wearing the glasses in that particular match is probably going to lose. I'm, I think that these guys are on to something, man. I don't know why, but it's looking like glasses are helping these guys perform. Better. Oh, it's not. No, no. I'm not a firm believer. That's why I said <laughs> That's why I said this before. Killy's not making top three, and this is one of the reasons why. Because of the glasses. glasses. You think that's the glasses it. are going to deter him from yes. doing well? Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. We'll see. Hot take. Um, we're talking about his Saturday. opponent. We got Virgin Knight. Virgin Knight is a California yeah. player. Um, yeah. He goes to a lot of their locals out there, and we saw a lot of him in DOA 5. I know that he was contemplating coming to this event. Mm -hmm. He made it happen. Uh, you know, Wasn't he at Summer Jam, too? He was at Summer Jam, yeah, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's really trying to do his best here, man. And again, they always talk about how there's no Bayman players. Virgin Knight is going to be one of those players that really stuck with Bayman throughout the years, and obviously this is one of his darker times. Mm -hmm. But he's still going to stick with his guns, man. So, you know, some of these players, they just... Oh, my characters might not be that good, but I'm going to have my character loyalty, and I'm going to stick with my character. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's going to be a, a, a solid match. I do think that we joke around about the sunglasses, but in this particular case, I think it's going to be Killy who uh, comes out on top. I, he just, he's he's that, he's Killy, you know? Yeah. I, I don't see anybody knocking Killy out until top eight. I just, I can't see that happening. But, you know, if it does, version nine, is, it could be one of those players that yeah. does it. You think that if Killy has to face Calibre somewhere in top eight that he's going to lose to him? Yes. Uh, I I think it's going to be significantly closer than what we saw before. Yeah, I don't want to say loses to him, but I don't see him clapping caliber blades up in the way right. that we, we saw. You know, that was like, you know, six to one in rounds. Right. So, Wow. And that was the tank, uh, base of take roll there. Wow. All right. So Killy getting that back back throw there, pulling him in for the extra damage. Nice offensive hold there for Virgin Knight. Yeah. Oh, and again, good, good choices from Virtuous Knight right there. And this could be the round for him. Killy got caught with the slower throw right there. And Virtuous Knight took the first round. It's going to be an interesting match in general because I think Tina doesn't necessarily have a ton of, like, advantages over Bayman per se. And he's a heavyweight character, so he reduces some of the damage that she can put on the screen. It's going to be really about can Killy make the adjustments that he needs to when it comes to facing somebody he probably doesn't play that often. Yeah. All right, so Virgin Knight taking that back throw. And, again, I always found it weird how Bayman is, you know, one of the heavyweight characters in the game with offensive folds that does not have grappler speed throws. I always thought that was strange. But, you know, Tina, he's going up against Tina wow. who's a grappler, and she's got the faster throws. Nice fuzzy there by Killy to stop the offense, and that's a dead character. Yeah, and that was just an interesting exchange between each other between those two players because of the simple fact that they were feeling each other out mid stuns with each other they weren't neither one was really going for the the solid ender like a big time throw or anything like Ooh. that they were just kind of manipulating the stun system to see how the other would react and that's one of the keys that's really uh that you need to keep in mind when you're trying to play at a high level Ooh. and again again they're trying to feel each other out they're seeing how each other is playing right now. So Virtuous Knight, it has so far been able to keep up with Killy. Wow, and there's that new running tank rolling. That's it. It's a dead character. Oh. And Killy's down. This is, he, Virtuous Knight is on game point against Killy, yeah. the Summer Jam champion. 
Alright, so there was no... I'm surprised he went for the back kick there instead of the throw punish on the tank roll whiff. But, I mean, it's working out for him because yeah. he is all over Virginite. Wow. I Smart like the play. way Virginite... Virginite's using that tank roll like an offensive uh, style attack because he's doing the tank roll and then he's getting up and hitting buttons after because he knows Killy has to respect Yeah. And Killy's making some adjustments here. He, he's... he's through the stun manipulation, he's been able to see that Virtuous Knight has been actually trying to tank roll out of things. So you see Killy's doing a lot of tracking attacks to keep him in place. What's going to be the setup here? Ooh, catches him. I think that's actually guaranteed against the wall. Yeah, probably. I'm surprised, you know, you actually saw Killy. Whenever you see a player, like, hitting the block button a lot, and their character's kind of just stuttering there, they're actually... Yo, Killy was super chill there. Yeah, yeah he's just chilling, mm -hmm. man. Like, that face is the most chill face we've seen probably today. And that's 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 for a game that went to the very last round. Yep. Oh, nice, nice fake out there. All right, so Takes away the wake up kick. Grab. Ooh, wow, wow, that was risky. It's a great setup. That was but risky. Killy read it immediately. Did you see that? Yeah, he, knocked he him had out of the Killy air. upwards in the air, and then somehow his legs turned around. And he broke his legs. How did he do that? It's pretty pretty smart play. That's plus, plus one. one. Oh, and Killy hurt. Doing his own big damage. He throws. That's okay. smart play from Killy there. You know, uh, very similar to the way we saw Nash Fan using Tina. You know, Nash Fan going in with that back kick a lot and Killy using it the same way as well. I mean, you know, the back kick is super good. It jumps over a lot, pretty much every low in the game, and it has a lot of crushing capabilities. So yeah. And one, plus. Thing, one thing that we're seeing from Virtuous Knight is his willingness to do empty tank rolls and his willingness to just do raw launchers. It's been pretty effective versus Killy. Right. And I, I think that's one of the things that we've always talked about before against Killy is you need to just go in with your offense yep. because that's what's going to put you in a position to win against him rather than overthinking or think that you're going to do something to kind of throw Killy off. Just do what you would naturally yeah. do, and that's half the mind game. Yep. And, you know, sometimes, you know, everybody's guilty of it. When you go against these really great players, sometimes you find yourself doing out of, you know, pretty much things that are out that's of character. Old. You know what I mean? And it's because old you're overthinking old. the matchup. Yeah. But as we say that, Virtuous Knight has made a couple of critical mistakes here. Not quite throw punishing where he needs to. But he's keeping himself in the game. Killy with a nice interruption, though. And that's, that's going to take it. a round. That's it, for sure. And, you know, really smart. I mean, Killy knows that Bayman's a heavyweight. Why would that's I risk so. launches when I can just have him in stun and do the break blow? He's got yeah. a counter mid-kick. So, really good stuff there by Killy. He's going to be moving on in the winner's bracket. Virtuous Knight is not out. He's going to go down to the gauntlet in the loser's bracket, unfortunately. But either way, you know, really good showing from him. He got a couple of games on the board there. You know, unfortunately, just wasn't enough to close it out against Killy. Yeah, and I, I sat there, like, the moment I saw Killy come into this tournament, I, I literally, my first thought was like, yo, why are you here? You already yeah. won? You already have your fatal qualifier? You've already qualified for this? Let somebody else win, guy. Let somebody else win. But hey, clearly, man. he's here to establish dominance, continue winning, continue to collect money, and uh, build himself a brand. It's if you've nice. got the ability to come to these tournaments, and you've yeah. got the money, Killy walked away with a really great chunk of change there from Summer Jam. So if i got to spend $1,000 to get to the next tournament and try to win that same money back, yeah. it's, a, it's a risk that I'm willing to take. I mean, at this point, he's pretty much a short shot for top eight. Yeah, I mean, no. he won that event very, very convincingly. No question. I mean, that's one of the things that I think some of the top players have in mind when they're attending these events, even though they've already qualified for the Tokyo Grand Finals, is it's not just about... Uh, the qualification anymore. It's also about your brand as a player that comes right. out to travel. You could potentially be picked up as a sponsor, as we've seen with Caliber Blades, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. So it's it's one of those situations where you don't just want to come out here and compete with the thought of, can I get number one? It's also the thought of, how much can I push my brand out here? Yeah. You know, when they're at home streaming, how many more viewers can I get to follow me, right. follow my streams, yeah, support A me, lot of things go into my dreams. it. A lot yeah. of things go into it, man. You know? So it's, it's good stuff. It's good to see them. And, of course, for us as fans, as players, as viewers, we like to see returning you know, competitors come out here, see those match classic matchups, or even some new matchups. Because Killy, really, he doesn't come out that often. Yeah, he doesn't. We get to see him play against some of the very best and see how things turn out. And it's crazy because, you know, back to talking about that a little bit, Killy doesn't come out much, but there has never been a time where Killy has come out and he hasn't done well. Oh. You know what I mean? He's done really well for the most part of all his, uh, his events. But regardless, we're we'll moving on to the next match here in the winner's bracket here steady. at KIT 2019. We steady. have Crazy Steady going up against Hollow Ichigo. So, I mean, we I said it at the very beginning of the stream. I think Steady's going to be one of those guys that ends up in the top three. Yeah. I think he will be. Um... I think he's just that talented coming from how he plays. He's been a guy that has shown the potential to make top three. He is obviously probably the best West Coast player there is yeah, currently. He's been that way for yeah. or probably half a it's, decade. Yeah, he's been there for a while now. I mean, you know, he's always done a great job of proving his dominance when mm -hmm. it comes to playing on the West Coast. You know? Yeah, and it's, it's really about making sure it translates consistently to the East Coast or the Deep South. 
he hasn't been as successful with that, but he's always kind of been in the mix of things. It's just that he'll run into the Grim Reaper, known as Caliber Blades, yep. or another top player, and then it kind of goes downhill from there. But still, he's been there in the mix. Um, one of the things I'll be curious about him is we last time we saw him was final round. Yeah, it's been a while, and I was just going to ask you, do you feel, because he hasn't been to many tournaments since pretty much, I want to call final round like a pre-launch event, because it wasn't a DOA 6 World Championship event. It was literally at the start of the month in March when the game came yeah. out. Do you think that that's going to affect him when all these players like Caliber Blades and Hoodless and Killy have all this offline experience where he hasn't really been to a tournament in a while? I, I think that always has a factor. I think the more important factor, though, is how much time has he spent playing the game itself. Yeah, So and I wouldn't know that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where you, you have, I, I've seen it, and he's played the game, but he's been playing with Nico, and it's, it's interesting because Nico has gone through a series of, of changes. changes. Lots of changes. She's got changes more than anyone in the game. Right, that have made the character not as great, and... As far as we know, the, the Nico players of the world, CEO, Blackberry, Crazy Steady. That's yep. those. Are, that's it. And yep. we haven't got a chance to see Steady's version of Nico post since nerf. The, since the nerfs, exactly. So I'm so, curious to see. Exactly. Um, and again, I do want to shout out Crazy Steady because he did do really well in the North American West online qualifier. Yeah. Earning himself so many points towards the world championship. Yeah, sure. So. He, he took second place in that. Yep. Very good. So Unfortunately, he lost to Quiggle, but he's got an opportunity because he already is on the board with points. So if he were to take this, he's right in the mix with the rest of the North American players to get a chance to Tokyo. Wow, that was a great combo. Right, so um, again, I want to talk about these characters a bit. Hanoka is one of those characters that we don't. You see know, a lot of people in their head is not very good. I mean, I believe Hanoka's. Oh, oh wow, he got the conversion carry. to the what, danger zone. What kind of carry is that? I like it. And he actually has a combo. Okay, I like it. Yeah, smart. Wow, Ooh. great that was. Dirty. Great choice. <laughs> Great choice. Because right. that's you anticipating your opponent pressing a button on wake up. That's not a wake up kick. And uh, it was a smart play. But steady with great defense right back in there. And for those of you that don't know, Hanoka is very fast. And Nico is mostly, uh, her strengths come from her playing up close. So whereas she has to play up close, so does Hanoka. Hanoka's got that 11 frame mid, 9 frame jab that pretty much everybody in the world wants for their character. So yeah. Hanoka being that fast, she can actually combat her pretty well, man. Yeah. Hanoka, Ooh. you know, Howell's got some tricks right now. This is going to be a tougher match than I think Steady might be ready for. Well, oh, Hollow is a very, I'm going to tell you this, Hollow's talented. He just hasn't been to many tournaments for this game, if any. I believe this might be his first one, but, man, he's no, he's a great player. I know that him actually wishing that he had Phase 4, um, I'm sorry, um, Alpha in this game. Oh, nice Might come into, come into play here, but, I mean, regardless, he's doing well with Hanoka. But as we say that, Steady was able to do a nice little break blow there. Oh, and again, that's something new to this game. Hanoka has the ability to do that Jan Lee Dragon Gunner out of her stance. That's really great that they gave her that. She needed that. Plus one, and Crazy Study does not care about his frame advantage. He just hit him right in the mouth. Going straight uh, that's for all the combo. guaranteed. Yep. Okay. All right, that's going to do about 40% when it's all said and done. Crazy Steady single two rounds. Hollow down to pretty much 20% oh, life, nice and crush. this could be it. I Smart. love it. Smart and play. again, that's something that we see a lot from the Japanese players. They like to put you in these crazy stuns, and they know you have the meter. What am I going to do? I'm going to watch you hold. I'm going to take that easy throw because it's guaranteed. If I'm watching you hold, the active frame gonna, you know, on the hold is going to get grabbed. Yeah, so. I mean, it's such a great stun because it's not like it's a lift stun where you can eventually shake out of it and then go back to neutral standing. It's one of those stuns where if you don't hold, you just fall to the ground. So right. throw, putting, putting a throw on the screen is the best option and because you don't take any damage. There's no way you're going to take damage. Yeah, for sure. All right, so again, I expected this. His Hanoka did well, but I think that he leans more towards Murray Rose in this game. It's his main because he doesn't have that alpha to be able to use. So, And can I also say, though, real fast, you know who's wearing the glasses in this match? The person that's down 1-0. <laughs> that's negative three, right? Yeah. So so real quick for you guys on stream, Hollow actually didn't win that last game. Crazy Steady won that game. So he has one game, and Hollow has zero so yeah. far. Okay. So Crazy Steady getting that mid-kick hold, and Steady is really starting to feel himself. You can see he is, because yeah, when Nico players good. start doing that, I'm going to walk in your face stuff, yeah. that's when you know they're feeling themselves. Yeah. I mean, when you open up with a 15-frame attack like that, it's it's uh, one of those situations where the Nico player is feeling pretty good. Nice crush again. Ooh, a nice interrupt. Recognizing the string, recognizing Mary Rose's vulnerability, and he's getting a lot of mileage out of that crushing mid-kick. I think this might close out the round. No, it doesn't. No, he didn't, get, didn't the get the wall damage. Wow. Yeah. And there's that punch, punch, punch to end the round there. Steady. Yeah, that was close to a great again. I think that Hollow should have stuck with Hanoka in this matchup. I believe that she would have done much better. I think Hollow just wanted to get off the stage. And 
I, it's it's not looking good right now. Nice hold. Wow, that was a crazy. But you know why he held that? That was actually a really good hold. Yeah, he had to. Oh, oh and that's and a dead character. Up points. Oh, oh he drops it. Drops it. And, and nice fuzzy for Steady. And that's what I'm talking about. That's why I feel like Steady's one of those players you got to watch out for. Has a great chance for making top three because his defense, he's blocking his ankles. I mean, there's no doubt that Crazy Steady is good at the game, but it's just how good is he? We haven't seen him in so long. Yeah. You got to kind of question, like, like you know, does this guy still have the you ability the glasses, to compete? Though. Oh, no, you see him. You see him. You see the glasses? You see he was taking those L's when they wear glasses, right? Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Oh, I, I get it, man. <laughs> You're under the impression <laughs> that if a player wears glasses, they can't win. Hey, I don't really to, agree to, with that. I think that that's a state of mind. No, nah, no, nah, I'm not saying that they can't win. I'm saying if you walk onto the stage with aviators, it means you're not fully engaged because you focus on the aviators and not necessarily, I'm just saying. Right. I mean, honestly, I'm if you wear saying. a pair of glasses, sunglasses, you're not going to be able to see that. Oh, well my God. It's because you have glasses on. This is why you're defending this. I wear glasses. No, too, these, bro. these, bro, these are. Those aren't real. These are uh, hipster that's glasses. That's what you just told us? These aren't even prescription. You're trying, you trying to style these. out for the stream? Yeah, but I'm trying to style, man. You already know. I don't wear oh glasses. I got contacts, Light man. skin mode again. You know what I mean? It's no. Crazy. That was crazy. not a light skin moment. That was not a light skin moment. Oh, my God. You take the cake for light skin moments. So I don't even want to tell them about what you've been doing what, all week. What have so. I exhibited that, that caused yeah, the light skin I, I'm going to tell you guys. You guys see the shade is literally a shade lighter than me. What? So shade takes the light skin awards It doesn't all even day. make sense. It does make sense. It makes right. no sense. But what we do have, <laughs> what does make sense, is Hoodless on stream because he's one of the top players who's expected to do very well in this tournament. Yep. And who's he going against? I can't see the player. I'm actually not familiar with this guy from his looks, but if I see his name, he might ring I'm, a bell. I mean, this is the beginning of this pool, so I think this is probably Hullis' first match. Yeah. So it's the way the pools are seated, of course. You know, top players generally are considered the favorites, and so I think this guy's considered probably a lower seed, but we just don't know right. his name yet. Yeah, and, and we don't know if this could be just his first tournament this year, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we'll find out very soon. As soon as he picks up the sticks, he's going up against one of the best, so how he responds by getting hit is going to be uh, very interesting. All right, man. Because we know Hoodless is always ready. He he is, without a doubt, in my mind, the most prepared player. Uh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. I agree with that. He's he's always on point with his preparation. I, I don't ever see him. We don't ever say, oh, he doesn't know that character matchup. That's why he's losing. Well, look, this is the thing about Hoodless and something that, you know, even to a lot of other top players that they don't do, you know, at least out in the open. You know, Hoodless does stream a lot. Make sure you guys check out Hoodless' yeah. stream on Twitch. But Hoodless Labs... He is a lab monster, not yeah. only in DOA, but Street Fighter and the other games he plays. Hillis is a lab monster, so if anyone's going to know a matchup, it's going to be him, you know? Yeah. All right, man, we're jumping into this. I haven't seen the name yet, so I'm not familiar with the other player he's going against, but we he see Helena Atlanta on the and screen. That's a tough matchup to go against. No, oh, that's no, a button check. check. For yeah, sure, for sure. a button check. <laughs> okay. All right, we got a button check coming. Um, you know, and again, Team Ninja did announce that Momiji is going to be coming to the game. I'm curious to see who's going to pick that character up because, as we already asked Master, Momiji is going to be legal at the next event at TFC. Yeah, I mean, and, and guys, if you're, if you're sitting at home thinking to yourself, you know what, I want to do an event. I want to go to a DOA 6 World Championship. The next event for uh, offline is actually in Raleigh, North Carolina. It yeah. is the Fall Classic, and that is going to be taking place October 3rd through 5th. So if you haven't already, go online, pre-register at thefallclassic.com. Or go and pay those extremely other prices for online yeah. or in-person registration. You don't want to trust me, guys. It. Don't you do it. not want to do an in-person registration. Not only is your seed going to be the worst that you can possibly get because they're going to put you in a pool full of sharks pretty much at that point. You're going to be – your pockets are done after that. Yeah. Trust me. I've paid $100 for a, for a late registration. Don't you be, sound crazy. Don't be me. You sound nuts. Don't, yeah, don't be, be me. That All right. Let's get into this. So, Oh, this is Shinlad. I, I want to say this is yes. Shinlad. This is Shinlad. Shinlad is you pretty good. You recognize the Spence. I, yeah, as soon as I saw his movement, I knew who this was. So he's you said a streamer. He, you said he's pretty good, but he and took he's like a, street a flying fighter. kick to the face. <laughs> he's a street fighter player. So I want to see what he's going to do. This guy, do nice not count goal. Shinlad out. I'm going to tell you that. So it's interesting, like, the choices players make when they're sitting on top of the firecrackers because, uh, oh, he could have converted that into a lot of damage. But I don't think he expected that back turn forward punch to wall splat. So. For not. For sure not. And Hillis uh, is going to uh, get some good damage uh, here. Uh-huh. Uh Beautiful. Reverse nice. the situation, put him right there. back in the firecrackers. And you see Shinlad is playing around in him, and that's a natural combo yep. encounter. Nothing here. you can do. Yeah, unfortunately, that was it. Okay, so Hoodless is going up one to nothing in the set. Shout out to Hoodless's sponsor, Cody. And believe it or not, Cody is actually um, a brand that Alan Paris, aka Lucky Loops, actually runs himself. So yeah. shout outs to uh to Cody, man. 
Yeah. Alan Paris didn't do as well as he wanted in this tournament, but it's it's not stopping his brand from doing very well through Hoodless right now. Hoodless putting on a he's great show. He's a great blow to kill. He is. So that's yeah. one thing I love about Hoodless, and I'm seeing a lot of other players doing it. They're, if they have the ability to kill with that meter, they're going to use it. Like, if you can kill the dude, why not just use it and go up two rounds? Because now they got to work all that, put, pretty much put all that work in to be able to come back. For sure. And one thing that we haven't talked about a lot that's that's interesting about DOA 6 is, like, after the, the break blow, you get those guaranteed hits if, in open space. Yeah. It's, it's kind of crazy because, you know, some of the other characters that have throw down throws, like your Mila's Like Mila, yeah. Dinas. If you go into an invisible wall in a corner, she can actually local you nuts. Three. Yep. It's nuts. Nice yeah, side step from Shinlad. Shin so, I mean, as you can see, Shinlad is fighting back here. I mean, Hoodless, it's Hoodless, but he's doing really well against this guy. That's plus. Oh, surprised Ooh. we saw Hoodless get hit by that. That's usually something that Hoodless ducks on reaction. Yeah, I, I think he got caught pressing another button. He didn't expect that to come reach him. Nice side step again. Can he convert it? Looks like he is. Nothing in the background. But Shinla, he's he's playing like a smarter Yane, and and we just saw Yane do so well at the Tokyo Game Show tournament, right? Uh, hours ago. So she's she's definitely a character that's in use, that is known to be able to do great damage, has great defensive options. She's just a great character all around. Yep. All right, so we see Hoodless here already sitting on an entire bar all over again. Yeah, and that's, that's going it. to do it. I mean, honestly, dude, like like when you're going against a player like Hoodless, man, like you know, it really is unfortunate that he's got to fight Hoodless right now, mm -hmm. but. We just saw that Shinlad has the ability to play. I mean, he took yeah. a round off of this guy. And Hoodless is one of the best players in the entire world right now. You yeah, know what I mean? no, he is. Coming off of his second place, again, second place to CEO and second place to Summer Jam both. So, you know, it's really um, it's really interesting to see a player like Shinlad be able to come out here and do pretty well against a player yeah, like Yeah, I mean, Hoodless is, Hoodless is on the cusp of some great things right now because he's a, he's a player that has come in second place at both Fatal Match Qualifiers. So instead of getting that normal 240 points, he actually gets the full 400 points. Yeah. Because the other person that wins the tournament is already guaranteed a trip. Exactly. So you don't actually give that person the points. So let's just say hypothetically, Calvin Blades gets first and Killy gets second. If Hillis gets third, he's getting that maximum amount of points because those players can no longer earn points. They're already qualified. Exactly. Yep. And I think the way the math is in the, ends up working is you get gar a guaranteed spot if you get close to, I think it's either 1,000 or 1,100 points. So okay. the, if you get that amount, you're, you're pretty much good to go. And Hoodless is really far up there on that leaderboard, man. Yeah. So he's locked in. He's been to every single North American event so far. Yeah, I mean, the battle is really between, like, the, the three, four, and five seeds. Yeah. Um, like with your with your Electrified Quiggle, Man, Quiggles, Rakudos. All those yeah. guys are, are really battling it out for a spot. And it was very key for Rakuto, in fact, to be able to beat Quiggles because he's one of the people he's trying to catch. Sitting in top eight winners. Yeah, Rakuto sitting in top eight right winners. Now, and that is a huge game changer. We have not seen Rakuto play that well yet. All yeah. right, so back to the match here. Hoodless getting that throw on the screen to reset. There's the throw again. This reset is so dirty. Shin Lad looks crazy. Completely lost Shin Lad right pressing now. buttons. He, he wanted out of that situation. He had to do something. He had to do something. And I like the choice from him because it was literally a raw launcher that got him big time damage rather than a deep stun. Ooh, nice throw on that string there by Shin Lad. Yeah. That was safe, but I think it's negative seven, so. And again, again, he's going for launchers in those situations because he feels like Hoodless is going to press a button. And so far, the last two times, he's been right. Hoodless. <laughs> wow, that. Did that work? That's a back turn, right? Crazy. You know, it's crazy because Shinlad does not know. He didn't think that Hoodless was going to duck that string on reaction. But if you duck Ayana's 404 kick back kick, that advantage string, you can actually do a fatal rush and take her entire back, which is what we saw Hoodless do. But he, was, he did a. He did a um, Break, break hold out of that situation. I didn't think you could do a break hold if you were back turned on it. I don't know. I think something happened in between there, but you might be right. I'm gonna have to uh, play that back because if you are back turned, you can't use it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yep. It, w it was it was a little quick. We'll, we'll we'll see because that was a bit bit strange. You know what I mean? But even as we say that, Hoodless moves on. He's he's looking pretty solid. He looks like the guy we we remember from Summer Jam. Which, if that's the case, look out for everybody that's not in Grand Finals. Right. Yeah, man, for sure. I mean, either way, guys, you know, this event already, as you can see, has been crazy. And yeah. we're not even at the top eight yet. Like, yeah. There's been some crazy matches. You know, last, obviously, the last pool we had Black Moon uh, going up against Lucky Loops and ended up taking him out. You know, a lot, of, there's been some upsets. No, Sosik Nash fan is in top eight losers. Yeah. Yeah. And his mean, first event, top eight losers. Yeah, I mean, that, that to me, I think, was the biggest uh, Dark Horse surprise. Right. Because that's been a place he's been trying to get for a long time and the fact that he's there is, is quite an accomplishment top eight loser is going to be pretty tough for him because you know quiggles is there and uh, other, as well as other players but yeah. we'll, we'll see what happens we'll see how it plays you never out. know man you never know for and sure. that's the thing about doa like you know when you sometimes when you watch other games like you're like man 
I already pretty much know who top eight's gonna be. Yeah, but no, you no, see no probably the most upsets in DOA than any game because that's just the way the system is designed. Yeah. The fact that you got your stuns, the fact that you got the triangle system. Yeah. The triangle system itself is enough for a player that may not be as good as you to beat you. It happens all the time. Yeah, yeah. That's how I, it's, it is. It's that's how it goes. That's how it goes at the end of the day. But as we say that, we know what we're building up towards. So Steady moved on, Hoodless moved on. That is a crash course right there, folks. Yeah, man. If you're watching at home, they are going to meet each other eventually. I don't know who takes that. I can't call that either because they're both so talented. It's it's uh, it's, it's just too hard to call. But look at what we got in front of us. Wait, Electrified time, time, man time, 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 versus time, time. Mona Vanderwall. Because because Mona was put into losers, which means E-Man's in losers. No, 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 no. Mona beat uh, Matt Ponton. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're Mona right. I was about to say. I was, no, I was thinking about Hollow. That's right. You're yeah, right. You're yeah, right. Hollow right. got I was put about into losers. That's crazy. Mona Wall is going up against Electrified Man. So listen. This is going to be crazy because, first of all, Electrified Man is a Christy. One of his one of his main characters is Christy. Yeah, he knows Christy. And he's Christy one of the best Christy players in the world where Mona is obviously going to be going with Christy. I know he has a pocket Tina, but it's just you can't call it, man, because E-Man knows his character like a back of his hand. But we've also seen E-Man lose to Quiggles Christy. Yeah, no you know question. What I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those situations where sometimes you're on, sometimes you're off when it comes to fighting your own character. But one thing's for sure is that E-Man's been in the lab. Like, I, I personally witnessed this man. We, we played a couple sets uh, probably last week online. Yeah. He's in a good place mentally. He's in a really, really good place mentally. And that's what you want to be when you're coming into a tournament. You don't want to be shaky on your combos. You don't want to be shaky on your, your, your ability and timing of anything when you're fighting any opponent, no matter what. And he, he showed him he showed that he's he's in a very good place. So yeah. they're going to go through a quick button check. I don't know who we're going to see from E-Man because... When we were talking, he's got he's got a nice Mila that he's really really working hard to, to turn into, you know, one a of his worthy, top characters, yeah, yeah, character. And then of course he's got his staple Christy. He's got you know Helena. Helena. He's got Kokoro. He's got those four characters that are kind of in his Rolodex, if you will. It's just a matter of how comfortable he is fighting Christy. Exactly. And it looks like. And I'm gonna tell you this, you know. E-Man knows that Mona's good. Yeah, There's no, no way question. that Mona's gonna go. Uh, E-Man's gonna go into this and pick and a vice character versa. he's not comfortable with. And again, Mona knows who he's going against. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna call it. I think that this is just gonna be just a straight up brawl, and I think it's gonna be a very even match. I don't think we're gonna see either player get 2-0. I'm here for hot takes and hot takes only. I'm saying E-Man's gonna take this 2-0. You think so? All right, I want to see that happen then. That's what I'm here for. I'm 2-0 and right now on my call, so we'll see I'm, what happens. I'm probably 0 for like 5. Yeah, I'm you're 0 for 5, this. man. It's all good. It's all good. We're here. We're here for fun. We're here for a good time. All right, let's get it. So we're going to the lab stage here. Uh -huh. Nice oh, hold. You would have, he needed that. And that's the thing that Mona's going to have to be careful of is the fact that his setups for launchers, he's got to be mindful of because he knows E-Man knows the setups. All right, and again, we have obviously the names are backwards right now. Helena's actually going to be Electrified Man, and Christy's going to be Mona Vanderwall. So yeah. just so you guys at home are not confused. There is no black one on screen, and there's no six, so six on the <laughs> Definitely <man. laughs> not. Not with these characters. <laughs> right. Oh, nice trip, because that was going to be a problem. But either way, Mona was able to take that first round. And that's exactly what we expected from this type of matchup from these two players is a brawl, like you said. Yeah. No, it's going to be a straight-up brawl, man. You don't know who's going to take this, because both of these guys are so talented. They know the matchups. Again, I do want to point this out. Uh, Mona is also a Helena player himself. They played yeah. the same characters. Yeah. I mean, it's almost like they trained together. One thing that as a Helena player you have to be able to get used to is the fact that your initial offense and your initial defensive plan changes drastically throughout sets because Helena's more of a long set player and you oh, see how she went did under you those see that Boko Perfect. duck oh my lord that was Punch dirty though. and that's yeah, a dead is. character uh, guys the duck under four mid punches four straight ones he just ducked under every single one of those four punches that was so crazy Ooh. there it is again and I want to see, a, so obviously this matchup could go either way because, you know, Christy's most ridiculous strings is her, her four punches, her jabs. Mm. But none of that's going to hit Bokoho. So what no, has he got to do? He's got to use, you know, jack sidestep low kick. He's got to use down punch punch. He's got to get in there because, and, and nice you know, Electron Man knows this. Yeah, for sure. Again, a nice high counter hold. Oh my from God, that did there. massive damage for a mid punch nice electric floor. He's going to take this round. So E Man is up two rounds to one against Mona right now. He's yeah. looking like he's getting more comfortable fighting against his Christy. All right, so, and, you know, there goes Mona Ooh, starting nice around with that Mona. down jab, recognizing the Bokoho. And I like the change up from Mona there because at first Mona was going with a little more of a standard set of uh, setups, and now he's kind of mixing it up because he knows E-Man is looking to hold certain situations. And the All more right. he can do that, the better chance he has of, of actually winning this match. 
Oh, well, somebody's controller just we disconnected. Got a controller disconnect. And it's definitely E Man. E Man's controller just disconnected. I think they're, they're just, just gonna going, play it out. They're playing it out. Okay. They're just gonna play it out, okay. And I know one hundred percent that definitely just stopped all of E Man's momentum and now he's almost dead. No question, but that either way he would have lost that round if they had, you know, officially done it, right? Because at that point it's considered a pause. Yeah. So it is what it is. It's glad that Mona was able to just play it out. Yeah. And E Man. Ooh. He's got to get his head back into the game, which he looks like he's trying to, but he's got to get also get away from this wall. Can he guess correctly again? He doesn't. Taking big time damage here. What's the setup on Wake Up? Mona, mid punch is a lot. Nice side step to get out of the way. Uh uh uh. Here's the 20% by E Man. Let's see if he can bring it oh, back. Oh, high counter mid push hold from E Man. And it's like E Man just suddenly tried to power up here because he yeah. was doing those holes, but he oh didn't have that situation. Both players sitting on 30% Safe. right now. And here's oh, the break nice. hold to stop oh. the break blow by Mona. That's, oh. oh, that's not it. That wasn't high counter. Oh. Did you just you see, see that? that? Go Beast through the wake, wake up, up kick. kick. And that's wow. like, that, that is the sort of tech that E-Man has been working on throughout the life cycle of DOA 6. He's posted videos about this. He's posted videos about how she can get around wake up kicks in certain scenarios. And that was one of them. Look, I'm going to be honest. If I lost like that, I'd be kind of mad. <laughs> yeah, it gives you that was it some gives you e -man reason to pause. Tech. That's what I'm calling it. That was some E-Man tech because it, he lost the tech just now. That was crazy. It gives you reason to pause, but that's exactly what we're looking to see from these types of players is that next level. How far have you taken your characters since Summer Jam, since CEO, since the game launched? And, and that's that situation gets you a whole round, gets you a whole game, and one of one of the most pivotal moments here at you know, the DOA yeah. 6 World Championship. And I do want to point out that E-Man just wanted a handicap. He pretty much lost a free round right there and still pulled it out against Mona. So, wow, that was crazy. All right, yeah. we're going back into We're going to the uh, sweat stage here. Yeah. Returning stage from DOA 5. And one of the things that a lot of people aren't talking about when it comes to Helena is the fact that her neutral game at the start of a round has dramatically improved because she has a 12-frame option. These yes. Days. It's yep. not just 13 frames yep. anymore. Okay, nice there blocking. it is. There's those hands nice on step. block. Nice. Gets that new throw there, that new Christy throw. Yeah. And and that's again, safe. that's that situation that E-Man keeps putting Mona in. The thing that Mona needs to do is start holding that mid punch. Man, you gotta dude. stop. You gotta stop the hand slap situation. And just hold it, get it off the screen, so that way you can get yourself oh, in a better position. That high counter bounce. That was like a DOA four bounce. I like it. Uh, nice launcher uh, here. Uh, is he gonna get the close hit? He's gonna go for a setup. I like it. Oh, so, just know, out of range. And Mona and E-Man, believe it or not, have a very similar play style. They're very setup based. They like to go for those no quick checks. And it's very hard to get those in this game, but they like to go for them because for sure. they, I guess I feel like they give them more advantage. But there's the lift stun there by E-Man. Gets the forward punch. And it's like you said, it's about those setups. You see them both manipulating the stun system. So that way they're always usually at an advantage even if they're whiffing a throw or attack. E-Man had wow, a break he hold there. To use that. He wants this round, but I don't know if he's going to get it. His back is against the wall. Nice sidestep from E-Man to get out of that situation. I think we're going to see E-Man send Mona to losers right now because Mona looks like he's losing the momentum that he had in the first game. Yeah. Ooh. All right, nice e launcher. Wasn't able to convert, though. But Mona, either way, E-Man's got Mona down to about 30-40% oh, life. Wow, that close hit combo. Nice. Right, that's, so Mona, that's a fake, that's a fake sidestep. Yeah. Or fake um, wake up. Mona is just getting ran over. He needs to make something happen, and that's, that's a dead character. Whoa! Oh, E-Man drops the combo. If Mona recognizes the fact that E-Man is probably not going to want to hold in this situation. And that could be bad. He could have dropped that combo and lost his set. Is he going to make this comeback? Nice wow. break hold. Got out of the situation. And that's it. What a okay. low. You know, that was it, great. It's it's unfortunate, man, because I do believe that Mona could have potentially eliminated or sent E-Man to loser's bracket there. But, again, E-Man just being such a talented player, you're using this man's mains. You know what I mean? He knows Kirsty. He knows Helena. So, to go against him with that character is just... It's just risky, man. But that's those are his guns. That's his best character. He's not going to sway away from that. Yeah, so. I mean, and 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 not to even give E-Man that much credit, because I mean, Mona, we can we can always point to the fact that E-Man has a Christie, and that's his main character, and we can yeah. say he's put his imprint on that character. But Mona has had has just as much stake into that character as well. Definitely, he's, he's definitely one of those players who's put in the work with Christie over time, and he's shown that he can compete with the best of them, even yeah. though he lost at 3-0. He showed that, like, even at the very last sliver of life, he was still in it. No, for sure. Definitely. And I, we're going to see more of Mona. That's not it. No, I, no I really do believe that Mona's going to fight his way out of loser's bracket and end up on top of a loser somewhere. I yeah. do believe that. Yeah, because, I mean, if we're looking at this pool overall, we have Hollow, we have Mona, we have Hoodless, we have Steady, we We've have E-Man. E yes. That's five names. We got Only Killy. four of them can move on. Exactly. And, 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 oh, and Killy's in the other, other pool. Like he's in the other pool? Yeah, I think so. Because you remember we watched him play. Oh, no, no you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. So six names. Only four of them can actually move on. Yeah. So I, and somebody's got to go. I mean, that's just the way it's it's gonna be, man. So you it's know. gonna be rough. It's gonna be rough. That's what I do know. 
for any of these players. And, and that's the part of the, the fun of these tournaments is that yeah. stress because you know your opponents are about that life. You know they're just as good as you. Yeah, man. So, I don't know what we're going to see next, but either oh, way, we guys. Got oh, we got Steady. Yeah, we got Steady, too. All right, so we what? got Killy. <laughs> we got Killy versus Dude. Steady. <laughs> wow. Let's get it busy. All right, Let's get so, it popping. Let's do this. All right, so I don't want. I don't think, we're, yeah, we ain't going to see no glasses from Killy this time. He's no, not wearing no glasses. you're not. That's we are not going to see no AVs These players, they know what time it is. When yeah. it's time to make money, when it's time to do business, they are not wearing the glasses. The glasses are coming off. They're not wearing glasses at that point. No. Might be aviators on the character, but it's not on them. I'm telling you. I, I called Definitely this from the start. Not. No, no, no. Mm. Okay. So we All are busy. going to see Nico and Tina? I'm yeah. thinking. But Crazy yeah. Steady is a, char a player that has multiple characters, whereas Killy... He likes to tend to stick to Tina these days, but he does have a pocket Helena as well. He does have a pocket Kokoro. He, he also has a really good Mila that we have not seen yet. No doubt about it. So, so here's, here's the thing. Who do you think is going to win? Just going based off of what I believe and what I've seen, I think Killer's going to take this. But that's just based, And this is crazy because this is going to set the tone for top eight. Yes, no question. So I'm going to stick to my guns. I, I mean, I think this is going to be a very close match in general. But I think this is where we see an upset. Where Steady makes his mark. Yeah. No, don't get me wrong. I think Steady has the ability to. He 100%. I don't even think it. He, this could go either way. But just based off of, you know, Kelly like coming off his fresh too. win. Yes, again, Steady was actually a Tina player previously in other games. Look at game, them. So. Look at them. They know yeah, what time Tina, it is. Tina, Nico, I figured that. They but, know what you time know, it is. Still. This is going to be crazy because, again, like you just said, this can go either way. But I'm leaning more towards Killy because he's got he just got the experience in this game over Steady when it comes to playing offline. And I love the energy from both of these players. They got smiles on their faces. They know what time it is. It's time for me to play against my friend and show my friend that I'm the better player. Yeah, exactly. Yes. All right, we're going to the road rate stage. And Nico starts the round with her back to the car. Ooh, wow, and he's so smart. That, that that's, right there. That's called your friends. Yeah, yeah. That, that's <laughs> called we play online, and I know that you're going to start to run and hold because I'm faster than you. So. Mm -hmm. And you see Killy's not even going for, like, the safe throw. He just went for the quick launch against Teddy. Yeah. Ooh. And he's going to get some good damage here, too. Not going to quite get to him. The, oh, he might get him he to might, the car. If he, if if he the angle's right. Oh, the angle wow, is right. he hit that. That character if he wants it. If he he's wants dead. it, it's a dead character. That is a dead character. Whoa. Drops. Even still, though, still gets around. I tell you Killy. what, Killy was not expecting that combo to drop. I promise you, he's practiced that combo multiple times. And and that's 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 one of the things that I like about Killy. He's one of those players that plays a grappler type of character, and he's willing to punch throw you anyways. Yeah. Don't see that very often. All right, so Killy on the board with one point here up against Crazy Steady, man. That is not easy to do. All right, there's that back kick to stop the punch, punch, punch stream. There's that safe throw. Oh is he dead? Boy. Almost. One Almost. more hit is going to do it, yeah. You never really know with that grab because it, it just does so much. Listen, right now my pick is looking pretty worthless. The Summer Jam champ is here, and he's showing out. Look, I, look, I don't know why you keep going against me, man. Look, man, I'm just hot takes here right now. Yeah, hot you takes. keep saying that, but your hot takes are wrong. Listen, I'll do, <laughs> I'll do educated takes tomorrow, but today is hot takes. Why not? All right, so I like what Steady's doing. Because he's so good, he's looking at Killy, try to safe throw him. He's not holding in stun, but then he's ducking to avoid the follow-up throw. Yeah. Crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy. Nice break hold. You need to get out of that situation. And that's the other thing that we're seeing from the high-level players is, oh, doesn't hold. I think Killy knows it's one of uh, steady setups is to do that, like, deep stun where you're falling and then try and catch you. Again, Killy not willing to hold there in that situation. Knows he wants to take this round. Doesn't want to extend it to a fourth because a fourth gives steady an opportunity. So, again, wow. Killy, again, his success rate with that move it's is hitting like, every time. Yeah, it's, it's I want to say 100% be, because how many times have we seen people duck at least, it? At least higher than 80%. I'd say 85 90% with the yeah. Shining Wizard. It's hitting every time. It's pretty convincing. But we I saw Nash fan do it yeah. all day earlier. You know what I mean? It's so pretty, it's a great Pretty move. good. Nice duck. Nice fuzzy from him. He knows it's a high attack. Knows it's a high launcher. Okay. Ooh. Gets that plus frames there. Ooh, wow. No did you see the free step from Crazy Steady? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff from him. Nice, gets the punch, nice punch, sweep. sweep there, but cra crazy steady. There's that new throw that has been nerfed more than anything in DOA history. Yeah, no question. <laughs> and steady with the nice pressure here. He's keeping it wow. on Killy. Killy didn't know what to do there. Went for a throw to try and punish, try and get him myself out of the situation. Lose the round there. But again, Killy so smart with his punch, punch, throw, punch, throw mix-ups. Yeah. His success right. rate on this stuff There's is that out back of control. Kick there. We see so much. That 15-frame back kick. Shining Wizard is hitting every time. <laughs> it's That's crazy. crazy. And so Killy look, Steady's doing up. this. Yeah. Steady's doing this. He's on the on the board with a point. He's got a full bar sitting next to Killy. This could go either way, man. It, it just seems way. like Killy is having to work far less than Steady is for his damage. 
I mean, let's take a look at their massive experience. You know, Killy, obviously, mm, nice you know, Killy and Blackberry are good friends. They play all the time. Killy and Steady are good friends. They must play all the time. Steady plays Tina. He knows this character. Yeah, no question. No and question. it's showing. They know the characters. At this point, it's just about execution and, and out mind game and putting in the right mind games to uh, outsmart your opponent. Yeah. All right, so that's going to hurt. That's yeah. 20%. There's no guarantee after that. Ooh. And Caught yeah. him. Again, that's saw all. Him. I feel like that's the steady special right yeah. there. Again, you keep seeing that deep deep stun. He's looking to throw you 90% of the time. And that Nico back ace plus K is a dangerous move. No man. question. That move right there that's is punishment. dangerous. What's the mix up? Goes for a throw. That's plus. What's the mix up? Back that's plus down a... kick. That's unsafe. Beautiful punish there by Killy. Just the runaround th uh, throw there. Oh. Tries the offensive hold. Killy with the low hold. Okay. You don't see it often. You don't. But you know when players are low holding, more often than not, it's it's one of those things where they're they're a little nervous. Yeah. All right, so Crazy Steady really looked like he's in Killy's head. But as I say that, Killy's fighting Ooh. back. That's death. He's That's dead. All right, so, so Killy one round away from sending Steady to lose his bracket here at KIT 2019. And remember, this the winner of this is going to more than likely the top 16 or top 8. Oh, nice hold. Okay. Mm, yeah, nice you're correct. Throw. This is the second time we've seen both of these players. Yeah. Yeah. That's un that's actually safe, I believe. Look, I, I'm not sure why that throw is is missing. I think it might be because of the frames. He might be using the fast one. Nice, 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 nice. Getting out of that situation. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Good damage. Because nice he's a giant lightweight. Swing. Yes, giant swing every time. God, that's gonna that's do so thir crazy. about thirty percent. Back nice kick, the jump over, wake up kick, and he caught him in the butt. He's not dead yet, and that's oh. a dead character. Whoa. Dude. And again, Killy, two zero. That happened so fast. First Crazy. of all, let's talk about what he did. He did the back forward punch, got the close hit, got that half wall splat there, and instead he got right back up and got dropped on his back. Crazy. It all happened so fast. And they got smiles. Because, you, you know, like at the at the end of that match, it was a run-up jab and let me throw you. The yeah. success rate on that was wild. Look, man, they're friends, right? Like, we already know. Yeah. They're friends, but no friend likes to lose to another friend. Yeah, I mean, at the it's end of the day. It's not a good feeling at all. At the end of the day, they're both competitors. Yeah, uh, for sure, but, all day. But, but for sure, they definitely had a great time up there putting on a good show for us. I think when you're looking at the match itself, um, Killy had established something that, that Steady just couldn't adjust to, and that was right. the punch throws. Like, the punch throws the punch were just good, yeah. on point throughout the entire set. Because you got to think about it. Tina being a grappler character, she's got that six-frame forward throw, whereas regular striking characters have the seven-frame forward throw. Exactly. That exactly. one frame, honestly, guys, when it comes to punch grabs, plays a huge role. It feels like you're getting sucked in by the throw. It's for crazy. Sure. Yeah. For sure. All day. So either way, set. Crazy Steady's going to lose the bracket. We're going to see him again later on, I'm sure of it. Probably going against Mona, trying to get out. Yes. So if we see that, that's going to be crazy. Yes. Kelly's moving on the winner's bracket, coming off of his win at Summer Jam, securing his spot, going to Japan, and he's yeah. already working his way to top eight. Look, if man, he's not in top eight, he's, he's just taking money from people these days. That's yeah, all man. he's doing. He's building his brand and taking money right now. And shout out uh, to the eSports Stadium. We see them zoom in on that hoodie that E-Man is so graciously rocking. Oh, my God. This match is going to be crazy. Oh, yeah. This is what we expect. So so I think, I think what we just witnessed was probably – the match to get into top eight winners between Killy and Steady. Yeah. So that means Killy's gone on to top eight. This also is a top eight winners match, or top 16 going to top eight winners. So the winner of this will go on to top eight as well. So they'll be done for the day. When I look at this, and I'm not going to do a hot take here. When Please I look, don't, man, because you've been wrong. I've been wrong all day. <laughs> all day. All day. Because you, you, said, you said, said Steady was going to beat Killy just now. No, no. I was predicting, not nah. necessarily saying he was going to, because I, I thought that Steady had, had what it took. But... When we're looking at this matchup between these two guys, this they've played in five. They've had some battles in five, like yeah. straight up battles in five. They haven't had as many battles because they haven't had a chance to really, really run into each other in six, like they should be. But they've run into each other a couple times. I think for this match, it's going to come down to the character selection, of course, as always, the theme for E-Man. Who is he going to pick in the first game? Right. I think if he goes with Mila. He has a great opportunity to take out Hoodless. Right, I'll tell you this. Mila is a great pick, and the reason why is because of her forward grab. Yeah. We all know that Hoodless is probably the most defensive and well-rounded right. uh, player in the community. But One, that forward probably throws the most a problem. Defensive player. Yes. Forward grab is automatically going to turn Hoodless into everybody else. Am I going to forward grab you and stun you? Am I going to forward grab you and grab you again? It could go either way, and that's yeah. why Mila is such a great character because she has that forward grab, whereas Hitomi has it as well. But Hitomi doesn't get a guarantee after her. Yep. Every time Mila forward grabs you, she gets that standing kick into frame advantage. You have to take a guess. 
A question. I didn't realize Tina does, does all those hand slaps during her uh, fatal yeah, rush. Yeah, she slaps you like ten times right in it's the crazy. mouth, and it's not it's not cool. I'll tell you that. It hurt. It, hurts it feels right. disrespectful just watching. It feels disrespectful. It. it sucks. But either way, man, <laughs> we're gonna be jumping into this match. Who do you think we're gonna see? Rig and Christy? Rig and Helena? I I want to see Mila on the screen. Me too. Who do we think we're gonna see on the screen? I think we're gonna end up seeing Helena. Yeah. Um. I, I do agree with you with the Mila pick as well. I think Mila's a great character to use against Hoodless. Because, again, the key to beating Hoodless is to get him to stop guarding. Yeah. And But, uh, you know, think about Hoodless's mindset. He's thinking, you got to stop grabbing me sometime. Because I would much rather get thrown than counter hit. And, obviously, everyone knows that. Mila exactly. can, Mila, it takes about 12 Mila four grabs to kill you, whereas it takes one lift stun to finish, let's finish you off. You know exactly. I mean? So I understand where his mindset is, but we're going to be jumping into this. Oh, There's that 12 frame uptick. Trying to challenge immediately with that 12 frame, like you said. Yep. All right, so we have um, Electrified Man's going to be using Helena on the left, and Hoodless is going to be on the right. Hoodless. Is he going to get the boxes? No, no boxes. Okay. Boxes. If he had done a side step, he might have been okay. Might have, yeah. But again, it, this match is going to be tricky to call on the stage because, again, it, the, as soon as the danger zone becomes into, comes into play, it's anybody's game at that point. Right, so we just talked about that. We just saw um, Electrify Man use that size to punch to get the Citizen Assist. Nice. There's the frame advantage. I love it. And, and early on, I like I like the strategy that we're seeing from E-Man. He's already causing Hoodless to double think about his ankles. Right. And that's a great option for a player who likes to, to play defense, you know? Yeah. Oh, he tried to punish that. Wasn't able to get a successful one. Ooh, catches him. Wasting meter there. Uh -huh. uh, he's going to get the Boko Hole throw. There it is. That max damage combo we've been seeing. Ooh, Force Tech. Okay. Dude, I love seeing those in this game. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's rare, smart man. play from E-Man. He wants to take away the wake-up kick. Oh, nice hold nice. from Hoodless. All right, went for that. Oh, wow, that was so E-Man is checking his ankles very well right now. Oh, nice down punch from Hoodless to get out of this Ooh, situation. Four kick, up kick. There's the, the launcher there. He's going to get 30% off that combo. And nice run up and throw. It's not going to kill, though. And E-Man got caught hitting the button Ooh. after that negative nine. You are negative nine after E-Man disconnected wicked. his controller again. He's got to plug it back in. Are they going to play it out? If I'm Hoodless, I'm putting buttons on the screen and beating it, beating you down until you can get it together. I That's think Hoodless said he wants to take this round. I think Hoodless is going to take the round. Yeah. I mean, because at this point, this is the second time that we've seen E-Man have some type of controller issues. E-Man's on guard. It's really unfortunate to see it, but, you know, it is what it is. I think... What E-Man needs to do is probably check the wire that he's using to plug up his PS4 controller. Yeah. Because that's probably what's happened contributing multiple to him. Times, so it's got to be something going yeah. on with the way he's setting his Someone's got to tell him that after this after this match. It's, you got to just check that wire. Again, just so you guys know, the names are switched right now. Rig is going to be playing play by Hoodless, and Electrod Man is using Helena, just so there's no confusion at all. Yeah, for sure. There's that 17 frame. I want to talk about this 17 frame low sweep that Rig has access to while he's standing up. Yeah. Such a great move. And that, that really, like, the, the controller disconnect, you can tell it, it kind of broke a little bit of E-Man's momentum. He's got to get himself away from this wall. If he can do it and get back in the game, you know, he can give himself a chance. But it's just, it's, it's tough to see right now. I don't think he's going to be able to do Dude, it. Dude, that 17 crazy. frame low sweep is just destroying Ooh, Nice, e nice. Legs. And this right here, can he get the big damage? What's he going to go for? Nice sidestep. Oh, my Lord. The defense. Did you Woo! see that? That was a Look, nice exchange. Smart. If you were smart an E-Man, would you have used the meter right there? I, I would have, but I'm a meter person. I like to burn my meter yeah, regardless. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> you know. I know. I know. Trust me. I figured that out today. <laughs> <laughs> this man had no life left using his meter. I'm like, this hey, dude. Listen, and he was listen. coming back. Yeah, I like I like meter. And in that situation, you go for it all. You go for broke because... You have like your one hit away from losing. Yeah, that's my mindset, though. All right, we're jumping back into this, going to the laboratory stage here with the servers, and you know it's actually crazy. Something that they changed drastically, and it's been so long. But you used to be able to combo someone, yeah. and hit him into the servers and combo again. Yeah, they completely got rid of that. <laughs> yeah, it was doing crazy amounts of damage. Yeah, it so. was actually ridiculous damage. You're right. Yeah. Oh, smart, smart play. So everyone knows Hoodless likes to use a mid kick launcher. There, he went for the high kick, thinking that E Man was going to try and hold the mid kick. Got some good damage from it. Great adjustment from. Hoodless. Also a That's nice hold here. No, it wasn't high. Not a dead character. Died. Great defense. This could be a real problem for Hoodless. Ooh. I don't agree with E-Man rushing into Hoodless's face like that. That was so risky. Well, I also don't know what he was, what button he pressed there because he got hit by a, a, a mid-punch. It looked like he was just dashing and got hit. That's yeah. what I, it looks like. All right, so, you know, again, I want E-Man to understand 
you know, he's got to make something happen because Hoodless is already up one to nothing in this set, potentially about to send E-Man to lose his bracket here at KIT. Yeah, and, and one thing I, I do want to see E-Man do is, is start living and dying with those max damage combos because I'm not sure that the force techs are working out for him in, in the way that he wants to. I mean, at this point, you definitely want to just stick to your bread and butter combos Ooh. because you're losing out on so there much damage with those setups. And that was a true mid. Didn't matter if Helena was trying to duck or not. And her stance got through. Hoodless was able to take that round. He is on match point. Ready to rock going into top eight winners. Yeah, we'll man. see if E-Man can mount something. All right, that's Hoodless going to with a nice hurt. Safe throw situation. Nice 25% there by Hoodless. Let's see if E-Man can bring it back. E-Man sitting on about three bars a meter right now where Hoodless almost has his break blow. Yeah. And I think that Hoodless is looking for the launch into the break blow. If he gets that launch into the break blow, he could potentially close this out right now. Nice down kick kick to launch. Oh, him. doesn't convert with that combo, though. Oh, good, good patience from Eman. Yeah, no one ever punishes that. that yeah. yeah, no one does. All right, beautiful. Great There's punishment full, again. Full bars of meter by both players. And Eman's got to be very careful here. That's plus one. Okay, beautiful Ooh, delay. That was great. Is he going to burn that meter? Oh, no, he's going to save it. No he wants to close crazy. it. What's wrong with you? And that Ooh. could that could have costed him. Oh. And he caught him break hold, and he's dead. Wow. Yeah, still in. So, okay, so, so I look like an idiot. No, no, no. He, I mean, he, dude, he it could have went either way. You, we both know it could have <laughs> went either way. So I don't, I don't want to. I usually like to clown on you a little bit, but nah. Yeah. It could have went either yeah, way. Yeah, it's crazy, but still, E Man's holding on to that meter. And again, I don't like these setups that E Man's trying to do because he's losing so much damage. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. But he's got a mindset. He's running with it right now. All right, right so now, it's e looking like it's working. And nice again, comeback. a big change to Helena in this game. She can no longer do her old 3 3 Ooh, from Nice neutral. duck underneath. And she's able to go in with the jab into the combo here. Nice, beautiful 20% on that combo by E-Man. Nice sweep there. Ooh. Is he going to use the meter? He's not. Okay, 4-4 four, four nah, He's going to hold on to it. Both players holding on to it. Oh, wow, that's going to hurt. Nice break nice, hold he from needed e that. there. And this oh, is a problem. Oh, dead. And I think, I think uh, no, he's dead. dead. And just like that, Electrified Man, two to nothing, is gonna go to losers bracket here at KIT. Yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, that was that was good. I mean, I like the game plan from e, from E Man there. I think the the one thing that caught him off guard was after he got hit by that low wake up kick, he wasn't expecting Hoodless to get up with a low wake up kick because he was stuffing those wake up kicks so successfully. I'm telling you this, man. and it kind of switched it around for him. Hoodless at this point, I'm pretty sure is gonna. He's looking to secure his spot in Japan. Well, he's, I believe he's, he's going good. to top eight winners right now. Yeah, yes, that, that, so that was for top uh, eight. You winners. know, sh shout outs to E Man because he's still in the tournament, but unfortunately he's in lose bracket. Hoodless is going to top eight winners again, and I don't want to say effortlessly, but he just took that 2-0 over one of the best players in the world. Yeah, I, I think there were a couple factors that definitely contributed. My bad. No, there, you're was, fine. there were a couple of factors that definitely contributed. It was one, the controller issues kind of threw off a couple of those rounds. But two, um, E-Man just didn't look fully comfortable, you know? Didn't look fully comfortable with how Hoodless was responding to his attacks, his stunts. Yeah. What do you think he could have done differently in a matchup to take that? I I would have liked to, like I said before, I would have liked to see more um, a focus on max damage combos rather than the four stacks. Right. I know that's like against his general strategy because he likes to, to ma manipulate the stun system. Right. But in a lot of those instances, he was either losing damage because of the way the stage was set up. So there was like those little slopes that was causing that force tech to either miss right. or just not connect. So he lost a lot of damage. Definitely. Which when one of the mind games is always, you know, if you can put big damage on the screen, it goes into your opponent's head because they're like, oh, crap, I don't want to be put in that situation again right. because it's so much damage. Do you think that E-Man going for those force tech setups, because obviously when a player is going for force tech setups, they're looking to, you know, obviously tone down on their damage for their combo enders, but yeah. they're looking to be able to tech you up and keep the advantage in order to get more damage potentially. Oh, they should. And we all know that, you know, force tech setups are very risky in this game because that close hit damage is really, really important, but... Going for force tech, you actually have to get two consecutive hits in a co in a ground uh, situation when your opponent's on the ground in order to tech people up. It's not like it wasn't DOA five. And so, uh, do you think that if you wouldn't have went for so many force techs, that he could have potentially beat Hudless there? Yeah, I think so. And and that's that's exactly why I've always told E Man. I think his best character ultimately will be Mila because her force tech situations that she puts you in when she's trying to grab you off the ground against the wall, it always leaves her at advantage, Definitely. which is exactly what he wants yes, to be at. Yes, you want that. In this game, especially with the ground game. But, I mean, again, this game, when you think about it, it's been out for, what, six months? Mm -hmm. So we're going to see E-Man evolve over time. I do think when we when we think of him as a, when I think of him as a complete player, I think it comes and, and starts and ends with Mila. 
he's got he's gonna have those other characters, but as Mila is constructed today, I think that's the best option. Unless right. they completely change the ground game or something like that. But right. I, th I think that's always gonna be his best option. So let's talk about this matchup. We have Matt Ponton. Obviously, he suffered a loss to Mona Vanderwall earlier. Yeah. Mona Vanderwall as well as in loser bracket. He's down there somewhere because he suffered a loss to E-Man. But we yeah. see. Cold Piece AJ, he's a Kokoro player. We haven't seen him much offline yet at all, but Cold Piece AJ is actually a good player. Yeah. This could go either way, and this is going to be a button check. Um, I don't really know where Cold Piece AJ's mindset is and where his experience is against Mai right now, okay. but Matt is obviously a very good player because he was doing so, so well. You know, the last match that he played, you know, he was fighting Mona, almost took Mona out, but it just wasn't enough. Yeah, no question, no question. I like it, I like it. I like what we're seeing. We're seeing a button check. So one of the things that's interesting, you can't see Matt's hands, but he's actually using a um, prototype uh, uh, arcade stick. Yeah. So it's a, it's a hitbox and an arcade stick built into one. I think he said it's an alpha stage, so it allows him to use hitbox controls, plus it gives him the normal arcade stick buttons. Plus and that bad boy stick. is tournament legal. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's um, He's testing it out. It's It lets you do some wild things, man. Yeah, for sure. And the hitbox is really great for 3D fighters. So, yeah. we're jumping into it. I'm going to call it. I think Matt Potton's going to take this over Cold Piece AJ because, again, I want to point it out. Matt has always used Bass, who is a slower character. When you got a player who's coming from that slow of a speed character, yeah. a player coming from a character who's so slow, when they get on a character with speed, they just go crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I so, mean, I think we're going to see him take this, but I don't know. we got to find out. There's no doubt in my mind that I, I think Matt has the, the extreme advantage in this particular matchup just because of not the experience it's just more or less the the, the skill set of the player i right. think matt has um a wider uh, array of skills in this game than cold piece aj and i think it's just going to be one of those matches it's a little bit one-sided you know but no cold piece is talented though mm -hmm. i'm not taking that away from him but i'm just looking at matt coming off his momentum from playing that great match with mona yeah and just since this game come out i mean let's face it matt's been playing very well since he focused more on my than bass sure you know, i just sure. don't think cold piece has the experience offline in order to take this but we never know man it could go either way we've seen upsets before no nah, i think i think we're seeing it right now we're seeing we're seeing hands get thrown and and cold piece aj is on the receiving end of those yes. things right now but I think that he can bring this back, man. I don't think it's. I don't think it's gonna go. But just as I say that, yeah, his, I'm, I'm, I don't know what you're saying right now. I, I really don't know what you're saying. Right now. <laughs> I don't really know if I can stick to those words because <laughs> he, Matt he can is take this back, back as right he gets KO'd. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's that down kick, pull and grab, that guaranteed mid kick that Kokoro has. Yeah, that's safe in this game. So to one me thing I want to point out, they made Mai's, uh her kick ender for her kick cancels. Yeah, they made that one safe. And then oh, they nice. made this punch one unsafe. Where nice. in DOA 5, it was swapped around. That character? Yeah. Oh, no, he, drops she, he the didn't combo, finish though. that. And that's that not having that offline timing down right now. You think that's 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 what that was, the timing? I, I believe so, because that grab is, is, is very crucial for you to finish. Yeah, yeah no, no question, no question. But it's, it's interesting. One of the things that I, I do want to see from, from Matt at some point is an evolution of his Mai, because I, I don't see too many differences between the Mai that we've seen him play in tournaments past and today. Yeah. And that's one of the going to be the key. Oh my God! Did you see how much damage that just did? Yeah, and as I say that, my man Cold Piece AJ is fighting his way back into this. I think we might see this is pretty much an upset. I mean, I'm going to call it like it is. This is pretty much an upset. Uh, yeah. I mean, Matt is now on the receiving hand. Yes. Now, as we say hands. that, Matt is on the receiving end of those hands. Yeah. And I think Kobe's AJ is here to play. This man is going off right now. Yeah. Nice break hold. Matt's like, I'm getting my ass whooped. I need to do something. There's the throw by Kobe's AJ. Wow, this there's the frame advantage, and there's the throw to finish it. Wow, okay. Yo, so I'm cold, sorry. Piece, cold piece here. Oh, I'm sorry. He's throwing out those cold pieces He's right now. He's throwing out them cold pieces. I'm sorry for doubting this man because he just brought that back three rounds. Listen, Easy. um, that that was a complete momentum shift. But again, Matt's sitting there thinking, I that's that's what I'm saying. So we've got those players that have been consistently, you know, in the community for a long time, always played at a at a semi high level. He's going to Bass. There's no question that about that. I, think I that's like what he's Bass about. in this matchup. So Matt's biggest problem was always that I'm using Bass against these fast characters like yeah. Christy and Nico. But Kokoro was not super fast. So Bass can actually do well in this matchup. So look, exactly. Matt is in loser's bracket. Yep. This is the last chance he has. Yep. I always say it. If you're going to go out, go out with your guns, go out with your best. And Bass at this point, it looks like it's going to be his best. Yeah, no question, no question. Um... It's going to be about how much experience does Cold Piece AJ have? Against Bass. Against Bass? And I can't say he has much because Bass is not a very widely used character, especially on PS4. Not unless you get locked into a room with like a... Oh, that back kick. That's new. That back kick kick confirm, man. You know what's interesting? I, I wish I did a little bit more damage considering how much how you, slow it you, is, exactly. you give up for yeah. it. You know? You're giving up speed because that's a really slow move and you got to hit confirm it at that. Yeah. It's almost like he should have been given the Tina treatment. He didn't oh, mean to I do like that. that. But it's still, I, I like the reversal of putting him against the wall. Yeah. 
Ooh, oh, nice. He needed that. that break hold. Wow, he used his own. We are in parry wars right now. Ooh. That's safe. Does wow, push. okay. I want to know if that's safe against the grappler because Bass having a six frame forward throw, four, uh, four frame neutral throw. I yeah. want to know if he could have punished that down kick punch, and that is going to hurt. Get over there. Uh, it's uh -huh. interesting Ooh. that he, he changed positions because it, it really put himself against the wall. I'm not sure if Matt meant to do that. Wow. He's going to spin to big swing, big swing. Nice 20% there damage. from Matt. Oh, he walked right into that offensive hold. That's all guaranteed. Yep. He's going to drag this man around the ring like a, oh, my God, that was crazy. What is going on? Oh, Matt went for it Yo, all right did there. Did you see how fast Kopi's ran from that Yo. man? He literally put on his Nikes and ran across the, the ring just now. all the way across the screen. Ooh, oh, he nice held break the break hold. low. Smart that play. was crucial. If that break low would have connected, Matt would have died. Yeah, 100%. no question. Yeah. That's safe. All right, and forward punch, kick, kick. And what I want to see from Matt is is a launcher. I just want to see him launch one time because right now he's been looking to go for those high counter throws a lot. Yeah. And Cold Piece is mashing buttons and buzzing out of yeah. all of them, yeah. All right, punch, kick, punch, mm. punch, kick by Matt. Gets the frame mm. advantage. You know, Cold it piece. looks like Cold Piece knows this matchup. Yeah, I think so. Cold Piece is throwing out 2P. It's a 14 frame attack, but it's, it's getting some mileage right now. You got to think character. about who he's fighting. 14 frames against a character like Bass who has yeah. a 13 frame jab. I mean, it's surprising. <laughs> it's surprising what we're seeing from Matt right now. Um, he's got some work to do. And there's that launcher that we were looking to see. So, you know, obviously Matt has recognized that Cold Piece is not holding at this point. There's that 12 frame hell stab there from Matt. Gets break held, unfortunately, though. I want to see Matt slow this down because Cold Piece has all the momentum. You need the best way to kill someone's momentum is space them out and let them reset. And Matt was trying to fuzzy there. He just got caught slipping right for a second. Oh, oh he's dead. Did and there's the slow-mo. And he's going to get dropped on his back. He's dead. Did you, wow. Did you see the part where he uh, did a little wave dash to get over there? Because that was really far, by the way. Yeah, it was crazy. Really far. The, I guess the hurt, the hitbox on that. Yeah, I don't know if it was no a hitbox joke. or not, but it was a little wild. Damn, he just got thrown into the wall. Yeah. And as you're saying that, Cold Piece is getting bounced off of everything. It's crazy. That's safe. So, he, so of course, Matt needs this. It looks like he's Ooh. going to, but Cold Piece trying to keep himself in it. Matt needs like one more attack, but he doesn't want to be too risky here. It's oh, Cole man, Cole Cole like he's trying to bring back. this back. Is he going to get the... No, he's going to take the reset. Oh, he should have took the break blow right there. But either way, Cole Piece looking nuts. like he's going to close this out. And, and Matt, Matt pressing buttons. And Matt just choked that away. Mm. Mm. Wow. Do you think that Matt could have done anything differently to avoid that? Because look, Matt had the life lead by a large margin, almost a full life bar. And Cole Piece didn't have much at all. Yeah, I mean, the, the decisions towards the end there, it was just like Matt was, he over, I think he overthought those those situations. Right. And there goes Matt doing the shrug, like, I don't know, man. But I honestly, I think that Matt could have had that. You know, he, I mean, there's no doubt that he could have won that. But unfortunately, you know, Matt's going to be eliminated from the tournament. But still, even though he's eliminated from the tournament, you know, Matt still gets a lot of respect for multiple reasons. Not only for being a competitor, but he runs freestepdots.com. Okay, yeah. something that he funds pretty much. You know, you can take donations for it to help fund it, but he funds that himself. That's his website that he created from the ground up. And yeah. Not only that, but he sat here and configured all of these PCs for us to play on. He took the time out of his day to do that for us. So, you know, it's, that mean, is just a big... He, he's, he's definitely a, a community member through and through, right. and, and he's here for the community. So, he, like you said, he does multiple things. I mean, when I was just looking at his match, it was just... It's, the it, it boiled down to he I really think he overthought those situations yeah and um, it put himself in a really bad place because if you think about it like you look at the last two exchanges if he had reversed decisions he wins both of those so look I want to talk about his next match guys because this right here I would hate to be Cole P. AJ right now we're talking about a hungry E-man who got sent to lose the bracket by Hoodless who knows that if he wants to go to Japan he needs to do well at this event and he cannot lose to Cole P. AJ yeah, so if that's the case, if Cold Piece AJ is here, that means Hollow and Mona got to be on the other side fighting yeah. each other at some yeah. point. Either off stream or we're going to see that match next. And but then Steady somewhere as well. Oh, wow. So I think actually the more I think about it, there's going to be a match between Steady, Hollow, and Mona before they get to E-Man. Yeah. I think that's how it's going to play out. Nah, dude, the loser's bracket, I'm telling you, at the last, actually every North American offline event we've had, the loser's bracket is the How place they you all end don't up in the same want bracket. to be. Yeah. And that's I mean, and that's that's one thing we were talking about. You know, the fact that we have two big pools instead of four separate ones. Whereas we would have these players more separated. But I, it was done for a reason. And of yeah. course, that's just what it is right now, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking about, like, um, territories and whatnot. Because, you know, you, you, you do the brackets based on uh, 
priority for like the the, the skill set of the player and then based on their territory too. Yeah. I'm surprised that they ended up in the in the same pool like that. Yeah, man. I mean, it's look. When I see that, if I was a talented player like E Man or Hoodless or Caliber, yeah. I would just say, all I gotta do is come in here and wreck shop. It don't matter what pool I'm in. I'm winning anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah, I so. mean, well, the funny thing is, when you talk to somebody like Hoodless, he's like, I, I watched my match and I know what I did wrong. So I'm gonna go in there and, and, and do, do diff different. Do, a di do differently than what I did so last time, for sure, man. It's, it's definitely a refreshing thing. I think we are getting too closer to the end because I don't even see too many matches actually taking place in our casual stations. Well, yeah, for sure. So. I think they're actually trying to push out the last matches on stream here. Oh, this is the last match. Okay. okay. So there are obviously a lot of matches that were done off stream or, you yeah, know, for sure. So I, but we're I, actually getting to that time limit now anyways, yeah. I don't know how – I, I want to know if Steady actually made it. That's what I want to know. Well, we're going to have to find out. And obviously, you know, not everything is going to be shown on stream, guys. But please, 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 to keep up with all the updates, check out the Dead or Alive 6 official Twitter page because Master is doing such a great job of updating that for you guys and letting you guys know who's placing what and who's still in the tournament. And then obviously once Top 8 is settled after the event's all said and done, you guys will be able to follow that update on the uh, Twitter page. It's really hard to give Master compliments. Like, I, I realize that. And I realize it that. It really <laughs> is unfortunate because as I was saying that, I got a cold chill. Yeah, when I like said Master's doing a great job, I felt a cold chill go up my body. Like it's it's hard. I couldn't believe I it's said difficult. that. It's difficult. This man walks around here just, yeah, it's, it's difficult to give that man compliments sometimes. It's, it's crazy. very difficult. But I'm going to tell you this. Cold <laughs> Peace has been Studying. on his phone for five minutes. He said, um, he said look, I got I to gotta do work. So, uh, Christy, Neela, I don't care who you put on the screen. I'm here to make top eight. I mean, he's a fan of the Rugrats. Um, you know, that's actually a really, really Where are you cool taking that movie? story? Oh, the, oh the shirt. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Wait, you thought I was just randomly talking about the Rugrats? <laughs> yeah, I was like, before, what? Bro. What is happening right this now? This man bro? is rocking the Rugrats hoodie. All right, I have not seen a Rugrat in years, but obviously he feels very strongly about them. Otherwise, he would not be wearing them I on got stream. You. I'm, I'm with you So now, that's Chris. free promotion for the Rugrats, right? Even though the cartoon has been done with for years. <laughs> I was, I was going to recommend some type of medicine for your ADD. So you thought I day. randomly <laughs> just brought up the rug rats. That's actually I wasn't wild, looking man. at his shirt, shirt at all. I like mean, we've been looking at Cold Piece on his phone, and there it is. Bam, we got my boom, man Reptar boom. over here. Let's get that. And for some reason, the dog, is it Spike? Yeah, uh, Why is Spike looking? Damn, Cold Piece look. is sweaty. Yo. Yo, he's Cold Spike. Piece is sweating Cold right Piece now. is dripping man, right now. What is going on? Yo. No, nah, nah, I'm, I'm going to say he, he 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 put some extra lotion on his face today. That's yeah, all because it is. It's, he it's knows. No he's not intimidated by E-Man at all. Nah, nope, definitely not. not. I mean, look. Secretly he is. But and then you got that. a Rugrats hoodie on. You can't be scared of anybody, bro. Yeah, that's crazy. That just gives you, it just gives you the uh, the extra motivation you need but to like win. Like you said earlier, I do appreciate the fact that E-Man's out here supporting Esports Stadium. He actually bought a hoodie. Yeah. And that, that's awesome. I mean... We need more of these stadiums. I can't wait for more of these things to be Seriously, pop, guys, popping up, man. If you are a tournament organizer, take notes. It's crazy. Because this event, when you walk in, your attention is immediately drawn to the actual esports of, uh, arena. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, if you you guys got to be here to feel it. Like, obviously, you yeah. guys are at home watching, seeing the pictures and seeing the videos. But until you walk into this room and see this illuminating light that is the stage that these players are getting on, yeah. you will not know what it's like to actually be at one of these. This is a no great, doubt, no doubt. really well to, uh, put together event. So, e man looks far. fairly focused. I think they're doing a quick button check right now. Um... But most importantly, when we're, when we're talking about this, I, you know what character we haven't seen? Neo Tingu. You're right. Oh. And it's actually a shame because... There's a lot Neo, of characters we haven't it's seen. It's a shame because Neo Tingu is a great character. Yeah. You know, a lot of people feel she's not as great because she's slow, but you got to think about it. Matter of fact... She has a 10-frame high punch yeah. that is going to out-prioritize anybody who does not have a 9-frame jab. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, it's actually, like, crazy. We have not seen a lot of characters. I'm just going through the list in my head. We haven't seen a Hayate. We haven't seen a Hayabusa. We haven't seen a Neo Tengu. Uh, we haven't seen quite a few. Yeah, quite a few characters. I mean, it's, it, I mean, there's always going to be those characters you don't see, and that's for every game. But you know, yeah. it's it's when but you get down surprising. to the top guys, you already know the staple characters you're going right. to see. You're going mean, to have your Nikos, your Christies, your Rig because of Hoodless, your Hoodless. For sure, for sure. You know? so but Hayabusa, we don't see him so often, and he's considered one of the better characters. Yeah, and thank Samara. God, because Master is banned from tournaments. We don't have to look at Hayabusa anymore. Oh, it's, it's, it's good. It's always good money okay. for that. All right, so this, I'm just going to let you guys know, Cold Piece AJ can win this match. I mean, look, look at his defense. He has the ability to win this, and he's already oh, on the board. I'm not going to say nothing else bad about Kobe AJ, even though I wasn't saying anything bad before, but he's just really put on a good show today. Yeah, no, dude, he's good, man, for sure. Oh, uh, there's the – oh, so he should have capitalized off that stun, but there's I that bullet I think he's wanted to reset. Yeah. All right. The issue is, of course, if you go against try and reset E-Man, you c can potentially get That's yourself plus. on the board. That's negative one. Negative five, that Coco yeah. for a punch, or negative three? No, no, negative like four, negative four. Negative four, okay, I was in there, I was in there. All right. There That's it is. That's that box, and he's dead. Character. He doesn't even need the combo. E-Man going up one to nothing again, guys. This is our last game, unfortunately, for the evening, guys. Please, please be sure to check out Top 8 tomorrow. 
We're yeah. gonna jump back into this fight here. There's E-Man going in with that up back kick. No meter use. Mm -hmm. E-Man so, so, so safe with not using his meter all the time. We saw that at Summer Jam as well. And one thing I, I want to know if Copius is going to recognize is a lot of the force techs that E-Man is putting on the screen don't actually work. They just whip, go through you to make you think it's a yeah. force tech. Uh -huh. If you sit there on the ground, you have a great chance of just messing E-Man up. Hmm. E-Man not biting on that. Copius AJ sitting at about 10%. All right, so there's that three PPP Finishing or strings. four punch, punch, punch to close the round out there by E-Man. E-Man looking really good. I mean, Cold Piece, like I said, I don't want to count him out because I know he's good. Mm -hmm. He's blocking these strings, but unfortunately, he's not punishing them. Yeah, definitely not. Surprising. And you see E-Man saving his meter a lot for sidesteps because he knows in those crucial moments, I'm going to need to sidestep. I'm going to need to... Wow. wow E-Man is getting popped in the face right now. Oh. Can Cold Piece get around here? If he, Once he, Cold Piece establishes that he can get around, I think that then there's the round there. I think that's actually going to let E-Man know, yo, this guy might beat me. I got to actually tighten up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that we saw was Cold Piece recognized E-Man was going to hold, and so he got a double damage on the Citizen Assist. Mm -hmm. uh, -huh, uh huh. There's that bound by E-Man. There's there the Force Tech. Wow, that's going to do so much damage. He's going to get close it. I like it. And the Citizen Assist. Oh, he Smart needs to play. do that. And it's E-Man ducking right uh, underneath. It crushes the and high. And Cold Piece is looking like all she wrote. Man, yeah, that's a dead character. He's going to bound that. him. He's going to break blow. Oh, no, he didn't even break blow. He, he didn't, didn't need to. to. He didn't need to. Okay. So, Cold Piece, unfortunately, this is the gauntlet, as we say. I mean, E-Man knows what's on the line. He knows that he needs to place at least top eight. Yeah. Because you don't get points until you... No, top 16 gets paid out as far as points go. No, they don't. Top 16 doesn't get points? No. I could have sworn he got a word of points. So he needs to get top eight to get these points. Yeah, he needs he needs those points. I'm like, uh, you know what? You know what? I I'm, think top you've 16... You've been right all day today. I'm going to take No, top 16 gets... But they get very little points. But yeah, regardless... Like 10 or 20. The it's points that E-Man needs to, to be able to go to Japan, he needs every point he can get at this point. Because he's competing with Hoodless. He's competing with Rakuto and Quibble. He's yeah. not a guaranteed a spot at this point. Yeah, like it's it's looking rough at the moment for a cold He's piece. dead. And Cold Piece, man, again, I, I hate to say it, but Cold Piece is just, he he's in a bad great. place right now, man. He's he getting them cold in. pieces to the face. Yeah, like this is this is tough. This is rough to see, but we'll see. So, I mean, one of the things that we need to see from Cold Piece, though, is when he's fighting E-Man, he's got to recognize that Buko Duck, he's going to have to take the risk and go for a low throw. And Kokoro has a phenomenal low throw because it gets her a free stun mix-up. Oh, oh, charge punch. There right. it is. 30% by E-Man. Goes for that DOA 5 setup yeah. that shouldn't work anymore, but it does. Yeah, like... I've seen that Helena has the ability to play DOA 5, so I yeah. do think that's why she's actually pretty strong in this game. Yeah, she's man. one of the only characters that can take advantage of those force decks. Jeez, Colpius just got to stop blocking with his face right now because he's taking a lot of damage. Good grief. Oh, oh man. Not looking good. But... That's plus. Mm, his face oh, again. Oh, man. Taking one too many hits. There's that 4-4 four, four punch, damage. and dude, I'm going to be honest, I, I think damage. that E-Man tried to close it out with a Boca hole throw. Oh, he tried to counter the down kick punch. Wow. Cold Piece trying to fight his way back, oh, and he shouldn't have went for that. He got the guaranteed kick. Yeah, like his, oh, man. He, he once he got opened up, he just didn't know what to counter against E-Man. And it's, and it's hard. It's hard, especially against Helena, because she can do every all four angles. Yeah. But, yeah, good good show from E-Man, good show from Cold yeah, Piece. Man. And E-Man's going to be moving on to top eight losers at this point, man. Yeah, like, I mean, it's a great show so far. And as you guys heard, we might have hinted at it a little bit earlier. This was our final match for today. So yeah. uh, we will get you those pools. We will get you those pools. But as far as we know, so far we have Caliber Blades, Winner's Finals. Rakuto, Winner's Finals. Winner's Finals, yes. We have Killy, Winner's Finals. Yep. We have Steady, Loser's loser Side. Yeah. We have Quiggles, Loser's Side. We and have So Sick e Nash Fan and Loser's Side. E-Man, Loser's Side. Yeah, so Sick Nash Fan, Loser's Side. Who am I forgetting? There's that, one more player. There's one more player. He's, he's in Winner's Did you already side. say Hoodless? Hoodless, Hoodless. There we go. So, so that's, that's your top it. eight right there. I mean, that's a crazy top eight. The only, the only surprise we had truly had. So sick, Nashville. So sick, Nashville. We did not see, but I told you guys from the start. If anyone could do it, it's going to be Nashville. For but sure. Either way, guys. Regardless, it's been awesome casting this event for you. We will see you tomorrow for more DOA Six World Championship action for top eight. I'm Emery Reigns. and your boy Chase with that. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, take it easy.
As a Dragon Shrine Maiden, I will do my best. I'm ready to fight! <laughs> 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 